The year is 2007. You're sleeping over at your friend's house, binge drinking vanilla coke and Mountain Dew, and eating copious amounts of chips and junk food. After some intense sessions of Halo 3 split screen and prank calling people, you eventually find yourself browsing around on YouTube with your gateway laptop, barely making a connection to the neighbor's unprotected Wi-Fi. Your friend then asks you to look up this video, and they swear it's the creepiest thing they've ever seen. You get that rush when you think about what it could be. It can't be that scary, right? It's just a video. You won't be up all night thinking about it, right? This would happen many times throughout your childhood. That same experience of either staying up late by yourself or with a friend and delving into this dark side of YouTube, a website that so many people use for comedy, cute videos of pets, music, among much more, can also be the home to such strange and disturbing things. So first off, let's get a few things out of the way. What is an iceberg? An iceberg is a chart featuring multiple topics that revolve around the theme of the iceberg. So in this video's case, it's a creepy YouTube video iceberg, and each point is a creepy video or channel. As you go deeper down the layers, the points get more obscure, spooky, or sometimes are just low on the iceberg as a joke. Now, creepiness is subjective. Something on layer 1 may be way more creepy than something on layer 7. That's just bound to happen. Most of the time, the various points on these iceberg charts are sorted based off how well known they are, and sometimes the placement of certain things can be questionable. So, if you're wondering why something you know so well is very low on the iceberg, that happens to everyone. So really, take the order or placement of these topics with a grain of salt, and just enjoy the compilation of creepy content. Now, grab a snack, get comfy, this is going to be a long video. Let's get started. I feel fantastic. This video, uploaded by YouTube user Creepyblog in April of 2009, features an android named Tara singing a song which is called, well, I feel fantastic. The erratic synthesizer accompanying the robotic vocals makes for a very eerie experience, made even more disturbing by the fact that Tara herself is, well, quite creepy, not to mention the liminal space-esque room she's in. For some strange reason, the description of this video is the story of Pygmalion, a sculptor in Greek mythology who, after a series of events, eventually creates a perfect, pure woman of stone to be his bride, which I suppose is there maybe because the creator of Tara probably sees his creation in a similar light. There's also a bunch of theories that suggest the creator of Tara is a serial killer, as the video features a short scene of what I assume to be a backyard, and many viewers believe that this shows where they possibly hid the bodies of their victims, and that the clothes Tara wears are from said victims. Well, it turns out that the creator of Tara is a man named John Bergeron, who has a GeoCities website that's still up to this day, though it states that it was last updated in 2006. John even has his email address listed on the page as well, though I doubt he looks at it anymore as it's probably been spammed like crazy. It seems as though Tara is nothing more than a personal project of John's, as the website mentions Tara possibly making live appearances upon completion, as well as DVDs and CDs for sale. If anyone owns any of these CDs or DVDs, please make a video about them, as I'm sure many of us would love to see the full picture. Outside of that, the video is still creepy regardless, and a great start to this iceberg. Obey the Walrus Originally uploaded to Ebombs World in 2005, and later to YouTube by user David Nunez in 2008, this video first features Andros from the Super Nintendo version of Star Fox singing the Itsy Bitsy Spider in Spanish. As the song goes on, the track distorts and the video shows a distorted, messy image until it changes to a video of a person with a physical handicap dancing about with an umbrella, until finally an image of a walrus closes the video. Now, before we get into the video, let's talk about the description of the video for a second. The description reads, Obey the Walrus, known in Spanish as Obedece la Morsa, is a video that was allegedly created by a Latin American cult known as la Morsa, which means the walrus, and it is said that bad things happen after watching the video. Now, any research into this cult simply brings up this video, 
or other people discussing it, so that just kind of seems like a dead end. Now, onto the video itself. The person featured in it is actually Sandy Crisp, also known by her stage name, the Goddess Bunny, who was a drag queen, entertainer, actor, and model. Sandy suffered from polio shortly after birth, and due to the malpractice of the doctors caring for her, resulted in her developmental disfigurement, leading Crisp to use a wheelchair throughout most of her life. The clip used in Obey the Walrus is from a 1994 documentary of her life titled The Goddess Bunny. Sandy would sadly pass away in 2021 due to COVID-19. I attempted to research if Sandy ever commented on Obey the Walrus or knew of it, but found nothing, so I'm not really sure. But she did appear in the music video for Marilyn Manson's song The Dope Show, so that's pretty cool. Username 666 Uploaded by Nana825763 in February of 2008, this video features a screen cap software of presumably Nana browsing YouTube on their desktop, attempting to search for the YouTube channel name 666. They repeatedly refresh the page only for it to slowly change as all the characters change to 666, then slowly dissolve into a complete mess of black and red, until finally, the channel is revealed. Nana then clicks on a video that is just a garbled mess. They continue to click around on other videos on the channel that show various disturbing images and scenes until Nana tries to go back, close out the page, or do anything to no avail, not even being able to pause the video. Even shutting down their computer doesn't work, all while the audio gets louder and more erratic until there's one final loud knock and the video is cut off. This video would be a staple of the early days of creepy YouTube content, and back in the day, when you would attempt to search for a user named 666, YouTube would indeed direct you to a page that said the user's account had been terminated, thus feeding a bit of possible truth to many of us on YouTube at the time. Eventually, this video would lead to the creation of an anonymously written creepypasta to go along with it, and continues to be a golden age example of YouTube's horror potential, as well as inspire many to create creepy videos of their own. Every copy of Super Mario 64 is personalized. Have you ever watched a video or talked with a friend about a video game that you hadn't played in a really long time? Perhaps that game was Super Mario 64. You're chatting with a friend about it, reliving the memories of jumping around bob -omb Battlefield on a cold November evening during Thanksgiving break, the annoyance of getting a hundred coins on Rainbow Ride, luring the eel out of its cave so that you can go inside the cave and get the star, or maybe... Wait a minute, going inside the eel's cave? That's not something you recall being able to do. Just as your friend doesn't recall how you told them about the time you got eaten by Dory, the sea monster of Hazy Maze Cave. Perhaps what was at play here was the infamous personalization AI found within certain cartridges of Super Mario 64. Some say it's present in every copy, but its level of involvement can be so subtle it's nearly impossible to notice, to some cases being so extreme they alter the game into something unrecognizable, and can even traumatize players. It appears as if the concept of personalization for Super Mario 64 didn't appear on the internet until around late 2019 or early 2020. A 4chan post from May of 2020 mentions the Wario apparition, a popular point of personalization, and that appears to be the earliest reference of anything of the sort that I could personally find. And of course, Mishkaz released his famous Iceberg video a month later in June. If my research is correct, the very first YouTube video to feature any sort of mention of Super Mario 64 personalization is a video by user TC Doraemon, uploaded on June 18th, 2020 simply titled, Every Copy of Super Mario 64 is Personalized, featuring the infamous Wario apparition. For reference, Mishkaz's video that really launched the personalization thing into the mainstream came out on June 25th. Since then, there have been many YouTube videos featuring personalization and different strange anomalies within the game. Marble Hornets 
In June of 2009, a YouTube channel called Marble Hornet started uploading a series of videos that claimed to be videos recorded by the uploader's friend, Alex Crayley, who was a film student working on their student film entitled Marble Hornets. The uploader then proceeds to mention that during the three months of production of the film, Alex would slowly start to become more irritable, stressed, and overall paranoid, only in the end to abandon the project, give all the tapes used during recording to the uploader, and told them to burn all the tapes. After receiving the tapes, Alex transferred to another school, and the uploader says they hadn't spoken to Alex or seen him since. This entire introduction occurred in 2006, only for the uploader to find the tapes in the back of their closet a few days before the initial upload date of June 20th, 2009. Following this introductory video, the channel would then continue to upload content for the next five years, to the day, as the final video, entitled Entry 87, was uploaded June 20th, 2014. While never outright referred to as Slenderman, only as the operator, Marble Hornets was created only 10 days after the conception of Slenderman on the Something Awful forums, and it's quite obvious where the inspiration for The Operator lies. While entirely fictional, the series is certainly worth looking into, and I myself have made a custom VHS tape of the series for fun, as I feel watching it like that just adds to the experience, sort of like how I prefer watching The Blair Witch Project on VHS. I even modified my copy of that and removed all the tape before the film actually starts, so it's a more realistic experience of watching a found tape, but I digress. Definitely check out Marble Hornets, it's a pretty fascinating project and a big part of one of the biggest internet urban legends. Elsagate Elsagate isn't a video itself, but instead a genre of video that are made for children, big quotes there, but really are anything but. They generally feature knockoff versions of popular children's characters from Marvel, Disney, My Little Pony, etc. While from a glance, a parent may look over and assume their child is watching something bright and colorful with familiar characters, all the while the situations within these videos borderline on the absolute bizarre, and are sometimes quite graphic in violence and sexual tone, and somehow these videos all have millions of views per video. It's no doubt that the people behind these channels are often making insane ad revenue, but the sinister thing behind it is, they're not only pocketing that money that with numbers as large as they're pulling in is quite a lot, but they're also leading young children to watch some questionable things. Now, there are channels out there that are incredibly low effort that also pull in tens of millions of views that have nothing sinister in them, and just seem to be taking advantage of the fact that kids will leave their tablets on or click on anything, and it clearly works for them, but Elsagate itself generally refers to the videos that feature the more disturbing content. Rainbot did a great video a few years back talking about the videos, if you want a deeper look into it. Petscop Petscop is a horror alternate reality game and series, with its first episode on YouTube being uploaded in March of 2017. The series centers around the fictional PS1 game Pets Cop, as the narrator Paul plays through the game, similar to any other Let's Play style video. Early on, with everything going as it should, Paul shows off the gameplay which involves the main character, known as the Guardian, solving puzzles to capture creatures known as pets. The Let's Play starts off innocently enough until Paul mentions that there were two notes he found with the game one of which has instructions to enter a code into the game in a specific room, and from this point on, the series takes a turn for the creepy, and really, if this sounds interesting to you, you should probably just check it out for yourself, as it's quite a lot to explain further, and I'd sorta of be spoiling it. Petscop's reception has been largely on the positive side, receiving coverage by many YouTubers, as well as even news platforms and other publications, so I'd say it's definitely worth looking into. Hey Walter. I'm pretty certain this is referring to the infamous Hi Walter, I Got a New GF Today video that was uploaded in October of 2009 by the channel Hi Walter, It's Me Patrick. The video depicts a man talking about how he met a girl at the mall, and that they shopped around a bit, and afterwards they went back to his place. 
Patrick then says he'll show her on camera. The scene then cuts to another angle of Patrick next to a door, and upon opening the door, a woman is seen on the floor of the bathroom crying and begging for help. Only two months before this video was posted, 15-year-old Kayla Berg went missing in her hometown of Antigua, Wisconsin. Years would pass without any leads in the case, when in 2016, some Reddit user made a post titled, Is This a Video of Kayla Berg? This video sparked an absolute storm of Reddit users to panic and call the FBI reporting the video as a tip, as well as spark discussion across the internet, which of course meant informing news sites, which then of course leads to the family of Kayla finding out, and being brought back to an incredibly devastating moment in their lives, because the Reddit police are just so great, aren't they? Thanks, Reddit. The video would be removed by YouTube shortly after, and the FBI would eventually find that those involved with the video, including the actor who played the girl locked in the bathroom, were all safe and had no relation to the case of Kayla Berg. Regardless of the fact that this video is fake, many still find it quite creepy. At the very least, the whole fiasco did at least bring more attention and public awareness to the disappearance of Kayla Berg, who, as of October 2022, is still missing. Beasts Beasts is a music video uploaded by the channel Treats for Beasts in November of 2014, featuring a song sung by green, human-esque characters, representing different professions people may have within society, from farmers, teachers, religious leaders, police, politicians, and how they're all beasts in some way, forming society into what it is, the futility, fragility, inevitability, I think. I don't know. I was never really one for social commentary. This channel features quite a few other videos besides Beasts that are either animated in a similar way and have a tone much like Beasts, as well as some live action videos that too follow that tone. We'll be talking about another video from this channel further down the iceberg. Local 58 Local 58 TV is a channel that first started uploading in October of 2015, featuring what appears to be VHS recordings of a local television news station's broadcasts, and the bizarre, ominous videos and messages they would sometimes air. Some of these broadcasts appearing as cryptic warnings, while others simply show footage of bizarre events. The series pioneered a subgenre of horror called analog horror, in which the medium of VHS and other analog-style recording formats are used due to their tendency to degrade and give the content recorded on them a eerie and distant kind of feel. The videos used to be hosted on a website called local58.tv, as well as to the YouTube channel. However, this website's no longer available, and uploads since have been posted exclusively to YouTube. These are awesome videos, and are a very quick watch, as there are only 9 videos, and the longest one is 5 minutes, with the shortest only being 19 seconds, so check them out. The Dawn is Your Enemy The Dawn is Your Enemy is actually a bumper that would play on the Adult Swim programming block of Cartoon Network, reportedly between 2005 and 2010, and reappearing for a short time in 2021 in honor of Adult Swim's 20th anniversary. The earliest clip of this uploaded to YouTube was back in July of 2008, and says that the song featured is not the original song featured in the bumper, and that the original song is unknown. There is a 2017 upload that claims to be the original from 2005, but it's hard to say for sure, especially if the music is just an ominous noise collage. Recalling such a thing that hasn't been heard in over 10 years is probably near impossible to say for sure, if it's actually the original. Of course, eventually a creepypasta would be made about this bumper, with the first YouTube Let's Read video of this pasta being uploaded in October of 2017. The creepypasta would, of course, be about seeing the bumper as normal, to suddenly the music turning into a collage of screams and torture, only for the sound to cease, the sun to wink, and the picture to go black. Yeah, it's just straight up a creepypasta, but hey, they're fun sometimes. Blank Room Soup Referred to on YouTube as blankroomsoup.avi, this video features a man sitting in a room eating, presumably soup, with a large spoon, while two people wearing mascot costumes come in and 
pat his back as he continues eating while sobbing. The absolute earliest upload of this video that I could find on YouTube comes from the channel Creepy Paste and was uploaded in January of 2014. This channel, however, hosts other popular YouTube horror videos such as The Dawn Is Your Enemy and The Persephone Numbers Station, so it's evident that that's not where the original video came from. From what I found, the video may have actually originated on Daily Motion by user RayRayTV, which has the same video uploaded in 2008 titled Freaky Soup Guy, with a description that reads, a clip of people who look like us doing something to someone that we would never do, we promise. There is also a follow-up video called Soup Torture that is basically more of the same. It turns out these characters in the video were created by Raymond Percy, who has quite a career in animation with Disney, even voicing the sloth Flash in Zootopia, among many other things. Anyway, I mentioned this user previously in the Elsagate point, but we've got to thank Rainbot for some clarity on this subject, as she was able to reach out to Raymond Percy and ask him directly about Blink Room Soup. Raymond goes on to recount an incident that happened after a performance at a club in Hollywood. During the process of packing up their props at the end of the night, someone had gotten into the RV that they were using to store the props in and stole some Ray Ray costumes, among other things. Raymond then says that a few weeks after this, upon returning home from work and going on his computer, he had received an email with a video attachment. This video was Blank Room Soup. Raymond then claims that he put it up on YouTube to share with the rest of his group, and none of them knew what to make of it. Raymond later received a link to a YouTube channel named Adana that hosted another video titled Soup Torture. This channel still exists on YouTube today, but no longer has any videos uploaded. Raymond also goes on to claim that he's gotten more videos that have yet to be uploaded, and that's where this whole thing lies to this day. Do I believe it? I really don't know. Raymond is a director, producer, writer, and much more. This could all just so easily be a great story that he could be just going along with. Why not? It's certainly done its job giving Ray Ray massive publicity. Regardless, it still makes for a creepy video, and I love it. Wyoming Incident this is referring to a horror, ARG, and creepypasta, with videos released in 2006 showing a VHS recording of a TV broadcast hijacking in which the hijacker proceeds to play an eerie tone with images of faces and eyes, with cryptic messages between. The exact date that the videos started being uploaded is, as far as I can tell, lost to time, and the oldest upload of anything related to the Wyoming incident on YouTube is a troll video, but from what research I've done, it appears to have started on something awful, much like Slenderman, in late 2006. While personally I find the videos to be interesting enough on their own, the ARG is quite a lot to get through. So if you want to dive down that rabbit hole, I recommend Nightmind's video on it entitled TWI The Forgotten ARG. When researching this point, I actually had a hard time finding whether or not the broadcast hijacking itself actually happened, and the creepypasta was just made afterwards, but the way the signal cuts out compared to real signal hijackings like Max Headroom and Captain Midnight had me doubting it, and as it turns out, it is indeed fake. The broadcast hijacking never happened, and that makes sense. I feel like given the year it was supposed to have happened, 2006, more people would have talked about it. I mean, even Max Headroom got news coverage. Oddly enough, there are many people online who do state that it actually happened, but from all the research I've done, I'm inclined to believe it's not true at all. Fake Anti-Piracy Screens Fake anti-piracy screens are just that, anti-piracy screens created by fans for popular games that they love often invoking that creepy liminal space vibe that many N64 and PS1 era games often give off, and are often just grainy enough to look real. The funny thing is, despite the popularity of these anti-piracy screens, I don't know of any game that actually has one, save for one incident. I remember one time I was borrowing a copy of Earthbound from my friend on the Super Nintendo, and I put it in, 
and this anti-piracy screen popped up. But, like, it was a real cart, so I'm not really sure what that was all about. I know that games indeed have anti-piracy measures in place, like for Ocarina of Time, you won't be able to catch a fish, as if the game detects that it's a pirated copy, the fish will always let go after a set number of frames, but I can't recall ever seeing or hearing of any screens that pop up when it's detected other than that incident with Earthbound. These screens seem to really take off in popularity around the same time as the Super Mario 64 Iceberg craze was gaining traction, and it definitely fits within that similar vibe of creepiness that's just so subtly off, kinda like the creepy warnings you'd get when putting a Sega CD disc in a CD player, the PS2 red screen of death, or the strange Xbox idling sounds. Now, you may be wondering why this is on a creepy YouTube iceberg video, and that's because of the sheer number of fake anti-piracy screen videos that are on YouTube. Seriously, the number is staggering. There are just way too many. I've shown off some here, but if that hasn't given you your fill, just search fake anti-piracy screens and you'll find many compilations. Also, if you'd like more information about the anti-piracy screens thing, check out Izzy's video on it, it's fantastic and goes much more in depth. Ben Drowned Oh boy, seems like I can just never escape The Legend of Zelda, huh? Ben Drowned is one of the most famous creepypasta ever and started on 4chan's X-Board. The OP who is posting with the name Jeducible, along with a trip code, recounts their story of retrieving an old N64 from their friend when they went off to college. Jeducible, eager to find some games for it, went to some garage sales and came across one where an old man had a few items out on a table. Jeducible asked the old man if he happened to have any old video games, in which the old man said he actually did, and went off back inside his house to retrieve them. The old man returned with a single grey cartridge with no label that simply had Majora written on it, and gave it to Deducible for free, after telling him that it belonged to a kid who was around his age that didn't live there anymore. Deducible would take the game home, start it up, and so would begin his conflict with an entity known only as Ben. Jeducible would upload gameplay of his encounters and experiences with the cartridge to the YouTube channel Jeducible starting on September 7, 2010, the same day as his first 4chan post. While the story does get a little convoluted, it's definitely worth a look into, as it's very much a pioneer of the spooky video game creepypasta format, as well as being important to creepypasta history as a whole. Jack Stauber Jack Stauber is a musician, animator, and YouTuber who has made a large amount of claymation and traditionally animated cartoons on his channel, all accompanied by his own songs. His videos often feature strange and bizarre imagery, but really, most of them are more funny than anything. And of course, as is a running theme with modern creepy YouTube videos, they also have that usual VHS lo-fi type aesthetic thing going on. Jack's unique style got him a gig with Adult Swim, and he has since done multiple successful projects for them, starting with an animated short called Wishing Apple, which was uploaded in July of 2018 on the Adult Swim YouTube channel, and is still there to this day, sitting at just over 2 million views, and has continued to do quite a few other projects for them over the years. Poppy Poppy, real name Mariah Pereira, is a musician and YouTube personality who took off after she rebranded her channel as That Poppy in November of 2014, and started doing short videos of her character, Poppy, doing different things or talking about certain topics, from her unique point of view. Her first song to appear on the channel would be a cover of Mac DeMarco's My Kind of Woman in 2015, followed by her first original song a few months later called Everybody Wants to Be Poppy, which is quite a catchy song, followed shortly by Low Life, which is equally as catchy. I personally don't find Poppy to be creepy in any way, but there was a time when the internet was just going crazy about her, thinking she was the most bizarre thing on the internet. Once again, another shout out to Rainbot, who has a great video about Poppy, though it was made in 2016, so quite a lot has happened with Poppy since then. I still think it's worth a watch, though, if you want a general rundown of Poppy. I really wish I had more to say about her in short summary, but really... Her style is just so her own, I don't really know how to put it into words. Go on her channel and check out any of her videos that are like a minute in length or less, and 
you'll see exactly what I mean. She just talks about things in her unique voice and personality that's probably what made her at the very least unsettling to most people. Again, there are other YouTubers who really dive into dissecting her videos, so if you want more Poppy, check those out. The Weird Side of YouTube The Weird Side of YouTube isn't a video itself, but instead, it's more of a sidebar recommendations rabbit hole where you start by watching a weird video, then the sidebar will have another weird video recommended to you, and as you continue clicking through those videos, you reach videos that just get more and more bizarre. From what I can recall, it's how many people saw that video of that Slovakian puppet children's show thing that you're seeing on screen now, which, yes, we will be talking about later. Sometimes it leads you to really obscure stuff, like one time I saw a video of some kids exploring a sewer and they came across this strange creature that kind of stalks them even after they return home, and I've never seen that again. Other times it'll lead you to exactly what you'd expect, stuff like the hand thing, but we'll get to that in just a bit. Salad Fingers Salad Fingers is a Flash animated web series created by David Firth and uploaded to Newgrounds in July of 2004, and would go on to become a beloved series both on Newgrounds as well as on YouTube. The series takes place in a post-apocalyptic setting where Salad Fingers interacts with different characters and situations in his world of delusion after an event known as the Great War has devastated the land. Salad Fingers also really loves the sensations of touching different things and loves when the red water comes out. The series still sees new releases, with the most recent episode coming out in October of 2021. David Firth has gone on to work on other projects in animation and is also a musician, having released several albums over the years. Smile HD Smile HD is an incredibly graphic fan animation of the series My Little Pony Friendship is Magic in which Pinkie Pie, for whatever reason, kills all of her friends. This video was originally uploaded to YouTube and Newgrounds by user Mr. Davey, though I'm not entirely sure which site it was uploaded to first, as the original YouTube upload has since been deleted, and now only re-uploads exist. From my research, the original upload date was August 24th, 2013, but the video on Newgrounds has an upload date of August 26th, 2013, so... My guess is YouTube was first, followed by Newgrounds a few days later, but I could be wrong. Mr. Davey has two other My Little Pony fan animations on Newgrounds, both featuring the same type of graphic content, and one completely bizarre video of Dr. Robotnik from Sonic the Hedgehog and Kyrie from Kingdom Hearts in a car getting stuck in mud, then getting attacked by a mud monster. The tone is entirely different from the My Little Pony videos, so no idea what that's all about, but anyway. On to the next. Syriac Syriac is a YouTube channel that launched in 2006 and has posted videos regularly to this day. Primarily focusing on surreal animation, Syriac has formed a massive following to the point where he even made some crazy eye catches for Adult Swim. I really wish I had more to say, but definitely go check out his channel if you're liking what you see on screen. He has a style that is very much unique to him, and I've actually seen quite a bit of his stuff before and never knew it was his, as they were usually just posted as GIFs on random websites. Happy Tree Friends Happy Tree Friends is a popular animated web series created by Aubrey Ankram, Rode Montillo, and Ken Navarro under the company Mondo Media. The series was first uploaded to the internet in 1999, but I'm having trouble finding exactly where. Unfortunately, the Wayback Machine saved pages of Mondo Media's website from 1999 all the way to 2005 seem broken or something, as none of the snapshots are loading, so I can't see if there's any uploads there, but that would be my best bet, as of course YouTube wouldn't be created until 2005. The earliest Wayback Machine snapshot of the original HappyTreeFriends.com website was from 2001, so I'm willing to bet that Mondo Media's website hosted them before moving Happy Tree Friends to its own site, as around the early 2000s, the series was becoming incredibly popular. I myself remember it being everywhere in the early 2000s. Happy Tree Friends was like the cool, edgy thing to know about and be into in middle school. I'd say the series really peaked in 2005 or 2006, as of course YouTube would make watching videos online mainstream, and the series would even get its own TV series on G4 Tech TV. 
Also, in 2007, Happy Tree Friends would team up with Fall Out Boy and make a music video for the song Carpal Tunnel of Love, which has a cameo of the band members as bears in the Happy Tree Friends universe. The series hasn't had any releases since 2016, but hasn't been cancelled, so let's just hope the Happy Tree Friends are just on a long hiatus. Sad Satan Sad Satan is a PC game that the YouTube channel Obscure Horror Corner posted a playthrough of in June of 2015, and after uploading four parts to this playthrough, hasn't uploaded anything since. Strange, considering that the channel regularly posted videos up until that point, and Sad Satan had attracted many people to the channel. While the gameplay itself is indeed unsettling, I swear I've heard these audio clips from the Conant Project Number Station CD before, but I digress. The owner of the channel at one point was interviewed by Kotaku and claims that they had downloaded the game via the deep web using Tor, after receiving a tip from an anonymous subscriber, that subscriber claiming that they came across the game on a deep web forum. The game has since had a creepypasta made about it, and finding a safe version of it to play is difficult. Or so I've heard, as apparently there was a version of it that was passed around on 4chan that was virus infected and another that was passed around on Reddit that had some, let's just say, illegal images within it, and another version that has been dubbed the clean version. But honestly, search for that stuff at your own risk, folks. As with most of these creepy things, Sad Satan would of course spawn, as mentioned, a creepypasta, a subreddit, and endless discussion and speculation. But most people these days seem to think that the person behind the Obscure Horror Corner YouTube channel themselves made it. But that's entirely speculation, as the owner of the channel has seemingly vanished off the internet. Creepy Tape Found in Croatia From what I can tell, this video was originally uploaded by YouTube user Darth Nixa in 2012, and claims that it was a tape found in Croatia, hence the title, on October 4th, 2005. The video wouldn't really get noticed until around 2014 when sites like Reddit would start spreading it around. Darth Nixa seems to have a strange mix of random videos on their channel, from one about Star Wars Sith Lords, to best Christmas songs, to confirmed UFO sightings. They even have the original Alien Autopsy video on the channel, which is a classic. That was like viral videos before the internet. But anyway, the video follows two people as they are stalked and followed by a mysterious masked figure. The two eventually make their way to what appears to be an apartment structure, and attempt to call the elevator. Upon the elevator's arrival, the door opens revealing the man in the mask before the video cuts. A few more seconds of recording are at the end of the footage, though what is being recorded is illegible. The legitimacy of this video is of course questionable, and with anything on the internet you kind of always expect it to be a project of some sort. Also, this channel has another similar creepy video, this one called Creepy Unexplained Finland Footage, where two people riding motorcycles ride past a strange figure off the side of the road and stop to investigate, and this one is entirely silent except for the very end where there's a very obvious jump scare with the loud static that could easily be made less quiet if the intention wasn't to scare people. So that alone puts this Finland video as well as the Croatia one in the doubt tab, but if not for that loud static noise, they're both honestly pretty good. I'll even admit, I jumped the first time I watched the Croatia video and the elevator doors opened, revealing the masked guy. That one actually got me pretty good. Crypt TV Crypt TV is an entertainment company founded by Jack Davis and Eli Roth and backed by Jason Blum, the guy behind all those wonderful Blumhouse pictures. He's the guy we have to thank for all the Paranormal Activity and Purge movies. Anyway, the channel was launched in December of 2014, and their first video was posted in 2017, unless earlier ones were deleted or something, because there's a kind of a big gap there. The channel for the most part focuses on horror shorts, and sometimes horror comedy as well, and still uploads regularly to this day. In May of 2021, some of their original characters from their shorts were added to the game Dead by Daylight, so that's kinda cool. Dog of Man Once again, we're back to a video by David Firth, the guy who brought us Salad Fingers. Dog of Man, uploaded to YouTube in November of 2008, and Newgrounds on the same day, is... Well, it's more of what you'd expect if you've seen Salad Fingers. 
incredibly strange, kind of gross animation, and a plot that is... well... I, I don't really know what the plot is. Salad Fingers at least makes a bit of sense, but this here? This is just strange and hard to piece together what exactly the message is, if there's any at all. Either way, I do think it's at least worth checking out, especially if you like Salad Fingers, so give it a shot. Pete the Meat Puppet Pete the Meat Puppet was uploaded to YouTube in November of 2008 by the channel Diesel, who hosted quite a few other videos before this one came out, and still uploads regularly to this day. In my research, I came across an interview on IndieWire where a director named Jeremy Jasper claims to have directed the short, and I also found another credit that had him listed under the music, so maybe he wrote the song too, but I really don't know for sure. Anyway, I find the video absolutely hilarious, but I can totally understand where others can see it as kind of creepy. It's about a butcher who makes a child out of spare pieces of meat, and when he comes to life, the butcher is so startled that she dies, but tells Pete the Meat Puppet to find the meaning of life. Pete goes on to become a millionaire, only for his life to go down the drain from an indulgent lifestyle, and a video of him with a cow leaked out and ruined his life. He struggles to get by before picking up a guitar and traveling the land, once again looking for the meaning of life. Honestly, it's a great video, and the song is really catchy. Yelling Creature This video was uploaded on October 30th, 2006 by YouTube user Rob Herman. Rob Herman still uploads regularly to this day, and has quite a variety of videos on his channel, from music to comedy to podcasts. He has a couple other weird videos here and there, but none of his other videos have reached the level of Yelling Creature, which currently sits at over 10 million views. This video is 7 seconds long and features a, well, creature yelling no twice, and that's really it. It certainly looks a bit creepy though, I'm sure if I saw this at like 8 years old it would have creeped me out, but apart from that, not much else to really say to be honest. On to the next. Lost Episode Creepypasta Videos this is multiple videos across multiple channels, so I'm really just going to summarize here. Many famous TV shows, usually cartoons, have creepypastas written about them about lost episodes that, oftentimes in the story, say how the episode only played one time really late at night, or that they found a blank VHS tape of a recording of the channel with this episode, but they never had seen it before, or... I think in one of the Spongebob ones, the narrator was like an intern at Nickelodeon and found the tape hidden in the back of a closet or something in the archives. Well, anyway, this point of the iceberg is referring to the attempts of usually amateur animators to make these fake episodes and make them look as real and convincing as possible. Dead Bart is a pretty popular one for The Simpsons, Squidward's Suicide of course, among others. We'll be talking about a few of these later on, however, which is why I haven't mentioned them yet, so, um... More on that later. Pony.mov No idea why this is on the iceberg, because it isn't creepy in the slightest, but it is on the iceberg, so I must talk about it. YouTube channel Hot Diggity Demon started a series in October of 2011 called Pony.Mav, a parody of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Again. None of the episodes are actually called Pony.Mav, just the series, which consists of seven episodes. Really, I'd never seen any of these before making this video, but they're actually pretty funny. Not much more to say about it though, but Hot Diggity Demon does still upload animation videos to this day, so if that's your thing, go check it out. Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared Created by Becky Sloan and Joseph Pelling, Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared is a YouTube channel and British web series that was first uploaded in July of 2011. The channel has one video before the Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared series started that came out in November of 2010, the same day the channel was created, called Bad Things Could Happen. Though not part of the Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared series, it's still really good, so I'm glad they've kept it uploaded to this day. The series is about three characters and their interactions with other creatures and objects that can talk, much like a children's television program like, you know, Pee Wee's Playhouse or something like that. Throughout each episode, everything seems like normal fun, but occasionally there are small hints that something is off, 
until close to the end of each episode when everything just goes completely out the window. Really, you've gotta just see it yourself, my descriptions will never do any of these videos justice. The series is only 6 episodes long, with long gaps between the episode releases, but honestly the production value is quite high so it's easy to forgive the long span of time between uploads. Unfortunately there hasn't been a new upload since September 13th, 2018, and there hasn't been a new full episode since June of 2016. However, in 2020, creator Becky Sloan announced that the series would be airing on Channel 4, a British free-to-air public service station, in 2022, which is pretty awesome, and hopefully gives the series much more content soon. Oliver de Sagazan Oliver de Sagazan, pardon my pronunciation of course, is a French artist, painter, sculptor, and performer. He created his YouTube channel in July of 2007 and has uploaded regularly since 2008. Nearly all of his videos feature his art and some amazing videos where he puts makeup on himself and… to put it into fitting words is hard, but what he's able to do is amazing, especially if you appreciate good horror makeup. He is able to do in minutes what modern horror special effects makeup artists can't do in hours, or just use CGI. Check out his video, Who is Behind Our Face, or really any of his other works. I mean, what you're seeing on screen is a good example, but really this guy deserves the exposure, so definitely go follow him if that sort of thing interests you. It's quite amazing. Oliver would also be in the first season of the sci-fi horror anthology series Channel Zero, which was entirely based on the creepypasta Candle Cove, in which Oliver would play the Skin Taker character. No idea if the show's any good, but his work is definitely awesome. Haunt Haunt is a stop-motion short uploaded to YouTube in November of 2006 by YouTube user GRZ. The short features a girl walking through her house at night on the way to her bedroom. Upon getting into bed, she's terrified by… something. Something in the distance out her window. I don't want to spoil it, so I recommend you check it out for yourself because it's very well done. It's a fantastic short with excellent stop motion effects and tension. GRZ only has 3 other videos on the channel and hasn't uploaded in 12 years, but either way, if short horror is your thing, check this one out. Not really much more to say about it though, so on to the next. My Dead Great Grandma's Coffin in My Own Backyard Uploaded by DJ Def Joey in October of 2010, this video features presumably Joey as he shows us that he has his great grandmother's coffin in his backyard. Joey claims that around 20 years ago before this video, the cemetery where his great grandma was buried got closed down due to poor maintenance, so Joey arranged to have her coffin exhumed and moved to his backyard somehow. This video, however, isn't the first one to feature his great-grandma, as a year earlier in October of 2009, Joey uploaded another video called Revisiting My Great-Grandma's Coffin in My Yard. Unfortunately, this one isn't subtitled for his sign language, so I'm not sure what he's saying before opening the coffin, but he does, and proceeds to… kiss his great-grandma. Repeatedly. Yeah. He also has another video with his grandmother's corpse called Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things, but it's just the ending of the previous video where he kisses the corpse, but only that part. I honestly have no idea what to make of this, or if the body is real, I have no idea. A lot of people claim it's fake, their explanation being that the clothes and inner lining of the coffin would be in a much worse state, especially if the person died in the 40s. The natural decay of the body would have some effect on the fabric lining of the coffin and the clothing, but this doesn't appear to be the case. As there are many people who think that this is fake, there are just as many who think it's completely legit, so I have no idea. Regardless, it's a very strange video. The Exorcist Original Trailer the Exorcist has a pretty creepy and seizure-inducing trailer, so I won't show the seizure-inducing part too much during this segment. Apparently the trailer was banned and never actually shown in theaters, so that just makes me wonder where did this clip even come from? Did Warner Brothers just decide to release it eventually? Maybe it's a special feature on one of the DVDs or something, but either way, it's pretty creepy. Maybe it's just not so scary nowadays, I feel most people even may feel that way about the movie itself, but 
on the big screen and in 1973, he would have been running for the door. There was simply nothing quite like it at the time, and even for decades after that, The Exorcist was still seen as that movie that's the scariest of all time. I remember talking about it with my friend David in 6th grade, this would have been around 2003 or so. We had both heard how horrifying it was, and how we both really wanted to see it. Well, one night I finally went over to his house for a sleepover, and we rented it, and that movie changed me. Maybe not in the way it did most people, I mean it did still scare me in some scenes, but something about it stayed in my mind, beyond the horror aspect of it all. After that, I somehow acquired it on DVD and would watch it all the time, and it quickly became one of my favorite movies of all time, and it still is to this day. Later on in high school, I had a girl named Kendra over at my house, and she borrowed that DVD copy, and I never got it back, so Kendra, I know it's been 12 years, but I'd really like my copy of The Exorcist back, so yeah. On to the next. Girls See Ghost and Run on October 30th, 2012, YouTube user Angel Ruiz uploaded a video of two girls eating at a small table. One of the girls suddenly starts talking about how something is scaring her, looking into the entryway to the next room. The other little girl and person holding the camera both aren't sure what exactly she's talking about, but she's clearly shaken about whatever it is she's seeing. The person holding the camera asks the scared girl what is frightening her, only for her to point into the entryway of the next room though nothing is there. The scared girl then starts crying and makes her way to whoever's holding the camera, only for the other girl at the table who's been facing away from the other room this whole time to turn around, scream loudly, and run towards the person holding the camera. Despite how many times I watch this clip, I never see anything in the other room, and I do have to be a bit skeptical given the upload date of October 30th, right next to Halloween, but the children are quite convincing, even if it is fake. Still Life Still Life is an excellent short film directed by John Knotts and was uploaded to YouTube in July of 2006 by YouTube channel K0214315, who presumably isn't John Knotts or anyone associated with the film, and only has one other video uploaded that's a trailer for another short. According to IMDb, Still Life was originally made in 2005. The short is about a man driving through a town, only to seemingly hit a pedestrian with his car. He gets out to investigate and realizes it's a mannequin. As he looks around, he notices other mannequins and starts to panic, and really, going into any more than that would spoil it. It definitely takes inspiration from the Twilight Zone, especially in its music, and of course from the episode Where Is Everybody, which is one of the best, and at only 7 minutes in length, I'd say it's worth a watch. Color Red So this very well may be the shortest entry on this iceberg so far, as I'm not entirely sure what video this is even talking about. There's a great video that I instantly think of though, and it's on the Important Videos playlist. The video, uploaded by Alex Jimenez, features presumably Alex himself googling Color Red, and among the many results of red squares, there is one that is blue. If you think this could be referring to another video, please let me know in the comments, because I scrolled down for quite a long time for any other video that could be considered creepy and I didn't see anything. Not to imply that this video is creepy in any way, but I figured I might as well talk about something here than leave you all with nothing, so hopefully that at least gives you a good laugh, and if it is the correct video, I'm not really sure what is creepy about it or why it's even on the iceberg, but either way, on to the next. Robert Morgan Robert Morgan is a British filmmaker who created their channel in May of 2009 and started uploading that same month, and continues to upload on and off to this day, though his first short, Paranoid, was made in 1994, so he's definitely been doing his thing for quite a while. He specializes in stop motion, but also dabbles in live action as well. His videos are all quite strange, and one of them is a sort of homage to the 1982 horror film Basket Case. I have more to say, but we'll be discussing a specific short of his pretty soon though, so... More on that later. Elisa Lam Video Oh man, this is a big one. Most people who are interested in the creepy side of YouTube, or who are part of the true crime community, have definitely heard of Elisa Lam. 
Elisa Lam was a 21-year-old Canadian college student and was in California on a solo vacation. While staying at the Cecil Hotel, now known as Stay on Main in downtown Los Angeles, Lam was scheduled to check out on February 1st, 2013. She had regularly contacted her parents during her trip at least once a day, and after they hadn't heard from her, they contacted the Los Angeles Police Department and a search for her was underway. After two weeks with no sign of Elisa, the police would publicly release a video taken by a video surveillance camera in an elevator of the hotel, showing the last known images of Elisa Lam, and the footage is… interesting. Elisa's behavior seems very strange, as she peeks out the door of the elevator in a way that makes it look as if she doesn't want to be seen, and moves about, making erratic and strange movements, and may possibly even be talking to someone or something, but what that could be is entirely unknown. The elevator, for whatever reason, refuses to move during the entire time that Lisa is there, the doors only closing after she leaves, which is also quite bizarre. Shortly after the release of this clip, guests of the hotel began complaining about the water pressure, as well as the color and taste of the water being off. On February 19th, a hotel maintenance worker found Lamb's body in one of the massive water tanks on the roof that provided water to the hotel. Through autopsy, her death was reportedly due to accidental drowning, with her diagnosed bipolar disorder being a significant contributing factor. An interesting note about the case is that when searching for Lamb, ladders were needed in order to access the top of the water towers, as permanent ones are not affixed. What really happened to Elisa Lamb is still unknown to this day, and her case remains a popular point of discussion online. Baby Laugh-A-Lot Original Commercial Baby Laugh-A-Lot was a doll manufactured by the toy company Remco in 1970. Not only do these dolls have an incredibly creepy laugh, the face is horrific. But we're not here to talk about the doll, we're here to talk about the commercial. When I first watched it, I thought it was like a horror short or some sort of project, there's no way this could be real, but it is. The narrator starts maniacally laughing while the doll laughs, and there are incredibly jarring jump cuts of girls turning their heads to look at the doll. It's just a very unsettling video all around. I really can't imagine any kid who owned this doll owning it for very long. Imagine you put the doll away in your closet and go to bed only to be awoken in the middle of the night with its haunting laughter. Not to mention the fact that it rocks back and forth, this thing is just asking to be featured in a horror movie. Also, the aftermarket eBay value on these things is pretty high, often selling for hundreds of dollars. Are you curious what this thing sounds like when it's running out of batteries? Well, there's actually a video of that uploaded by YouTube channel The Toy Channel back in November of 2010, so check that out. It's actually a bit more funny than I thought it would be, but this doll's still incredibly creepy. Hi, I'm Mary Mary. Hi, I'm Mary Mary is a horror web series and ARG. The channel was made in April of 2016, and the first video was uploaded in July of the same year, and features Mary, who awakens in a familiar house but without any memories. All of the doors that lead outside appear locked, and no matter how hard she tries, none of the windows will break. Though she has access to the internet, it somehow seems that she's the only one online, as no other profiles or accounts exist, even on websites that are usually populated with millions. She shows that during the day, things are normal, but at night, there seems to be someone or something in the house with her. As the days go on, Mary is terrorized and driven crazy by whatever is keeping her in the house. Mary also had a Twitter that she updated as well as the series went on. It's now over, so if you want to binge out the whole series, go for it. It's actually quite entertaining. At least what I watched of it, as I've yet to complete it, and only just found it while researching this iceberg. Teddy Has an Operation Teddy Has an Operation was uploaded in April of 2013 by the channel ZFrank1, who has regularly uploaded videos since May 2009, though the channel was actually created in July of 2006. 
From what I can tell, Teddy Has an Operation is the only video on this channel that's this... strange. I mean, there are other strange videos on the channel, but nothing quite like this one. The video shows a doctor performing surgery on a teddy bear, and everything seems, well, at least innocent enough when upon opening the bear, he finds candy, only for the wrappers to contain cigarettes. Deeper within the bear, he sees that Teddy is low on rainbow sprinkles and adds more. Beneath that, the bear is full of organs. It's, uh, quite something. The video currently sits at over 40 million views, so I'm sure many people have seen it, but this was my first time coming across it while researching this video. I think the reason a video like this is on the iceberg is that the channel doesn't seem to have anything else quite like this. Channels like Syriac and Jack Stauber, at least you can get an idea that the entire channel is following a theme, even if that theme is on the creepy side, but I think it's even more weird when it's one video buried among many other videos that have nothing creepy in them at all. Sitting and Smiling Sitting and Smiling is a uh, series, I guess, by YouTube user Benjamin Bennett that he posts to his channel regularly. Bennett's channel was first created on December 28th, 2013, and his first video, being the first Sitting and Smiling session, was uploaded July 28th of 2014, and Bennett continues to upload regularly to this day. What these videos feature is Benjamin Bennett sitting and smiling for four hours, and not just one time, not just 50 times. Benjamin Bennett has over 300 unique videos of himself simply sitting and smiling at the camera, all of which are four hours long, plus additional time for setup, but never under four hours. As of making this video, there are currently 318 of these videos, which means that Benjamin Bennett has a grand total of 1,272 hours of himself on camera, doing nothing but, again, sitting and smiling. If you were to watch all of these videos without pausing, it would take you nearly two months to do so. And that's not even the craziest part. Benjamin's dedication to his art cannot be understated, as in one video, refusing to get up to use the restroom, he proceeds to urinate in place without breaking character. On two occasions in the middle of the stream, he started crying out of nowhere, but regained his composure and remained in his spot, completing the four hours. And most bizarre, in one of his early streams, someone apparently broke into his home during his session, and Benjamin didn't even react or acknowledge the person. Bennett has gone on to say that he does this as a performance art, and has taken part in other forms of performance art as well. After his 300th episode of Sitting and Smiling, Bennett started another series called Walking and Talking, where he just walks around and talks about anything, and he generally maintains the four hour length, However, some videos are just a touch shorter, and in some instances, the battery of his camera dies. Despite starting this new series, Bennett continues to also make Sitting and Smiling to this day. Kate Yup Kate Yup is an interesting YouTuber who started their channel on March 11th, 2018, and first started uploading in April of 2018. Her videos consist of her eating insane amounts of food, often seafood, and yeah. Now, the reason this is on the iceberg is because after a while, people started to think that someone was keeping Kate hostage and abusing her, or something along those lines, as throughout the series, people put together things that they thought were hints of this, and assumed it to be the case. Whether or not it is, though, is pretty up in the air. I mean, the thing about YouTube is it could be part of the act, kind of like a performance piece. Either way, I kind of just find the whole eating aspect of the whole series to be pretty nauseating, even if the hostage stuff is all fake. Kate's last upload was in October of 2019, and there has been nothing heard of her since, and her last video apparently features her eating pork brains grilled in a waffle iron. Yeah, I, I don't know, maybe it's delicious or something. Body of a Pig Uploaded to YouTube in June of 2007 by YouTube user Devin Raymond, this video reportedly features an EVP, or Electronic Voice Phenomenon recording, that was taken during an investigation of what is believed to be a spirit saying, I have the body of a pig. 
Shortly after they recorded this voice, which they claim no one heard during the time of recording, they also captured a picture of a creepy looking entity. Now, whether or not this is real is obviously entirely up in the air. Scare Theater did a fantastic video debunking it, and I'm pretty inclined to agree with him, especially as this video was posted around the same time Ghost Hunters and all those other famous ghost hunting shows were making their rounds. Not to mention, Devin Raymond has other videos on his channel that are comedic and a couple that are obviously fictional, and that enough leads me to believe that the uploader does these as a project, and that's completely fine. I don't care if someone tries passing ghost videos off as real, because let's be honest, if you don't believe in ghosts, they're all fake anyway, and if you do, you have to take all videos online with a grain of salt regardless. Either way, this video was pretty popular in the early days of the creepy side of YouTube, and I think for that alone, it deserves a spot on the iceberg. David Firth Well, here he is. We talked about Salad Fingers, we talked about Dog of Man, but David Firth has quite a lot of other videos on his channel beyond those. As I mentioned in the segment about Salad Fingers, David Firth is also a musician who has many albums and is of course an animator, meaning he's done many other projects outside of Salad Fingers and Dog of Man. He's dabbled in live action, stop motion, really he's all over the place, but they all feature his signature style. He even has a video called Flying Lotus which has David Lynch in it, which is just awesome. Just a random fact before we move on, David Firth voiced a Colin character on the radio station Flylo FM in Grand Theft Auto V. Kinda cool. Elliot Roger Elliot Roger created his YouTube channel in July of 2012, and would regularly start uploading videos from February of 2014 to May 23rd of 2014, in which he'd upload his final video entitled Elliot Roger's Retribution. After uploading this video, on the same day, he'd go on a killing spree taking the lives of six people before taking his own life, and really that's all I want to say about him. His channel would finally get terminated in April of 2018, which is kinda strange that it took so long, considering what he talked about in most of his videos. We'll be having a few more points on this iceberg in regards to mass shooters like Elliot Roger, and I plan to be as brief as possible when discussing those cases as well. I'm a Snake I'm a Snake is a channel that was created in September of 2009 and also features a video of the same name uploaded in August of 2010, featuring a man named Matt Keck wearing a homemade snake hat and talking about how he's a snake for nearly two minutes, and it's actually kind of funny. He also has uploaded I'm So Saucy, I'm a Bee, Icicle Karate, and lastly the director's cut unedited version of I'm a Snake, which is just over three minutes long. After the director's cut was uploaded in April of 2011, the account has been inactive since. Matt Keck apparently now has a storefront on Cameo.com where you can order a personalized video from him for $25, and apparently it does quite well with over 1400 reviews, and as of writing this, the reviews are quite recent, so it sounds like his snake character is doing quite well for him, which is pretty awesome. Sex Offender Shuffle Uploaded by YouTube user Scott Gardner in November of 2009, this is simply a music video in which I assume the characters are making in order to give to families in neighborhoods that they plan to move to, so that they know their status. Not much more to say about it than that, it's really more funny than anything. I could have sworn this was a spooky YouTube video iceberg, but I don't know. Anyway, Scott Gardner created this channel in January of 2006 and uploaded their first video in the same month, and continued to upload fairly regularly until 2011, after that only releasing one video every couple of years, the most recent video being uploaded in December of 2019. The channel has a pretty large number of subscribers and multiple videos with well over a million views, so I'm not entirely sure the reason for the channel's silence. According to Wikipedia, Gardner has been a co-host for a theme park podcast called Podcast The Ride, which honestly I think is pretty cool. I'm a huge amusement park and roller coaster enthusiast to like, a fanatical level. But anyway, on to the next. Cat Ghost Cat Ghost is an animated web series that was started in June of 2017, hosted by a channel of the same name. The channel has uploaded fairly regularly since being created, 
Although, after the main series, consisting of 13 episodes, as well as some supplementary videos to the Cat Ghost series, the channel started uploading the series again, but this time dubbed in Portuguese. Now, the crazy thing about Cat Ghost is that not only is it a half-creepy, half-hilarious web series, but every video came with a game in the description that you can download and play, featuring the characters. The games all give a lot of hints, and in some cases answers to characters and the history of the characters. It's all pretty deep stuff, so I recommend checking it out, or if you want a rundown of everything, check out Nightmind's deep dive video on the series, it's really good. Agamemnon Counterpart This video was first uploaded to YouTube in June of 2006 by user Michael Robinson, who created the channel a few days before uploading Agamemnon Counterpart. The video starts with a warning message that is similar to what you'd see on any commercial VHS tape, followed by a message that mentions a videotape being found in a heap of rubble in the year 2571, but that the footage you're about to see is not related to that tape. So... Why is this message even here at all? Well, anyway, the footage shows what looks like some children's programming with a collage of music and screaming and... Well, that's really it. The video has, of course, spawned a creepypasta and dozens of analysis videos on YouTube, of course. In the description for the video, it reads, Sound Design and Drawings by Dave from 2001, aka D2K1. However, in my research for the point, I watched a dozen videos, and in Scare Theater's video in particular, he claims that in a 2013 upload of this video, the description instead reads, Music and Drawings by Jason Kovac, aka Dave from 2001, D2K1, but I can't find this 2013 upload anywhere and have no idea who this Dave or Jason person is, if, uh, if it's two different people or one person who also goes by Dave, 2K1, I'm not really sure. Either way, it turns out that this was just a project made for an event hosted by Destination Imagination, called Destination 2001, where people could submit their artistic videos, and Agamemnon Counterpart was simply one of those videos. The only mystery now, however, is why the original upload from 2006 in the description reads Jason Kovac aka Dave, but the 2013 upload of the same video simply says Dave from 2001 aka D2K1. I don't know, maybe either Dave or Jason Kovac is an alias or something? Regardless, Agamemnon Counterpart seems like the kind of video that you would find on Adult Swim late at night nowadays. Happy Anniversary Originally uploaded on February 8th, 2012 by user 112Dirtbag, the video simply features some old guy laughing on camera before immediately returning to a blank expression, followed by a wink before the message Happy Anniversary pops up on screen. Somehow, people came across this video and, given when it was uploaded, linked it to the disappearance of Maura Murray, who went missing on February 9th, 2004. There's a point in Layer 3 that's about 112 Dirtbag as an account, so we'll talk about his connection to Maura Murray and more when we reach that, so, um... More on that later. Lasagna Cat Lasagna Cat is a channel that was created in October of 2007 and started posting videos that same year. It started off as videos of Garfield comic strips being acted out in real life with other interesting skits following, and it would continue this format for 26 videos until suddenly the channel would just stop posting content. From 2008 to 2017, the channel would remain silent, until finally, in February of 2017, the channel would return with an interesting survey that you can take part in, as well as several other new videos. The survey video in particular featured a phone number that you can call, and you'd be asked a question, and for the time being, that would be it. Amazingly, only two weeks later, a new video titled Sex Survey Results would be uploaded. This video, clocking in at just under 5 hours in length, would feature John, Garfield, and Odie answering the door as guests arrived to their home, in which, upon answering the door, an audio recording of their survey answer would be played. 
This would repeat for over four hours until the final six minutes of this video, which is certainly why this channel is on the iceberg. Outside of all the crazy stuff that happens in the other Lasagna Cat videos, this final six minutes is completely nuts, and I don't even really know what to say about it. It is just... you really just need to watch it. The channel has been silent once again since the upload of sex survey results, but even so, Lasagna Cat has surely left its mark. This project was created by a duo named Zach Johnson and Jeffrey Max, two directors who make up the team known as Fatal Farm, and they have directed commercials for many prominent companies, among other projects including working with Adult Swim, which seems fitting enough. If you want more information on Lasagna Cat, Nightmind does a great video on the series, and Super Eyepatch Wolf also talks about it in his What the Internet Did to Garfield video. Dad Dad is a YouTube channel created by Nathan Barnett in January of 2019 and still uploads fairly regularly. The first video was uploaded a month after the channel was created and for the most part all feature the character of Dad portrayed by Barnett himself. In the earliest uploads, the videos start off with a vibe that's just… I don't even know, strange I guess, followed by music parody and dance videos which are more in line with what I know Nathan Barnett for as I originally knew him for his character Keith Apicary, and had never heard of this dad character until conducting research for this video. And apparently Nathan Barnett himself claims that he is not this dad character. In a video on Nathan's channel, he talks about how he was made aware of an imposter doing videos on his channel and isn't sure who it is. Whether they just happen to look alike or are using CG or something else, Nathan assures the audience that this is not him, and there are a few videos where Dad actually shows up in Nathan's videos. After this, the videos start to go into a very strange direction. Like, it gets into some pretty wild sci-fi stuff and cloning and all that. Now, if a series is short or easy to explain, I don't mind going into detail, but this series has so much depth to it that even Nexpo and Nightmind have multiple hour-long videos breaking it down, so if you really want the full gist, go check out their offerings, or just binge the series and see if you can put together the mystery. As much as I'd love to go in depth with it here, this video is already going to be a few hours long, and if I did that for every other point, you would never finish this video. So. On to the next. Little Baby's Ice Cream Founded in 2011 with its first store opening in 2012, Little Baby's Ice Cream was a now defunct ice cream company that had some strange flavors and even stranger advertising. Their YouTube account was created in May of 2012 and is still up to this day, despite the last video being posted in April of 2016 this final video being about a group of school children sending a pint of little baby's ice cream into space. Yeah. Their most infamous video, however, would be posted in August of 2012 entitled Little Baby's Ice Cream, This Is A Special Time, featuring a person completely covered in what appears to be ice cream and eating themselves with a spoon. The description of the video lists the director as Doug Garth Williams. Doug has his own YouTube channel and even has a behind the scenes video about the This Is A Special Time video where he answers questions and talks about the making of the original. It turns out that the substance that the person in the video is covered with is Kraft Jet Puffed Marshmallow Cream. Their channel features a few other videos like Eyes Scream and Check Out Our New Package which is interesting. Unfortunately, however, as I mentioned, the company is no longer around, so you'll never have a chance to try such appealing ice cream flavors as cucumber dill, balsamic banana, plain, or ranch. Yeah, ranch ice cream. Mr. Mix Gameplay Mr. Mix gameplay is simply the gameplay for the video game featured in the Mr. Mix creepypasta. From my research, the original creepypasta was created sometime in 2012, though I can't find the exact month, with the earliest Mr. Mix gameplay video I could find 
dating to May of 2012, though this clip is only 16 seconds long. The longer video that is more in line with the description in the creepypasta is nearly 5 minutes long, and was uploaded by YouTube user Subject1 in January of 2015. This gameplay video features all the staples of a creepypasta video game, such as loud noises, creepy visuals, video and audio distortion effects, and so on. As most creepypasta are made anonymously, there isn't really much more information about the history of Mr. Mix in regards to an author, but there you go. David Leib Hart, Salome. David Leib Hart is a Los Angeles-based musician, painter, puppeteer, and actor who has been featured on Adult Swim's Tim and Eric's Awesome Show, and that's where this particular video comes from, though he has many others. In the Salome video, David explains that there are humanoids living among us here on Earth called Carinians, and says that the way they say hello and goodbye is by saying Salome. David then sings a song he wrote about the saying Salome, and really, that's it. There isn't really anything creepy about this at all, but it's on the iceberg, so I have to talk about it. David himself has a YouTube channel and still uploads regularly to this day. Carl Mayer Carl Mayer is an avant-garde noise band from Japan, active from 1991 to 1994. If you search Carl Mayer on YouTube, the very first thing that pops up is a video with over 2 million views simply titled Carl Mayer, so I assume this is what the entry on the iceberg is referring to, as opposed to the band itself. This video features a song called Reverse, which is, from my research anyway, the band's most popular song. This video was uploaded by Ms. Carl Mai in May of 2008, though the earliest upload of the song that I can find is from March of 2007 by YouTube user Imon, and this upload has around 7,000 views. Back to the one with 2 million views, as I assume that's the video this iceberg is referring to, the video itself isn't really creepy, but the song certainly is, so I definitely recommend checking it out. I had never really heard of Carl Mayer before doing research for this video, but there's a video on the YouTube channel iFad World that really goes into the history of this band, and it's good stuff, so check that out if you're interested in more avant-garde noise goodness. Buff Carell Buff Carell is a YouTuber who has hundreds of videos of himself singing popular songs while occasionally dancing, and, well, that's really it. He originally got his start on YouTube back in April of 2008 when he created his first profile, Corel11. This channel primarily focused on fitness and dancing, and would upload its last video in November of 2008. Buff Corel would return to YouTube with his next channel in December of 2010, called The Corel 2011, but would only upload through 2011, hence the name I guess with his final video on this channel being uploaded in September of that year. Carell's current channel would be created in that same month, being September of 2011, but he wouldn't upload his first video until July of 2013, but fear not, as he consistently uploads videos from then to this very day. As a matter of fact, as I write this, his last video was uploaded just five hours ago. Carell himself is quite an eccentric guy, and his videos are always full of high energy, especially with those crazy moves he shows off. Buff Carell would make an appearance on Tosh.0 in 2017, and as I mentioned, seems to be doing quite well. I don't find any of his videos particularly weird or creepy or anything like that, just amusing, but it's on the iceberg, so there you go. Erratus Erratus all starts with a 4chan post made in November of 2015 in which an anonymous user tells of a conversation they had with a woman who was given a job at a factory by one of those temporary employment agencies. While on the job, the lady claims that she picked up a tape gun that had the word Erratus labeled on it, and unsure of what the name referred to, mentioned it to coworkers only for them to act suspiciously. Later, a coworker informed her that, years before, they had a job writing code for a company that would flag any employee that searched the word Erratus in the company's computer, and if they did, shortly after they would be fired. 
A month later in December, another anonymous user would make a post once again on 4chan, this time asking if anyone had any software or IT jobs on the East Coast between the years 2000 and 2010, and if they had any information on what they referred to as a sketchy HR-related program called Erratus. From here on out, the story gets pretty deep, including online surveillance, a band called KFC Murder Chicks, and a whole rabbit hole of strange oddities surrounding this word, Erratus. As much as I'd love to deep dive into every single point, we have a lot of iceberg to cover, so for more information, Blame It On George and Nexpo both have excellent videos diving into this Erratus mystery. Nana825763 As we discussed back in Layer 1, this channel is the one responsible for the username 666 video, but has quite a few more videos of varying levels of creepiness. Some videos are on ant keeping, which is actually quite cool if you're into that. Quite a few are Minecraft Let's Play videos that are just of course a bunch of Minecraft videos, so nothing creepy there. A couple house tour videos, which Luckily, Nana made a video showing how they made, so luckily they're not real, because if they were, they'd need some help, because this, this right here is quite creepy. The house tour videos deserve major props, as the artistry behind them is phenomenal, and many people believe these videos to be real. Nana actually has a few behind the scene videos regarding the making of the house tour videos, showing how they went about crafting this horror masterpiece, so definitely check those out. Despite this being the second time Nana has been on the iceberg, it won't be the last, however, so... More on that later. The Jungleless Monkey The Jungleless Monkey is a video uploaded by YouTube user TipsyDuck in December of 2015, and features Donkey Kong watching as a planet of Donkey Kongs rises on the horizon, while an interesting rendition of A Whole New World from the movie Aladdin plays in the background. This is one of the times during this iceberg where I really just don't have much to say in regards to the video, and as for the rest of the channel, it's mostly Team Fortress 2 comedy videos along with some Minecraft and a few other random things thrown in, so there you go. The Cat with Hands Back in Layer 1, there was a point about Robert Morgan, a director and artist who specializes in stop-motion horror shorts. One of his first uploads on his YouTube channel was The Cat With Hands. There are actually two versions of this video, as Robert also has a pilot of the same short on the channel as well, and it's a bit different from the final product. Both of which, however, still feature the titular Cat With Hands, and both animated in Robert's signature stop-motion style and bizarre tone. The final version adds some live-action scenes and characters, including one who tells the story of the cat to the others as they fetch water from the well, where the cat is said to have previously resided. The Cat with Hands was first uploaded to YouTube in May of 2009, though if my research is correct, was first created in 2001. It's a fantastic short and definitely fitting for any Halloween YouTube playlist. You're Not Perfect you Are Not Perfect is a short clip taken from the 2002 episode of Courage the Cowardly Dog, Perfect. The episode centers around Courage and his interactions with an elderly schoolteacher named The Perfectionist, and attempts to form Courage into a perfect dog. Despite Courage's best efforts, he cannot meet the expectations of the teacher, or do anything that she considers perfect. After instructing Courage to sleep perfectly, Courage has a nightmare in which the animation style of the show changes to show a strange 3D animated head telling him that he is not perfect. After working himself to exhaustion trying to be perfect, Courage is finally told that it's okay to not be perfect. Courage then purposely defies the perfectionist by doing something imperfectly and being proud of it, causing her to melt, and the show ends with a happy ending. The head that appeared during the dream sequence has become quite infamous among the scariest moments of the show, and you can find countless uploads of the 10 second clip on YouTube. The oldest one I can find is from 2009 and was uploaded by user Ali Skyler, though as I said the episode came out in 2002, so it already had traumatized kids for quite a few years before popping up on YouTube to do it all over again. Surreal Entertainment 
Surreal Entertainment is a massive channel with nearly 2 million subscribers. Created in January of 2018 with its first upload being posted in the same month, the channel has consistently uploaded new videos regularly to this day. The content is mostly crudely done 3D animated skits, some of which feature popular memes such as Think Mark and Pickle Rick, with an odd and, well, surreal twist to them. Other videos on the channel are simply sketches with warped and poorly made 3D models acting out strange scenarios, most of them being hilarious. The person behind the channel is known only as Samuel, and he has another channel called Surreal World, which is more of a vlog channel in which Samuel plays games and talks about various topics, with the occasional surreal behind the scenes video thrown in for good measure. Satan's Sphinx Satan's Sphinx is a video that's actually not on YouTube. In fact, it may not even exist at all. Satan's Sphinx is said to be a video banned by the government due to its ability to make whoever watches it go completely insane. Whether it's used as a torture device or is simply something that someone created and has been censored by the government isn't entirely known. Satan's Sphinx has quite a history of people trying to track it down, but so far only fake videos claiming to be bits and pieces of it are on YouTube. A deep dive was conducted by Scare Theater in regards to the history of Satan's Sphinx and where it comes from, but in my opinion, it's rather inconclusive. After two videos discussing false leads from emails and other dead ends, it all appears to simply be untraceable, if it actually does exist. The most interesting thing he did find, at least in my opinion, is when he stumbled across an old Yahoo Answers post in which someone asked if anyone had information about Satan's Sphinx, and mentions it being a banned film. Another user then replied, Sometimes it's better to let sleeping dogs lay. There is a reason this movie was banned, stop trying to find this movie, which is incredibly ominous, and saying something like this would likely encourage someone to keep looking even harder. This Yahoo Answers post, at least to Scare Theater's research, is the earliest mention of Satan's Sphinx that he was able to find online, as well as mine when conducting my own research. This Yahoo Answers post was made in May of 2009, and Satan's Sphinx search results don't spike until the following month in June. Unfortunately, the original Yahoo Answers post has been removed, though you can still view it via the Wayback Machine. Scare Theater's final video on the matter would come out in 2018, and he mentions receiving an email from someone claiming to have created the hoax. Scare Theater himself seems pretty adamant that this makes the case closed, but I'm still a bit skeptical. The email was anonymous, and anyone can say anything really, but regardless, it's still a great mystery. And we have a video coming up that would be sort of like a precursor to this whole Satan Sphinx not existing type deal, so... More on that later. The Wizard of Oz Face This point refers to a video uploaded by YouTube user Hi, this is Derek237, who in April of 2016 uploaded a video called Hanging Munchkin in the Wizard of Oz Original VHS Proof, in which, presumably Derek, shows off the infamous Hanging Munchkin urban legend in his VHS copy of The Wizard of Oz, only for something even more bizarre to show up. Towards the end of the video, Derek is showing the scene in which Dorothy, the Scarecrow, and the Tin Man march down the yellow brick road which is the infamous scene that the Hanging Munchkin urban legend originates from. However, the VHS tape he's watching the movie on distorts, and for a brief second, a face can be seen, and for whatever reason, Derek makes no mention of it, as if he didn't see it at all, only pointing out that the Hanging Munchkin is indeed a bird, which is the point that was always argued regarding the original Hanging Munchkin myth in the first place. Hi This Is Derek237 was created on November 1st, 2010, and his channel has quite a lot of other movie reviews, among some other random things thrown in, including this video, so whether or not it was made as a spooky video intentionally by Derek, or this is really a tape oddity, is entirely up in the air. I stand more on the side of it being intentional, given that this is a commercially released tape, Honestly, if he used a version that he said was taped off TV or was some other copied tape, it'd be much more creepy and probably more believable, but he's using an officially released copy. As a matter of fact, I own the exact same copy on VHS that he's using to demonstrate in this video, so who knows, real or not, you decide.
Saudi Arabia Police Encounter with a Real Witch Reportedly recorded in 2015 and posted to the website Horror Galore in October of 2017, as well as on YouTube on the same day, the video features a Saudi Arabian police officer and his encounter with what the video claims to be a witch. The man's yelling and the fear in his voice really adds to the authenticity of this video, at least in my opinion, even if it is fake. I remember seeing this video when it first came out and, despite questioning legitimacy, thinking it was still quite creepy regardless. I was hoping that while researching this point of the video that I would come across more information about it in any way, from legitimacy to finding out that it was someone's project, but there's honestly nothing online about this video outside from where it was originally posted, and other channels analyzing it with no conclusions. No one is claiming it as their own, and no one's coming forward about it being the person who encountered the witch. Again, even if it is fake, I absolutely love this video as it's just the right amount of creepy and just vague enough to possibly be real, even if I'm still skeptical. 0101-0101-0000-0001 This string of numbers refers to the first in a series of uploaded videos from the channel Knock Plus 10. The Knock Plus 10 channel was created in March of 2015, and the first video was uploaded a day after the channel was created. The particular video features distorted music with equally distorted imagery until the word start appears on the screen, followed by a stream of letters that are spoken by a text-to-speech-esque voice, before displaying the word end before the video, well, ends. This is actually the start of an ARG about an underwater military base located at the bottom of Mariana's Trench, that houses a biomechanical AI that is responsible for uploading these videos to YouTube. Many of the deciphered messages within the videos uploaded on the channel that have been decoded by those actively participating in the ARG have found that the biomachine is somehow connected to multiple brains that were once part of humans, and that it somehow can still feel pain, and it begs for its creators to kill it. This, as most ARGs do, if you're noticing a pattern, runs quite deep, and as usual, Nightmind does a couple fantastic analysis videos detailing all the codes and what all has been found by the community in regards to the Knock Plus 10 ARG. Honestly, I'm surprised this point on the iceberg isn't just Knock Plus 10 instead of just the first video, but I'm pretty certain that's what the string of numbers is referring to. If the title of this point is referring to any other videos, I didn't find it in my research, so this knock plus 10 thing would be my best guess. The Crow and the Raven The Crow and the Raven is an animated short film with really awesome art. The channel that hosts this video is Marques Belial, pardon if I pronounced that wrong and was created in June of 2007, with The Crow and the Raven being uploaded in March of 2012. The channel has other creepy shorts, but appears to not be active anymore, as the last video was uploaded back in 2019. Back to The Crow and the Raven, the art style is very reminiscent of Stephen Gamel, the guy who did the illustrations for the Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark series, which I adore and I read a bunch as a kid. The plot is very much up to interpretation, as it all seems quite metaphoric, at least to me, or maybe I'm just missing something. Regardless, it's videos like these that I love to come across when conducting research. I never knew about this, and probably would have never seen it otherwise, so that's why I love doing these kind of research videos. Pam Tree Pamtree is a YouTube channel created in August of 2016 and had uploaded videos regularly until June of 2020, and has not uploaded any new videos since. All of the videos on this channel feature bizarre 3D animated shorts made in Gary's Mod featuring characters in strange and surreal situations. Some of the characters are crude versions of popular characters such as Spongebob or The Simpsons, and others are just, well, strange. Surrealist Entertainment, the channel we talked about a few entries back, was most likely inspired by this and other channels much like it, as the format was quite popular in the late 2010s. 
Not too much to say about it apart from that though, so on to the next. Homunculus video. This is a video created by, um, Kaxdilet? Pardon my Russian. Kaxdilet translates to how to make in English, which is quite fitting as this channel teaches you how to make some interesting things such as unlimited free energy and even a homunculus. A homunculus, for those curious, is an artificially created human, though in a more modern sense they could really be any living thing just so long as it's created artificially. The channel was created in November of 2015, and the first homunculus video was uploaded in the same month. The video shows the steps on how you can make your own homunculus, and shows the results of the experiment, a strange looking blob of flesh, and seemingly the beginning stages of arms and legs from the mass of flesh. There have since been 21 videos created on this channel about creating a homunculus, with the most recent being uploaded in January of 2018. However, this remains the most recent video uploaded on the channel to this date. Each homunculus video entry shows varying levels of success in creating one. The most infamous of these videos is the second one in which the uploader crushes the creature with a book after it reportedly sprayed something at him. As I mentioned, there are 21 total homunculus videos and, eventually, the creator starts making some real progress. In episode 3, he cracks a bunch of attempted homunculus eggs into a container, and while talking about the seemingly failed experiment, you can see some movement within the jar. In the next video, things seem to be back to basics, however this time, with a single egg, he hatches something alive and it doesn't attempt to spit on him. In episode 5, he shows a homunculus that has now grown into a strange shape and size. In episode 8, he shows another homunculus, this one with a very prominent eye, and demonstrates the eye tracking his hand as he moves it around the jar. The two homunculus are then put in the same container, and they slowly begin to seemingly fuse together. After the next several videos of the process taking place, the two homunculus have become what appears to be one organism. In episode 17, the homunculus exhales some sort of murky substance into the water it sits in. In episode 19, the creator puts a fish in the homunculus tank, and the fish, upon swimming near the homunculus, appears to faint out of nowhere and lie motionless. Upon attempting to retrieve the fish, the creator is struck with an electric current given off by the homunculus. And really, that's about the end of the series. According to a poster on Reddit, the creator of these videos, named Renat Almohamatov, had passed away, though I'm unable to find any date of when this happened. Regardless of whether or not these videos were real, back in 2016, these videos really made their rounds and were quite convincing. Awake this one has actually been pretty difficult to find, as simply searching Awake on YouTube brings up many different kinds of videos and channels, but I'm pretty certain this is what the iceberg is referring to. So this channel actually doesn't exist anymore. That is, if it's the same channel this iceberg is referring to. YouTube user ButterHCS has a screen captured video of himself browsing the old channel and showing that it had all of its videos set to unlisted, but also had a playlist of all 44 of the videos available to view. The Awake channel is apparently part of an ARG web series called Cave of Shadows that includes the Cave of Shadows YouTube channel as well as the channel NS0MNBY and Awake. Cave of Shadows itself appears to be off-air recordings of a TV local station with the first video showing a public service announcement, a documentary, and a child's program called Mr. Giraffe which is about safety and running with scissors, followed by a weather forecast, a relaxing nature program, and a sign-off. A lot of these ARGs are fairly hard to summarize in a video such as this, so as per usual, I'm thankful that Scare Theater has a video doing a deep dive on the subject, so go check that out for a deeper explanation. Henry Eats Henry Eats is a bizarre animation on the YouTube channel Ben Wheel. 
The video was uploaded in December of 2013, though in the description the creator states it was originally made in 2003. To be completely honest, the animation itself is fairly nonsensical, but I think that just does more for the strange and creepy tone it's trying to set. Ben Wheel has a point of his own coming up on the iceberg, so we'll be discussing more of him and his work in a bit, so... More on that later. Clowns. I'm honestly not sure what this point is referring to, as Clowns is pretty vague and generic, but if I'm to guess, I'm inclined to believe it's referring to the infamous 2016 clown sightings that were reported across many different countries during the summer months of that year. You can find many videos released during this year of people coming across clowns in the middle of the night, some of them just standing ominously in the distance, others approaching those recording the clown, among many other terrifying encounters. Meat Canyon. And yet again, another creepy animation channel. Meat Canyon has 4.2 million subscribers as of this video and was created in September of 2015 by Hunter Hancock, though Hunter wouldn't start uploading videos until the beginning of 2017. The channel is known for creating animations parodying popular series or other pop culture topics and still uploads regularly to this day. All of the videos often have disturbing and grotesque animation. We have a specific video from this channel coming up later on the iceberg though, so we'll talk about it more once we get there. Marina Joyce Marina Joyce is a YouTuber who created her channel in August of 2010, originally under the username iRaindropsX, and uploaded her first video in June of 2012. Attention to Marina Joyce's content would skyrocket when in July of 2016, Marina would upload a video called Date Outfit Ideas, in which many viewers noticed Marina acting in a distressed and uncharacteristic way, as well as many fans believing they hear her whispering help me in the middle of the video, and noticed what appeared to be bruises on her arms and back. Fans took this incredibly seriously, even to the point of reporting it to the police. Fans thought that Marina was suffering from drug or mental health related issues, or on the more extreme end of things was kidnapped and being forced to make videos by someone, some people even thinking she was kidnapped by ISIS. Yeah. After this video, every video posted after would be analyzed by YouTube detectives looking for any evidence of any of the theories behind what was going on with Marina. Marina would eventually reply to these concerns, specifically with the hashtag SaveMarinaJoyce, but of course, given that she posted online, many people brushed this off, assuming either she was forced to type this by captors, or is just saying that to avoid anyone finding out about any drug use, or any other of the many theories that people thought was inflicting Marina Joyce. The hashtag would peak during July of 2016, despite Marina constantly telling people that she was fine. Seriously, the things people would find in her posts and uploads were… sometimes absolutely ridiculous. During the same month, the Enfield police would be hit with so many reports about Marina that they would perform a welfare check and confirm that Marina was indeed safe and okay. I think Marina truly was okay, at least in regards to not being kidnapped or being forced to do anything against her will. Whether or not she had or still has any mental health issues or drug issues, however, could never really truly be known. Marina still uploads to this day and appears to be on a regular schedule of uploading once a month. Mariana Mortegard Glesgorv This is one of the earliest creepy YouTube videos that I recall ever seeing. From what I can find, the original video was uploaded to the YouTube channel Mortigard in April of 2008, the same month and year the video was uploaded. The video features an untitled song by the band Psy, while an image of a man is distorted and, according to some people, appears to change expressions, though it could just be the distortion making the face look like it's changing, but that's up to interpretation. As to my personal experience, you can skip from the beginning of the video to the end and the face appears the same. But as you watch the video, you can almost see the mouth, eyes, and eyebrows move, but again, that could just be from the distortion effects. 
This video does have a creepypasta associated with it, claiming that there's a full version of the video that's over two minutes long that was removed from YouTube because, and I quote, 153 people who viewed the video gouged their eyes out and mailed them to the YouTube main office. Yeah, that's a creepypasta quote if I ever heard one. The video itself, as I previously mentioned, is one of the earliest creepy videos to get passed around on the web, and at the time, many people really did find it quite creepy, as did myself. I remember being at my friend David's house and coming across it late one night on the family computer, which we weren't even supposed to be on in the first place, making it feel even more as if we stumbled across something we shouldn't have seen. Good times. Nitori has gone mad. Nitori has gone mad is actually the description for the video titled Tegaki Kiri Aji no Yukure Shietete Ne, which translates to handwritten cucumber flavor, take it easy. So, Yukure Shietete Ne, which translates to take it easy, is a popular meme in the Toho fandom, and this video we're discussing is about the Toho character in Nitori, so that's where the Toho meme fits in. Really, this video is just kind of a creepy animation with distorted audio and strange visuals, but basically, the character of Nitori and the Toho project is based off of the kappa of Japanese mythology, which are said to be the reason why people drown, and are also known for ripping apart their victims, which is depicted in this video, as Nitori imagines doing this since, as I previously mentioned, she's based off of the kappa. This video was uploaded on the channel Carrot Carp, which was created in 2007, and the video itself was posted in April of 2009. Bobby Yeah We talked about Robert Morgan a bit back in Layer 1, and again a few entries back when we discussed his The Cat With Hands video, and now we come to one of his other works, Bobby Yeah. This video was uploaded to YouTube in July of 2017, though was nominated for a Best Short Animation Award in 2011, so I'm assuming it was made sometime around then. This video is absolutely weird. I'm sure I've said that a lot so far in this video, and this definitely won't be the last time of course, but really, the things people can upload to YouTube come from such a strange and unique place of creativity, I don't really know how else to word it. Like. I don't even really get what it's about exactly, except for it being about the character, presumably the titular Bobby, getting himself into strange situations. Despite the scenario being completely out there, the animation itself is simply phenomenal. This had some serious time, dedication, and creativity behind it. 2H32 2H32 is a channel created in April of 2016, with its first video being uploaded in June of 2016, and still seems to upload fairly regularly, though there are some large gaps between releases, but if you watch any of these videos, you'd see why. The production value is quite amazing, and assuming it's all done by an amateur team, that's beyond reasonable. Every video is 2 minutes and 32 seconds long, and seems to tell a story of some sort of creatures that seem to be trying to lure victims, acting as sort of boogeymen who presumably abduct children. It seems as if the story is also conveying that at 2.30am, this link between our world and the boogeymen is connected, and stays open between then and 2.32am. The videos, as well as the comment section, often have things hidden within them that link the videos together, or in some cases suggest an order the videos are meant to be viewed in that doesn't coincide with their original upload order. From my research, I can't find any information regarding the creators of this channel, but honestly, the work they've done is pretty great, so check it out if you're cool with fictional creepy content, because even as an ARG, the videos themselves are still very entertaining, without needing to research a whole lot of stuff on the side. Pizza Time Pizza Pizza Time Pizza is a short series made by Alex Bale, who created his YouTube channel in June of 2014. Alex does some pretty funny videos, including parody movie reviews, parody conspiracy theory videos, and in October of 2017, Alex released the first part of the Pizza Time Pizza series. 
From the start of the series, it appears as if it's an advertisement for a pizza place, though with some strange differences as most pizza places don't have those strange pseudo-interview segments of people telling of their experience eating Pizza Time Pizza and what they gained from doing so. Shortly through this video, you may notice that everything is a bit off, and that's putting it lightly. The ad claims that it's seeking for people to join the Pizza Time Pizza family and that your life will be made infinitely better by doing so. This web series also has a website that looks very much like a legitimate website for a pizza place complete with a menu and online ordering, though the online ordering option is unavailable. There is also a page called Teachings which has lessons from the pizza man, who is the one behind the whole operation though many of the teachings are missing with large gaps between them. The whole thing is bizarre and comes off as very cultish, especially in the way that the narrator refers to everything within Pizza Time Pizza as a family. YouTube channel Inside a Mind actually did an analysis on the Pizza Time Pizza series that Pizza Time Pizza itself actually responded to. I do recommend checking out Inside of Mind's video on the topic, as they really go much more in depth than I can here on a video that just discusses so many other things, so check that out if that sounds up your alley, or just check out the original Pizza Time Pizza series itself. Unedited Footage of a Bear Unedited Footage of a Bear is an infomercial bumper for the Adult Swim programming block of Cartoon Network, directed by Alan Resnick and Ben O'Brien. We'll talk a bit more about Alan Resnick later, as he has a pretty major series coming up further down on this iceberg. Anyway, while the video does start with footage of a bear, the clip seemingly ends as the commercials start playing. However, you slowly start to realize that this isn't quite the commercial you originally thought it was, and from there, Things get bizarre. The commercial starts as an allergy medication advertisement featuring Donna and her two children before things slowly start to get really strange. Donna leaves the park without her kids and proceeds to take more Claridrill, which is the medicine described in the advertisement. The plot then turns into a horrific metaphor for prescription drug use, specifically targeting the many side effects of seemingly safe prescription or over-the-counter medications that claim may bring about side effects such as depression, hostility, paranoia, and so on. I personally feel this video is a take on selling a product that claims to do one thing with little testing while having side effects that bring about something major. I definitely recommend you check this one out, at the very least to enjoy it as a short film, as it's quite well done. Andy Wilson 92 Andy Wilson 92 is a surreal animation channel that was started in October of 2006 and uploaded its first video in May of 2009. Andy would also post his animations to Newgrounds early on, but YouTube would be his primary posting location. Many of his early videos are animation tests, along with some of his initial strange animations, mostly centering around The Simpsons characters, Crash Bandicoot, Pokemon, and more, alongside videos with original characters. One of the consistent series uploaded to this channel is Mouse Tales, done in Andy's signature style. This series was started in 2011 and had its most recent episode uploaded in April of 2021. As is usual, I won't go incredibly in-depth when it comes to entire channels dedicated to a variety of different videos, but YouTube user RiverHerb has a 20-minute video on Andy Wilson 92 if you're interested in more comprehensive info. So go check out his video for a deeper look. Vaporeon Cry, Half, Quarter, and One-Tenth Speed This video, created by YouTube user um, this symbol, was uploaded in November of 2015. The video simply shows that the original cry of Vaporeon from Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow versions sounds increasingly creepy as you slow it down. There isn't really much else to this video though, but yeah, it does actually sound quite creepy, but honestly, I'm sure you could do this with any Pokemon cry from the early generations and you would probably get similar results. The Bitterroot Footage The Bitterroot Footage is something that my personal experience with is very much like the introduction story I told at the very beginning of this video. I remember being at my friend's house late one night when we discovered it and being completely engrossed in this story. 
Basically, a YouTube user named Chad Logan, who created their channel in April of 2012, would upload three videos detailing how they came across what has come to be known as the Bitterroot footage. A website was also made around the same time, simply called thebitterrootfootage.com, which would host everything behind this project. Shortly put, Chad was a student who was looking for furniture for their apartment and came across a table on Craigslist that he was interested in. The seller of the table included a few other random items, including a box that was locked. The seller was unaware of the contents and was unable to open it, and, looking to get rid of it, gave it to Chad along with the table. Chad was then able to force the box open, revealing some seemingly old photographs and an 8mm film reel. The photographs are all quite creepy and feature a hooded figure in multiple locations, and one of the photos shows a sack of some sort with chains wrapped around it. The 8mm film reportedly had 12 minutes or so of footage, but according to Chad, only about 5 minutes of the film could be salvaged due to how damaged and deteriorated it was. The film shows both the strange figure as well as the sack with chains around it featured in the photographs. After this, we see what looks to be an old medical incubator with a baby inside of it. And lastly, we see the figure, now in a wooded area, dumping a sack in the forest. The cameraman, who has presumably been filming all of this in secret, investigates the bag, only to find a severed human head inside, and this is where the footage ends. Whether or not it's real is, of course, up to the viewer. Most people early on felt that this may have been viral marketing for a film or some other project, but no projects have claimed to be connected to the Bitterroot footage. Considering that this whole Bitterroot thing happened in 2012, for no one to claim anything of it for so long is certainly strange. However, in 2018, a Reddit post made by a now-deleted account on the subreddit Captain Disillusion claimed to have created the Bitterroot footage as an art project for something much larger but the idea was ultimately abandoned. Unfortunately, this post only got 40 upvotes and only had two comments, which is an incredibly small amount of exposure for something that was once a popular mystery on YouTube as well as on Reddit, which leads me to believe that this hoax reveal is questionable. The OP does go into a lot of detail about the making of the photos and the film, but unfortunately it's just too up in the air to really say for sure. There are a lot of YouTube videos analyzing the story, and as of today, the truth behind the whole thing is ultimately still a mystery. Crow 64 Crow 64 is an ARG created by Adam Butcher who created their YouTube channel in May of 2006. Adam would upload a variety of videos on this channel throughout the years until October of 2020 when he would upload the video What Happened to Crow 64. This video goes into the troubled development of an unreleased Nintendo 64 game called Catastrophe Crow, and the mysterious life and disappearance of its creator, Manfred Lorenz. The game was first shown off at Space World 97 and reportedly caught the eyes of many, seemingly praising it as the next great 3D platformer after Super Mario 64, and had a target release year of 1999, though this date would continuously be pushed back until it faded into obscurity. Developers who were said to have worked on the game would share their feelings about its development on forums, including their frustration with Manfred in regards to his frantic and degrading life, both at work and at home. After the game had been in development for a number of years, exceeding budget to the point of being unable to pay the staff, Manfred dismissed all of those working on the game and took the project solo, spending countless hours working on the title alone, not once leaving the office. All until one day, Manfred vanished. The office completely clear of all workstations, hard drives, equipment, the entire place was entirely cleaned out. Manfred wasn't home either, with those looking into his whereabouts discovering that his wife had actually left the country over six months before. Manfred's boat was later found floating in the middle of the ocean, abandoned, with only a note in Manfred nowhere to be found. Time would pass, and Adam Butcher would claim to come across a development cartridge of Crow 64 for only 11 euros, buy it now on eBay, with a shipping cost of just over 6 euros. And if you know anything about the price of any development cartridge, let alone a game that was never released, you'd know that this is the first red flag that the story's sketchy, but anyway, I'm getting off track, because that's not the point. 
Adam Butcher would proceed to show off some gameplay of Catastrophe Crow, and from here the ARG would go incredibly deep with ciphers, multiple channels revealing more of the story, puzzles, and much more. Though I said at the beginning of this video that I'm not very big into ARGs, I've had to research every one that has come up on this iceberg, and as I'm doing the research of these points in order, this one has been pretty good. I feel a lot of intricate work has been done to make a convincing story, create gameplay that looks close enough to run on an actual N64, and leaving just enough unanswered to keep it interesting. Many YouTubers have videos dedicated to deciphering many of the secrets within this ARG, so if you want more, I'd once again recommend Nightmind, as he's done a great video covering the story in depth. The Chuckle Hut so, The Chuckle Hut is a video that originally was uploaded to YouTube by a user named Tridoff or Critoff, and I can't find the original date the channel or video were uploaded, though the re-upload was published in September of 2011. The video features a bizarre 3D model moving its mouth as music plays. The video is a minute long, and honestly I don't really have anything to say about it, it's just one of those weird videos you stumble across on YouTube late at night and just ask yourself, why does this exist? And really that's all I have to say about it. Tribe 12 Tribe 12 is considered part of the big three when it comes to Slenderman ARG web series, along with of course Marble Hornets and Everyman Hybrid, and in my opinion, is decent. I think I prefer the other two in most cases, but that's not to say Tribe 12 is bad, I just think the other two are significantly better. Anyway, the series follows Noah, who, after creating the channel for a school project that is mysteriously cancelled, learns of his cousin Milo's overdose. Noah then goes through some old tapes he recorded when he and Milo were last together and uploads them to the Tribe 12 YouTube channel as a sort of memorial. After Milo's funeral, Noah would talk to their grandfather who would inform Noah that Milo was most likely on the run from something. Following this event and some other strange instances, Noah's YouTube channel would be hacked with a mysterious video uploaded to it, which is what really kicks off this whole series. I personally think that this is the most over-the-top Slenderman ARG web series, and that's not always a bad thing. If you really want to dive into this, Nexpo has a 6 hour long Tribe 12 Explained video plus an 8 hour long live stream to go along with it, so there's plenty to get into. There is nothing, Dining Room Uploaded originally in April of 2006 by YouTube user David Earl, this is an incredibly popular example of early YouTube horror, and a video I personally saw quite often during my early days on YouTube. David Earl would create his channel on the same day as posting this legendary video and it would go on to be viewed millions of times and appear in many creepy YouTube video compilations, such as this one, so that's one more to add it to. David has a website dedicated to his digital design, art direction, and more, and a few other videos on his YouTube channel, some touching upon being on the creepier side, much like this one. Daisy Brown Daisy Brown is an interesting YouTube channel created in June of 2017, with the first video being uploaded the following month, and features Daisy Brown and her creature named Alan. As the series goes on, we eventually learn more about both Daisy and Alan. It appears as though Daisy has never had access to the internet before creating her channel or Twitter page, and we later learn that she's never really communicated with others outside of her parents. We also learn that Daisy's father apparently created Alan, and that Daisy's parents apparently haven't been around for quite some time. At one point, Daisy mentions not wanting to go into the basement of her house, which was somewhere her father told her to never go, as there is black mold down there, and Daisy mentions that you can get Lynx disease from black mold. Now, this Lynx disease connects Daisy to another channel that we'll be discussing later, and someone that we talked about previously, so, um... More on that later. But anyway, as the series progresses, Alan becomes more and more sentient and vocal about how he feels about Daisy and the situation they're in. The series had its last video uploaded in August of 2018, so if you'd like to get a video rundown of the whole story, as usual, Nightmind does a great video going in depth, so check it out. But the story's finished and it's pretty good, so if you want, just check out the whole thing. 
Barbie.avi Barbie.avi is a video of what appears to be a young woman being interviewed, though the audio is very distorted and the conversation can't really be made clear. As the interview goes on, the woman seemingly grows more uncomfortable and uneasy, though it's hard to really say for sure. The video also has a creepypasta story that goes along with it. Basically, someone finds an old computer in a junkyard and salvages it, finding this video on the hard drive. From the research I've done, it appears as though the creepypasta story was made first with no video to speak of, and the video that we now know as Barbie.avi appeared online around a month or so after the creepypasta was written. These videos were first uploaded to YouTube by user Xenopasta in August of 2009, the same day the account itself was created. The creepypasta mentions a moment in the video at the very end that cuts to a person walking along railroad tracks, though I've been unable to find any version of Barbie.avi on YouTube that contains this part of the video, so Maybe that's just part of the fictional story. Some research has been conducted by groups online that have found a decent amount of information in regards to the history of this video, and it turns out that the woman being interviewed is named Tamara Klein, and the case has basically been solved. The interview was actually being done for a magazine and was recorded in the mid to late 1980s, and yeah, no creepy stuff here. Rubber Fruit Rubber Fruit is a Gary's Mod animation channel created in October of 2006 and released its first video in March of 2009. I'm gonna be honest with you, while I can question how certain entries on this iceberg can be considered creepy, this one really takes the cake because not a single one of these is creepy. If you watched any sort of Gary's Mod video from back in the late 2000s, they're no different for any of those, so I don't know, maybe I'm missing something. I looked into Rubber Fruit deeper to see if maybe there was another channel or video unrelated to Gary's Mod that I was possibly missing, but everything led me back here, so I'm not really sure. Mark Twain's The Mysterious Stranger So this isn't actually a YouTube video, I mean you can find the clip on YouTube, but The Mysterious Stranger is actually a scene from the 1985 movie The Adventures of Mark Twain a stop-motion claymation film directed by Will Vinton. The scene in question is of the three main characters, Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn, and Becky Thatcher, meeting the titular mysterious stranger, who introduces himself as Satan. Satan proceeds to display many incredible feats, such as creating fruit and bringing clay figures to life. After the children create a village of clay and the villagers start fighting amongst each other, Satan, seemingly enraged, destroys the entire village in a scene that's honestly quite intense, all the while spouting nihilistic comments about humanity and existentialism. It's an amazing scene and I definitely recommend watching it. Not sure how the rest of the movie is, but this clip is definitely worth checking out. 112 Dirtbag This connects back to the point earlier about the disappearance of Maura Murray and the YouTube video Happy Anniversary that was on Layer 2. The man who created this channel, as well as the Happy Anniversary video of course, is Jeffrey Alden Olsen, a complete nut job who apparently just wanted attention so he made the Happy Anniversary video of himself as well as a few other videos and hosted them on his channel, which has since been deleted. Another video posted here was one simply called Maura Murray, as if that's not suspicious, and simply shows a picture of a ticket to Bretton Woods Mountain Resort dated to February 11th, 2004, two days after Maura went missing. This video was deleted two days after being uploaded, though. Another video called No Hope for Mental Wannabe shows Olsen playing a keyboard as well as a cryptic picture that reportedly resembles Bretton Wood Resort and some believe it could be a hint to where Olsen hid the body, given that he was certainly making himself look like a suspect. According to a Reddit post, a user claims that Olsen was investigated by police in regards to the Maura Murray case, and nothing came of it, so this has led many online to believe that he was just some crazy guy who wanted attention. 11BX1371 this video actually started on 4chan and was posted in May of 2015 by an anonymous user claiming to have found a DVD on a park bench. Upon taking the disc home and playing it, 
This video was what was on the disc. On the same day as this post, a YouTube channel by the name AETBX posted the same video with a title and description all in binary, with the title translating to Muerte or Death in Spanish. The video was uploaded to yet another channel by the username Parker Wright in September of 2015 under the name 11BX1371, though this could simply be a re-upload with no connection. In October of 2015, someone named Johnny from a tech website called Gadgets.com reportedly received a package addressed specifically to him containing a puzzle, which was just a CD with some strange code written on it. This code was actually a string of Base64, which is a computer language, and when translated, gives us 11BX1371. The video itself features many more codes scattered about, either hidden within the video or in the description of the video with more binary, and images were even found when the audio for the videos were put in a spectrogram, a program that creates images from sound, or vice versa. Among the codes throughout the video, one was even the coordinates to the White House. It would eventually turn out that Parker Wright, after creating a Twitter account as well, would come forward as the creator of the original video, as well as the initial 4chan post. Another video would be posted to the Parker Wright YouTube channel titled 11B31369 in the same style as the initial video. At this point, Parker Wright said that this was all done as an art project and nothing more, which, as usual, bummed out a lot of people who really want these ARG sort of things to be real, I guess, but, like, what do you expect? Even Cicada3301 probably just had normal people behind it. The last video in the Plague Doctor series was uploaded in April of 2019, though this video doesn't seem to have much in-depth analysis available. This house has people in it. Once again we got another video from the mind of Alan Resnick. This House Has People In It is another Adult Swim project uploaded in March of 2016, and is just as bizarre as unedited footage of a bear. This House Has People In It features a family as strange things slowly start to occur around the house, all while under the watch of a surveillance system. The video starts with the parents having a discussion while a person lays on the floor of the kitchen face down. We eventually learn that this is Madison, the biological daughter of Anne, the mother. Tom, the stepfather, realizes that Madison is actually sinking into the floor and from there, everything devolves into complete chaos. There are many analysis videos and subreddits for this video, especially with its connection to Alan's other projects, but wow. As a horror short, I certainly recommend it, and outside another project we'll be discussing soon, it's my favorite of Alan Resnick's projects. As usual, Nightmind has a great video discussing the meaning behind the short and the connections it makes to other Alan Resnick projects, as well as YouTuber Nothing Explained, who also does a great analysis. Pilot Red Sun Pilot Red Sun is a surrealist animation YouTuber who created their channel in June of 2010 and first uploaded a video in December of 2012. The creator of this channel is Michael Epler, who, alongside being an animator, is also a musician. His style, like most creepy animation channels, is often very surreal and warped, and often focuses on characters from pop culture, though some of their videos do feature unique characters. His most popular video is called Garfield, which is a Garfield parody type video, and is also the video that I know them for, particularly because it was featured on the Important Videos playlist, which I've watched countless times. They have another video that's coming up a bit later on the iceberg though, so we'll be discussing Pilot Red Sun a little bit more later. Vrillin. So I'm not positive if this is what this point is talking about, but when I hear Vrillin, the first thing that comes to my mind is the infamous TV broadcast hijacking that occurred in 1977 in the UK. I looked deeper and didn't really find anything on YouTube in regards to Vrillin outside of this hijacking, so I think it's a safe bet. Basically, the hijacker claims to be Vrillin of the Ashtar Galactic Command. Yeah, Ashtar, not Ishtar. And it just tells the people that they must stop fighting and seek world peace in order to advance to the next stage of human evolution. This is the first ever recorded case of TV broadcast hijacking and would make way for other famous examples like the Max Headroom incident and more. 
The identity of the hijacker has never been revealed, and today, it's just an interesting footnote in the history of TV broadcast hijackings. White House, Why You Never Became a Dancer White House is an experimental avant-garde noise band from England, forming in 1980. Why You Never Became a Dancer is a track off of their 2003 album Birdseed. The song was uploaded to YouTube by user Acid Blood Infusion in November of 2008 and features a creepy video with it, probably because the song itself, being avant-garde, is quite strange so putting a creepy video with it is quite fitting I suppose. Oddly enough, when you look up the song on Google, it states that the artist does not want the lyrics to this song to be posted on the internet. We respect this decision and have removed the lyrics from our archive. Though you can find the lyrics through other sources, I just thought this was interesting. I don't really have much to say about it besides that however, so on to the next. Dreamer Heaven The full name of this video is Dreamer Heaven Levels 1 Reigns Demise of Reptile, and it's… well, I really don't know. The story goes that it was found on the deep web, and from the snippets that are easily found on YouTube, seems to be two adults tormenting a child in a dark room because, you know, the deep web. No one seems to have more information, and if they do it's hard to tell if it's legitimate, good info, or them just adding to the story or trying to make it sound like something it's not. It goes without saying that something like this, we really can hope is as fake as it gets, but in cases like this it's just so hard to tell. I came across a post that someone said they saw the video as early as 2011 on the deep web, when it didn't become commonly talked about online until 2019. Hell, even Scare Theater talked about this video in his strange YouTube video series episode 7 and now that video is edited and removes the segment where he spoke about it. Though re-uploads do exist on YouTube, the fact that he deleted it is just way too weird to me. Some Ordinary Gamers has also talked about it, and it appears as if discussion for this video has kind of dropped off, and maybe that's for the best. You can't find the original video on YouTube anymore, at least not that I've noticed, but if you dig a bit, on other websites, you can find the original 2 minute 40 second clip that was going around YouTube. Although the video doesn't actually show anything, the audio itself is disturbing enough and seems to automatically get removed from YouTube so looking for it is up to you. Feel Good Today Feel Good Today is a video created by the YouTube channel Jordan Go to Sleep and was uploaded in September of 2017. This video features a Tyrannosaurus Rex doll who is also a therapist performing a therapy session on the audience, only for him to come across a creature who he then offers his therapy services to. In the end, the dinosaur then expresses his desire to have a big clinic in a big city so that he can fix his patients so that they could, in turn, fix him. And that's the video. This is one of those instances that I just have nothing to say. It simply is what it is. On to the next. Web Driver Torso WebDriver Torso is a YouTube channel created by YouTube specifically for performance testing and other behind the scenes tasks, though in 2014 it was discovered and many questioned the purpose behind the channel and its thousands of videos of nothing but beeps and red and blue shapes. The channel was created in March of 2013 and to date has uploaded over 600,000 videos. The channel isn't as creepy as it used to be, but the theories for this channel used to run rampant, with users believing it to be some kind of number station sending secret messages to spies or other Illuminati-esque stuff, but nope, it's entirely YouTube controlled. Memory Hole Memory Hole is a YouTube channel created in February of 2014 and released its first video in July of 2014. The channel's last upload was in July of 2021 and as far as I know has been dormant since. 
The videos all appear to be shot on a home-grade VHS camcorder and are all quite strange in nature, which leaves me with very little to actually talk about. All of the videos do an amazing job capturing an old aesthetic that actually feels old. Oftentimes you can still tell videos are newer than they actually are when they attempt to use a filter like this, but here it seems very genuine, and I think that partly has to do with the fact that the locations they film at, or whatever house they're using, just has that early 90s, late 80s look to them, and it pulls it all together very nicely. Outside that though, I don't really have much to say. Edirem Pretty Woman This is a video featuring YouTuber Edirem, real name Edward Muscare, lip-singing the 1964 Roy Orbison hit, Oh Pretty Woman. Now, the video itself is creepy as it features an unkempt old man who seems just a bit off, not to mention the lyrical content, but there's so much more to Edward Muscare as a person, and that leads back to what makes this video so creepy, so let's get into that. Ed was born in 1932 and would have a pretty standard life, serve in the military, have different jobs, and even work as a TV talk show host in the 70s. In 1986, Ed would be charged with sexual battery against a 14-year-old boy, leading him to have to register as a sex offender for life. In September of 2006, Ed would create his YouTube channel and post his first video, and his final video would be uploaded in January of 2017. In the middle of his YouTube career, Ed had moved from Florida to South Carolina without alerting local police of his status as a past offender, leading to an arrest in 2009. Ed would then pass on duties of uploading and maintaining his YouTube channel to a friend to bypass the state laws that he cannot own a computer as a registered sex offender, believing this would allow him to continue his YouTube channel. However, this was still seen as a breach of probation, and Ed was then sentenced to prison in 2010. The YouTube channel was maintained by his partner Marion during this time. In 2011, Ed was diagnosed with lung cancer while still in prison, and in January of 2012, Ed would pass away. Ed is a polarizing character for many, some seeing him as creepy and others seeing him as tragic, but coming across a video like his Pretty Woman one I'm sure would put you in the former category, but if you came across one of his videos where he's simply brushing his dogs, maybe you'd be in the latter category. Either way, he definitely has a crazed old man persona, and I personally think he played it up a bit for the sake of the channel. Girl Goes Psycho During Makeup Tutorial So, this video was originally uploaded by the YouTube channel The15 Experience, claiming it was sent to them anonymously. The video features a girl applying makeup before stopping and staring blankly at the screen, then violently slamming her head into the desk and bleeding all over. I remember seeing this when it first came out and thinking it was an advertisement for a sequel to that Unfriended movie or something. The video has since been deleted by The15 Experience, who also hasn't uploaded a new video since 2017, so I'm not entirely sure what the purpose of the makeup tutorial was. But anyway, it appears as though all original uploads of this video are removed from YouTube, for terms of service reasons, and no one has really done a deep dive into the video to find out who the woman is or who made it, which is strange. It seems like nowadays everyone finds every little detail about every video, but not this one, so I don't really have much to say about it in regards to those who created it because I can't find anything. Facelift once again we've got another Adult Swim video, this one created by Steve Smith and Jerry Paper who have worked together on other strange projects such as Becoming Yourself. Facelift is an interesting video about a CGI face morphing and contorting about. It definitely follows the usual bizarre, surreal nature of other Adult Swim shorts, but some of the motion is so fluid and satisfying to watch in a strange way. I wouldn't expect anything less from Adult Swim. The Maker The Maker is a stop-motion animated video on the YouTube channel Zealous Creative, uploaded in August of 2012 and created by Christopher Keselos. The short features a character with rabbit-like ears making a figure just like itself, 
bringing it to life with music, then fading away, only for the new figure to stand exactly as the initial character did at the beginning of the video, presumably meaning to loop yet again, and to do so infinitely. The creator Christopher Keselos has written a novel based off this short, and it has won multiple awards from film festivals, so yeah, it's pretty awesome. The Blue Channel the Blue Channel is a video on the channel Gooseworks, and uploaded in October of 2018. The video features nothing but a blue square with the word blue at the bottom of the screen as a little song plays. At the end, the video glitches out a bit and what appears to be a strange humanoid figure appears for a moment before the video ends. It appears as though this is the beginning of a series of sorts as two more videos on the Gooseworks YouTube channel appear to follow a similar formula one called Deep Blue and the other called Blue Channel Thalassin. The second of these videos once again features the strange humanoid creature seen at the end of the first video, but this time it's on screen for much longer. The second is a sort of infomercial programming commercial, and as it goes on, slowly starts to show to be something a bit more sinister. I'm not sure if there's more to this project or not coming in the future, as the last video was uploaded in February of 2021, but I like the idea of it and where it's going as a creepy AR series. Flying Russian Girl in Woods Originally uploaded in March of 2009 on a YouTube channel named that I can't really pronounce, Jevgenji2000, the video shows a person filming their dog as they walk around outside, only to come across a strange sight. The dog runs off, and as the owner follows, they come across an adult and what appears to be a child hovering in the air above them. The dog barks, alerting the two, and the child quickly returns to the ground and the two run off, and that's where the video ends. The channel that uploaded this video has no other videos, and made the account one month before uploading this video. Whether this video is real or not, I think it looks great regardless. A video like this that's so simple, Who's to really say for sure? Though YouTuber Captain Disillusion does a pretty good video showing how it could be faked, the fact that no one has come out to claim the video as their own is what I really love, and so long as we don't know, the mystery will always be just a little bit alive. Illusion of Bias Illusion of Bias is a short film uploaded in June of 2009 on the YouTube channel Mind C Base and was directed and produced by Alexander Bizarsky and Sparks Rojas. The film tells the story of a girl who, after undergoing a surgery, can no longer perceive her own face, leading to her becoming very insecure and depressed. She eventually has a nightmare in which she can once again see her face, and what she sees disgusts and frightens her to the point of even causing herself to be sick. After waking from this dream, she realizes that she still cannot see her own face, and is relieved by this, though every night after she would awake in a puddle of her own vomit. This is a great short film, and it's five minutes of length it gets across a creepy tone, a gripping premise, and a strong message about how people view themselves, so check it out. Terrible Mall Commercial Oh man, why is this on here? Okay, I love this commercial, and the song. This… this is a masterpiece and I adore it. Again, maybe it's because it's part of the important videos playlist, but honestly I could watch this video all day. I really don't even know what to say, but I'll give the history because I personally was quite interested so I did the research. So the video was produced by Chris Fleck, who has apparently done other commercials before. He first made his YouTube channel in September of 2006 and would release his first video, which was also his first commercial called Cecil Myers Rap, which was a commercial for Cecil Myers Mitsubishi of St. Joseph, Missouri, and is quite an entertaining song in its own right. In August of 2014, Chris would upload the East Hills Mall commercial with the quote, the worst commercial I've ever seen in the title, which leads me to believe this wasn't the first time it was posted online. I can't find any mention of the commercial before 2014 however, so this leads me to believe that everything kind of happened at once. Someone saw it, and uploaded it, it got popular fast, Chris Fleck noticed as well, and put it on his YouTube channel. So it all happened in such a short amount of time. Anyway, no idea what this is doing on the iceberg, but it was fun to talk about. 
Chip Chan. Chip Chan is a very interesting case, and yet another one that didn't actually start on YouTube at all. Chip Chan first caught the attention of the internet in 2008 after being discovered on an unsecured webcam thread on 4chan. Her streams would generally just show her sleeping or doing mundane things in her apartment. Chip Chan, who lives in South Korea, claims that she has been the victim of a stalker for nearly 20 years. Chip Chan doesn't work, rarely leaves her apartment, and has been able to live comfortably by using the inheritance money left behind by her father. This money is apparently quite a large sum, and a corrupt police officer who is also the one she mentioned earlier who's stalking her is doing so to get the money. Chip Chan also claims that the police officer, who she calls P, implanted a Vera chip on her that tracks her every move and somehow can even control when she sleeps. Chip Chan, in recent years, has switched over to YouTube, despite my first comment that she didn't start here, which is true, and still uploads regularly to this day and has hundreds of videos from her live streams. The channel is called Control Weapon Mind, for those curious, and YouTubers Rainbot and Some Ordinary Gamers have both done videos discussing her in more detail. Candle Cove Screaming Episode This video is based off the infamous Candle Cove creepypasta in which, through a forum post, users talked about their experiences as children watching a children's television program called Candle Cove. It's one of the better creepypasta out there, and one I definitely recommend checking out. But anyway, in 2009, YouTube user JoeJacob666 uploaded a video called Candle Cove Screaming Episode, which is a video clocking in at just over a minute, and shows puppets and other characters dancing about as screaming and other loud sounds are played over it. The original video has since been deleted, but you can find a re-upload of it by MrAVGNFan12. Candle Cove is a whole rabbit hole to go down, and Scare Theater does a great video on it, so check it out if you've never heard of it before. It's pretty good. Crooked Rot Another video from David Firth, this one was uploaded in July of 2008, and is a stop-motion short film that, well, doesn't really seem to have any sort of narrative or anything, just a bunch of strange visuals featuring mannequin heads. I personally find the lighting for this video to be fantastic and a key highlight of the short, and it goes without saying that, yes, the visuals are fantastic thanks to David Firth's artistic brilliance. SCP-1981 If you don't know, SCP is a fictional government agency responsible for keeping tabs on certain extreme paranormal places, objects, beings, and more. SCP stands for Secure, Contain, Protect, and there are literally thousands of objects in the SCP catalog. This entry is specifically for 1981, and I'm not sure why this one of all SCPs is on the iceberg, as there are other YouTube videos for SCPs, but anyway, the SCP itself is a 22 minute long beta tape of a speech given by President Ronald Reagan about cannibalism, torture, mutilation, and more. The tape has also predicted the future in some cases, including predicting the September 11th attacks and the 2008 Russian presidential election. During the speech, it's also said that Ronald Reagan's skin appears to be cut and bleeding, and the appearance of these cuts is unique to each viewing, sometimes not even showing up at all. Now, there are many YouTube videos discussing the SCP, though given that this SCP is specifically about footage, I thought maybe you'd be able to find a reproduction of the tape, or someone attempting to make their own version of what it's supposed to look like, and there are a few, but there's no one definitive one that I could find that would be considered the one. Either way, SCP is a fun hole to fall into, so if you've never heard of it before, check it out, there's something in SCP for everyone. Creepy Horses, Two Horses, Doug Garth Williams Alright, now this is a strange video. It features a man going to check a stable for horses, only for him to see two women standing there with their backs to him inside the stable. They turn around to reveal that both of their faces are half-horse, half-human hybrid faces, and they start making strange human-horse sounds. Yeah. The man then runs off, as you would in such a situation, and the video ends, showing the logo for Two Horses, which is apparently a tattoo and hair boutique in Montreal, Canada. 
The video was created and directed by Doug Garth Williams, who, if you remember, also did that Little Baby's ice cream commercial from earlier on the iceberg, so knowing that, it certainly matches his style. The video is the only video posted by YouTube user Jesse Preston. The account was made in April of 2013, and the video was uploaded in August of the same year. Not really much more to say about it than that though, so on to the next. Half-Life 2 Radio Song This is going to be a short one, because it's not really a YouTube video, it's simply a song from Half-Life 2 that's, yeah, pretty creepy, but there's no YouTube video to go with it or anything, it's just simply the audio from the game, so nothing really to say about it. The track is quite strange, though. From my research, I came across a Steam post where user YesGilch claims that it's a combination of two stock audio clips, one called Distorted Trumpet, and the other being called Is That The Door, but where these stock sounds come from is a bit up in the air. From what I can tell, they come from an artist who goes by 0G, but who this person is, is unknown. They've had samples used in Max Payne, Silent Hill, Devil May Cry, and more. Zero G may not even actually be a single individual, as they have a website called zerog.co.uk for a company called Zero G Sample Libraries. So whether or not it's a single person, who knows? This whole thing is a complete mystery, and no one seems to have any solid answer on the matter, but in turn, that just makes the Half-Life 2 radio song that much more creepy. Suicidemouse.avi SuicideMouse.avi is a golden age creepypasta that was, from my research, first created in 2009 as well as the accompanying video that goes along with it. As the story goes, an executive at Disney came across a film reel when compiling and digitizing the original Mickey Mouse shorts from the 1920s and 30s for preservation. At a first glance, this film reel appeared to be nothing more than Mickey Mouse walking down a road as the buildings behind him repeated in a loop a popular cost-saving animation trick back in the early days of animation to save on cost of constantly drawing new backgrounds. The film was digitized anyway for the sake of preservation. When it was noticed that the film was 9 minutes and 4 seconds long, a strange length for a film that appeared to be nothing more than Mickey walking on a loop. After further analysis, it was found that after Mickey's walking loop had gone on for just over 2 minutes, the tape went black for 4 minutes, only for the walking cycle to start back up again, but now with a strange and discomforting audio track being played over it. At this point onward, the film slowly decays as Mickey starts to decompose with his eyes falling out and the audio getting even more disturbing. Lastly, before the film ends, the words, The Sights of Hell Bring Its Viewers Back In, appear on the screen in Russian. Now, according to the Creepypasta Files wiki, it claims the origin of this YouTube video comes from a channel called NEC1 and was uploaded on November 25th, 2009, in which the Creepypasta was also included with it. In my research, this is indeed the oldest upload of SuicideMouse.avi that I can personally find, however it's titled Suicide Mouse Unseen Freaky Footage. Either way, for 2009, this was a landmark for Creepypasta and what they could be on the internet. Zombie Attack in Russia From the research I've done, the history of this video is a bit of a mystery, though I'm sure many of you have seen it based off the comments I've read in the many re-uploads of this video. Many people back in the day thought this was real, and I mean, despite the whole zombie thing, I can see why, it does look quite convincing. The earliest upload I can find of this video is by YouTube user Rabid.Child and was uploaded in March of 2007. I've come across claims that it's viral marketing for the Stalker video game series that came out in March of 2007, the same month and year of the earliest upload of this video that I can find, so that's definitely possible though I'm unable to find definitive proof. Genocide School 
Apparently recorded sometime in fall of 2010, the video entitled Genocide School was uploaded by multiple news sources after it was released by police following the mass shooting carried out by Jared Lee Lochner in January 8th, 2011, in which he attempted to assassinate American politician Gabby Giffords before turning the gun on the crowd, taking the lives of six people and injuring 13, before being subdued and taken in by police. The video was released seven days after the incident and shows Jared's warped perception on the school, the teachers, the government, and more. If anything, it's an interesting look into someone's mind deteriorating to the point of becoming unhinged, kind of like the Elliot Roger videos. Kinder Surprise Commercial this disturbing commercial comes from England around 1983 if my research is correct, and features a horrific depiction of Humpty Dumpty. This is one of the many childhood traumas that creeped their way into children's nightmares all across the UK and reportedly was taken off the air after complaints from parents that it was scaring children. Whether or not this was true, however, is unknown as many people on Reddit claim that the commercial stuck around for quite a while, so it's really hard to say for sure. Despite not having much else to say about this one, it's certainly one of the few fictional self-made things so far on this iceberg to legitimately creep me out. At least a little bit. Golden Rebel 25 Livestream Golden Rebel 25 was a YouTube channel created in September of 2013. This YouTuber would create alternate timeline videos about countries on Earth, though from my research I can't find any of their original videos, even in a re-uploaded form. Golden Rebel 25 would amass a sizable following before abruptly deleting all of the videos in his History of Europe series on his channel and announcing in May of 2015 that he would no longer be creating videos and would leave his channel in the hands of another YouTuber in the community known as the One-Legged Fascist. It would later be found that Golden Rebel 25 had passed away from leukemia at some point in 2015 and had made the announcement shortly before his death. He would be dearly missed in the community until something strange occurred near the end of 2018, over three years after Golden Rebel 25 had reportedly died. On December 23rd, 2018, the channel started a live stream in which we see someone filming in the middle of the night on a dark street. The person then starts running for an unknown reason and whispering under his breath saying things such as he's coming and I'm still alive, among other ominous messages. It was eventually discovered by members of the mapping community that YouTuber the one-legged fascist, the one who Golden Rebel 25 gave his channel over to, was in fact the one-legged fascist all along, Golden Rebel 25 simply being an alternate account and the person behind it who died of leukemia in 2015, had never existed at all. This is widely considered to be true, though there are some who believe that this is simply too convenient and that there's more to this, though developments in the matter since the one-legged fascist's confession have been minimal. Ayuoki Dancing Ayuoki is the name of an incredibly creepy mannequin that someone created to look like Michael Jackson, jokingly referred to as My Ghoul Jackson, and, well, just look at it. The original video showing this doll is, if my research is correct, from July of 2009 and was uploaded by YouTube user Thomas Rangenstorff, who appears to be the creator of the mannequin as well, or more accurately animatronic, as the figure seems to be able to move slightly. Also, if you didn't notice, Ayuoki is a play on the lyric Are You Okay from Michael Jackson's song Smooth Criminal, during the chorus in which Michael Jackson says, Annie, are you okay? The Ayuoki dance video, however, is from a different channel. It's been re-uploaded multiple times over the years with different music, but the earliest upload I can find comes from YouTube user Gabrazuki, and was uploaded in April of 2019 and features a figure wearing what looks to be a mask and wig and a long sweater with their feet going through the armholes and dancing about very erratically, might I add. Seriously, the movements are very fast, it's honestly quite impressive. However, this video is a compilation featuring multiple songs, so I'm unsure if there are any earlier uploads, but all of my research has led me to this being the first upload of Ayuoki Dancing. 
The Ayuoki is seemingly most well known in Latin America as most of the memes and videos around it are in Spanish and even has a creepypasta surrounding it where basically it's said that Ayuoki will appear to children if they stay awake until 3am. Which is fitting since it seems the Ayuoki stuff got really popular around the same time as the 3am challenge and all that. Tyler's Last Words Tyler's Last Words was a hoax video uploaded on September 9th, 2011 on the YouTube channel Delarge Tyler. The video features a man, presumably Tyler Delarge, playing a song on guitar, then putting a gun to his head before the video abruptly ends. Reportedly, the video was uploaded by Tyler's brother, after a note left behind by Tyler requested that it be uploaded, as the song was written for Tyler's wife Victoria, who had died not too long before. It wouldn't be until 2018 when the video started attracting attention from YouTube users as it started appearing in many's recommendation section as a result of the strange quirks of the YouTube algorithm. This would catch the attention of many horror YouTubers, including Scare Theater who would make three videos on the subject, with the final video debunking Tyler's last words as a hoax, an art project of sorts by musician Austin Cross, who's also part of a band called My Fair Fiend. He has a couple other channels about music and guitar, but it seems the original Delarge Tyler channel has been deleted. From what I can tell, however, the Tyler's Last Words video was the only thing uploaded to that channel, and re-uploads of it are abundant. You have 30 days to pay me 5 million dollars. The original video for this point, from my research, was uploaded in November of 2011 to LiveLeak and also had a website along with it that's earliest Wayback Machine snapshot dates it to November of 2011 as well. From my understanding, the video portrays someone creating a remote control car with a camera on it, then flying to Egypt and driving that remote control car down a narrow shaft inside one of the pyramids. The video ends at a point when the car enters an opening and you can almost see what appears to be possibly a person or maybe just a statue with a small light source next to it. At the end of the video, the creator states that if they're not paid the $5 million, they'll reveal what they found inside the shaft. Alongside that was a link to the website I had mentioned previously called NowIKnow.com. Some people have claimed that this is viral marketing for something, but honestly, what's the point of viral marketing if it's not clear what's being marketed? I mean, I suppose if it's initially to get people talking, then it's revealed to be marketing, then everyone will know, but from what I can tell, there was never any payoff to this video. Who knows, maybe the person who made it did get paid the five million dollars. They did say that if they were paid, further information in regards to this clip would be released, and well, it wasn't, so I believe that only means one thing. But who knows. Ben's Playhouse Ben's Playhouse was a channel created in November of 2012 and would post short, creepy videos, though the date in which these uploads started seems to have been lost to time, at least to the extent of my research. The first five videos all seem to be cryptic and don't give much information in regards to the location they're being filmed at, however the sixth video, called newfriend.mov, appears to show someone walking around what appears to be a dilapidated building using their phone as a flashlight, seemingly oblivious to the person behind them recording their exploration. The last three videos appear to be the most mysterious, at least to me. Update.mov shows presumably Ben is now on an airplane, Sandman.mov shows once again presumably Ben inside someone's home standing in their hallway, and finally LadyInRed.mov, the most interesting, shows presumably Ben following someone wearing all red into a grocery store before this video abruptly ends. In the comment section, I actually learned that this video has been edited and there was originally a much longer version and luckily I was able to track down the original. Why the Ben's Playhouse Archives channel has an edited cut down version of this final video is a mystery, but anyway, Ben proceeds to follow a different lady wearing red out of the store and enters the back of her vehicle without her knowing as she then gets into the driver's seat. Now. Here's where things get interesting. 
Around the time Vine was at its peak, a Vine creator named Colin Henson would post some pretty standard Vines, nothing too crazy, until his third or fourth upload when he goes on a stroll around his neighborhood and come across what he calls an old abandoned mental facility. He keeps things fairly straightforward, however a few things are immediately noticeable if you've seen any of Ben's Playhouse videos, specifically, Colin comes across the cow mask used in Cowboy.Mauve, the half-masked figure, the jester hat figure, among other obvious connections. Many have also stated that if it is Ben who made Update.Mav, Ben is now wearing the same outfit that Colin wore in his original video when he went out exploring, that being the red jacket and jeans. With all of this mystery building up, it would suddenly come to a halt when the Ben's Playhouse channel would private all of their videos before deleting it altogether in November of 2015 with no real answers or conclusion to any of these strange videos. A mystery to this day. No Through Road No Through Road is one of those videos I remember watching back in high school and thinking it was real, which looking back now is kind of ridiculous. I remember watching it late at night with some friends and all of us thinking we just saw the craziest, scariest thing ever. Anyway, the video was posted by the user Indrancol3, whose channel was created in November of 2007 with No Through Road being uploaded in January of 2009. This video features a group of friends driving around and getting lost in a rural area. As the group drives, they keep coming across the same road sign despite going down what appears to be a straight road. As this continues to happen, the group slowly begins to panic. After the group finally seems to be out of the loop and relief starts to set in, they find themselves suddenly thrown back into it before being attacked by a man wearing a mask. It's quite a well done video, especially for how old it is and what else was being released on YouTube at the time. Really, if it wasn't for the part during the ending where the masked man uses the camera to attack one of the kids with the lens breaking and getting blood on it, this would be a much more convincing YouTube video, but considering I used to make dumb videos with friends back in the day, we probably would have done a similar effect, so I give it a pass. The atmosphere is fantastic, and the banter throughout the video makes it feel very authentic. All of their dialogue is just very natural, and it just sounds like friends having a conversation, so check this one out. I definitely recommend it. Possibly in Michigan Possibly in Michigan is possibly my favorite entry on this iceberg. I remember first being shown this video around 2016 or so and falling in love with it. The music, the dialogue, the cinematography, everything about it is just perfect. Possibly in Michigan was made back in 1983 by Cecilia Condit, an independent director and film professor at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. The music was performed by Karen Skladany, who also stars in the short film. The film is about two women going to a shopping mall, only to be pursued by a man named Arthur who is presumably a previous love interest of Sharon, the character played by Karen Skladany. This film, and particularly the music, gained viral popularity around 2019 thanks to TikTok, because of course it was TikTok. Regardless, I do love that it at least exposed Cecilia Condit's work to more people, as I feel that she's very much ahead of her time, and her other works deserve to be seen as well, so check out her YouTube channel or even her website as she has many more of her films uploaded to both. Look at the Clown This video, uploaded to YouTube in March of 2015 by YouTube user Ronald Yoder Senior Entertainment, is a self-described experimental therapy program for the uploader's son, who has a fear of clowns, with this video created to help him get over the phobia. The video shows various images of clowns as typical carnival-style music plays, and a voice says, look at the clown every time a new image is shown. As the video goes on, creepier and creepier pictures of clowns are shown on screen, some for only a fraction of a second. Unfortunately, the original channel that uploaded this video is no longer active, and this video only exists through re-uploads, so the original story about the father making the video to help his son get over the fear of clowns is kind of up in the air and unknown if it's true, but the video is still creepy. To the Ark 
To the Ark is a YouTube channel created in July of 2009 and would upload regularly until the final video was uploaded in February of 2014. The channel is very much related to the Marble Hornet series, with uploads being made in response to Marble Hornet's uploads, with the occasional incidents in which To The Ark reportedly hacked the Marble Hornet's YouTube account and uploaded two videos to their channel, those being Entry number sign number sign number sign number sign and Entry 37, with two Ts. The Ark that is referenced in the channel name refers to a mysterious something in the Slenderman ARG universe. I refer to it as something because no one quite knows if it's a person, location, object, group, or what. A large majority of the 38 videos on the To The Ark channel are incredibly cryptic and often contain vague or ominous messages. Many, including Jay of Marble Hornets, believes that To The Ark's videos are created and uploaded by various people as opposed to a single entity. Throughout the series, To The Ark appears to be antagonistic towards Alex and Jay, but to this day, even with Marble Hornets being over, the identity of who or what To The Ark was remains a mystery, and there still may be mysteries within the videos that have yet to be solved. Again, Nightmind does an excellent video in which he covers the entire Marble Hornet saga, including all of the Connected series, so give that a watch if you want a comprehensive telling of everything Marble Hornets. Marina and the Diamonds, the Burger Queen Tour Marina Diamandis, stage name stylized as Marina in all caps and previously known as Marina and the Diamonds, is a Welsh singer-songwriter who has released five albums starting in 2010 and has been nominated and won many awards over her musical career. Now, the Burger Queen tour specifically was a tour Marina did during 2011, and honestly there isn't anything strange about it, however there is a video posted on Marina's official YouTube channel called Marina and the Diamonds The Burger Queen Tour Preview, and this video is kinda strange. Strange enough that it's on a few creepy video playlists anyway. It's an 18 second long video and is simply a black and white picture of a TV with what do you want on the screen, and a text-to-speech voice saying, I turned on a TV, it came on twice. If you don't stimulate your brain, you will feel like you have died. I turned on the TV and it came on twice. If your life is too mundane, it is going to pass you by. Yeah, that's basically it. There isn't really much more to this. There are a few videos called Burger Queen Tour Visuals that are interesting, but not as strange as this video. So I'm going to guess this tour preview is what the iceberg is referring to. If you don't know Marina Diamandis and like pop music, check her out. Though she has millions of subs and views, so she's certainly not obscure by any means. She has a song though called Venus Flytrap and it's really catchy, so yeah, check her out. Deeper Deeper is one of the more obscure ARG channels on YouTube. Created in May of 2016, the channel would continue posting fairly regularly until June of 2019, when the final video would be uploaded, totaling in 41 videos. The interesting thing about Deeper is that a large majority of the clues and ciphers left within their videos reveal names of women who either went missing or were found in the state of Colorado. As this is one of the more lesser explored ARGs, that means there's a lot more mystery here yet to be solved. One such mystery is whether or not the uploader has anything to do with these missing women, or if they're just using them as part of their creepy ARG game, which honestly is a bit morally questionable. Some believe that the person behind the Deeper channel has actually passed away, and whether or not that's true is entirely unknown, simply because we never saw anyone behind the camera, or have any way to know who they even are. Anyone can come along and say they're deeper, but without much proof, it most likely wouldn't be widely believed. Some believe that the channel hasn't uploaded because there's a certain clue that hasn't been found yet, which is very possible, though I do wonder how long a creator is willing to wait for people to solve a mystery, since it's been over three years you would think they'd throw a hint or something eventually. Until we see any more uploads, I think it's safe to say this ARG is currently dead. YouTuber Some Ordinary Gamers delves deeper into the channel itself, so if you want a deeper look into the deeper channel, go check that out. Who's Hungry? 
This animated short film from the YouTube channel Stork Eater was uploaded to YouTube in April of 2009. The short features two children who, after visiting an ice cream truck, are abducted by the driver and kept prisoner. We then see that the ice cream man takes another child that they kidnapped and blends them up and proceeds to eat them. The little girl escapes and attempts to subdue the kidnapper and free her brother, only for the kidnapper to catch them and give chase, resulting in a gory end for the ice cream man. The creator of this short, David Ox, says that they based the story off the famous Brothers Grimm fairy tale, Hansel and Gretel, which certainly shows. Shea St. John Shea St. John is a character created by Eric Fournier in 1999. Shea is a model who was disfigured in a train accident and rebuilt her body from mannequin parts and appeared in 56 videos according to Wikipedia. Shea's YouTube channel Elastic Spastic Plastic Fantastic was created in August of 2006 and featured all 56 videos, however this channel was terminated in 2017 for unknown reasons. The videos all have a surreal, lo-fi quality to them and feature Shea doing various things. The most popular video of Shay's is Hand Thing and was uploaded in October of 2015 and is really just something you've got to see for yourself. Explanations will not do for such a video. Eric Fournier would pass away in February of 2010 at the age of 42, leaving behind his legacy of Shay, as well as many other art projects. A DVD was released in 2006 called Shay St. John The Triggers Compilation which is a collection of clips of Shay, and I actually own this DVD, and it's exactly what you'd expect. Despite Shay's original channel being terminated, all 56 of her original videos can be viewed on the channel Shay St. John Archives, allowing Shay to live on for as long as the internet remains. Pickle Surprise Pickle Surprise is a video uploaded to YouTube in June of 2007, created by Tom Rubnitz, and was originally created in 1989, though I'm unsure exactly of its release origin. It appears that Tom Rubnitz was a video artist throughout the 1980s and worked with the B-52s, among other artists. He has another video similar to Pickle Surprise called Strawberry Shortcut, and I definitely recommend checking that out if you're liking the vibe you're picking up from Pickle Surprise. Tom Rubnitz was heavily involved in the drag scene and LGBT community throughout his career, and worked through art to raise awareness for HIV and AIDS, as this era in the 80s and 90s were very much the peak of the epidemic. Sadly, Tom Rubnitz would pass away from an AIDS-related illness in August of 1992, at the age of 36. Carrie Johnson Carrie Johnson is a YouTuber who created their account in May of 2006 and specializes in making both latex and silicon masks that are used in part of their cross-dressing. She started making masks in 1996 and would create her YouTube channel in order to show off the masks she's made, as well as make skits showing them off in various situations. Her website that's advertised in all of her videos, maskgone.com, is where she sells these masks to the public, so if you're so inclined, you can go here and purchase one yourself. Carrie Johnson still uploads fairly regularly to this day and has quite a dedicated following. Koyang Dayak This was a rather creepy video that I remember making its rounds around 2011 or 2012. The oldest upload is by YouTuber Chibonk182 and was uploaded in February of 2011, though I'm unsure if this is the source of the video, as it may have an earlier origin than this, though even using Google archive searches, I was unable to find any mention of it before this date. With that, research behind the video delivered very little in regards to where it came from or what exactly it's all about, but from my understanding, what we're looking at is said to be a creature in Southeast Asian culture referred to as a Krashu, which goes by various other names depending on the culture. Now, pardon my pronunciations here, but it's known as an Op in Cambodia, a Kasu in Laos, and a Koyang in Indonesia, which is the name given to it in this video. Though these creatures are known for having the head of a human woman and usually have their internal organs hanging out from their neck, this creature almost has a dog-like body or something. Unfortunately, the low quality makes it hard to tell for sure, and information behind the creation of this video seems non-existent. 
01A51CD0. 01A51CD0 is a YouTube channel created in October of 2011, but wouldn't start uploading until November of 2011. The videos all have various hidden messages in them and are usually distorted, creepy imagery with broken audio to boot, so many believe it to be yet another ARG. Admittedly, this seems to be one of the more underdeveloped ARGs. Not that that's a bad thing, it just hasn't taken off and isn't as flushed out or researched as other similar offerings. It was eventually discovered that the creator of this channel is YouTuber Blametruth, who has quite a following and a large channel to begin with, so maybe he just got too busy running that channel to keep up with this one. The most that's known about the ARG is that it's speculated that it's about someone being harassed by a cult through these videos. Whether or not the person being harassed is receiving these videos from the cult directly isn't really set in stone, however given the titles and imagery, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the direction it was all headed in. It's a very compelling story for an ARG, so maybe one day it'll get picked back up again. Interview with a Cannibal Interview with a Cannibal is a 2012 mini-documentary made by Vice about Issei Sagawa, a Japanese man who, in 1981, murdered and cannibalized fellow college classmate Rene Hartvelt. This case is infamous as not only a notable case of modern cannibalism, but also because, to this day, Issei Sagawa lives in Tokyo as a free man. As Issei Sagawa committed his crime in France, he was arrested and given a psychological evaluation where he was found to be criminally insane and unfit for trial. Issei, while being held in a mental institution in France, was visited by author Inuhiko Yamota, who interviewed and would tell of Issei's story in the autobiographical novel, In the Fog. With this came a fascination with Issei and almost celebrity-like status, leading French authorities to deport Issei back to Japan. Upon returning, Issei would be committed to yet another hospital for psychological evaluation, though here he was declared sane, with sexual perversion being labeled as his sole motivation for the murder of René Hartvelt. Since being found legally insane in France, the charges against Issei there were dropped, and with that, court documents were not released to Japanese authorities, who now could not legally detain Issei in Japan. And with that, Issei Sagawa has lived a free man from when he left the Japanese hospital in 1986 to this day. My Sister my Sister was a video that was uploaded to the YouTube channel Raider Dog in May of 2011. The video would slowly start to spread around the internet as people found this video and discussed how unnatural the person in the video looked, how deeply it dipped into the uncanny valley, you know, that sort of thing. From a distance, all seems fine, but as the person approaches the camera, you can start to tell that something simply doesn't look right, and an unsettling feeling would no doubt start to set in most people. The person in the video then reveals that what they're wearing is some sort of mask, a mask that, again, while rather lifelike, still looks off in some way. The person then goes on to eat some food before revealing that they're wearing yet another mask. This video remained a mystery for quite some time until it was discovered that the video originates from a YouTube channel called ZJCFHGF, which seems like a fake username but actually has a rather sizable following and specializes in latex masks, much like Carrie Johnson, who we talked about a few points up. And this My Sister video was simply taken from this channel and recontextualized to be a creepy video. The original video was uploaded in May of 2009 and is titled Unmasking and Eating, and from the description, the channel creator says that the first mask is made of plastic, and the second one that the person is wearing while eating is made of foam latex. I think masks in general will simply always creep me out, and the more realistic they are, the more that level of creepiness increases. Lee Hardcastle Lee Hardcastle is a claymation animator who created his YouTube channel in June of 2006 and uploads fairly frequently, though as of making this video his last upload was 6 months ago. But I guess that's about as long as I go between videos, so 
Who am I to judge? Many of their shorts parody popular animated shows or pop culture topics from Rick and Morty to Among Us, but Lee Hardcastle also makes many original pieces too, ranging from comedic to creepy. There really isn't a mystery or anything here, just a collection of someone's art being displayed exactly as it's intended. However, we do have a point coming up that's a specific video on Lee Hardcastle's channel, so we'll be coming back to him shortly. Alan Tutorial Alan Tutorial is a YouTube channel and series created by Alan Resnick, who we discussed in a couple points a few layers up on the iceberg, and this series is what I consider to be his greatest work. The channel was created in June of 2011, which was also when the first video was uploaded, with the final video being uploaded in December of 2014. It depicts a man named Alan Tutorial performing various tutorials such as how to pick up a blue chair, how to leak on a piece of paper, among many other very useful tutorials. Alan eventually gets locked out of his home and wanders the street only to seemingly get abducted by someone. He is then held captive and forced to make tutorial videos until he finally attempts to escape. Whether Alan Tutorial makes it out or not, however, is a mystery as when we last see him, he's in a dark room surrounded by garbage. Explaining what Alan Tutorial is exactly is pretty difficult to put into words, but it's strange and hypnotizing in some way. I also recall some strange mysteries involving Alan Tutorial as I had watched the channel as videos were being made. Specifically, Alan uploaded a video called How to Change in February of 2013, and I distinctly remember there being a full audio for this video, including Alan of course explaining the tutorial. However, now? The video has no audio except for some music that starts exactly one minute into the video. I don't exactly remember what was said in the video, but regardless, the fact that it got removed was always very strange to me, and I don't know why it happened. Anyway, check out Alan Tutorial, it's a fantastic piece of creepy YouTube history. Meat Sleep Meat Sleep was a rather unique type of ARG channel that was created in March of 2014, and would upload regularly until a fateful incident would occur involving harassment against the Meat Sleep team, who then decided to release their final video, No More, in January of 2016 ending what could have potentially been one of the best ARGs in existence, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Meat Sleep's videos, much like other ARGs, feature various clues and mysteries in the titles of the videos as well as within the videos themselves, but the overarching story is what is still a mystery and discussed to this day. The most common theory is that it's the story of a killer and his victims that he keeps within this dirty basement. This series is deep, and I mean very deep, and it didn't even reach its ending, as previously mentioned, the team behind the channel were beginning to get harassed in the real world by people determined to find the identities of those involved. Ultimately, the Meat Sleep team would conduct a Q&A in which many questions that fans had would be answered before leaving Meat Sleep behind for good. This is all way more than I can get into in a short segment on this multi-hour long iceberg, but I implore you. If you're going to get into the history of any ARG, this would be a great choice, as their ideas behind where it was going to go was quite amazing. Apparently the team were quite literally rolling dice in order to determine in which way the story would progress, meaning it could have gone anywhere. The team consisted of 11 individuals all around the world working together on this project, and it's really a shame that it ended the way it did. Scare Theater did some great analysis videos for the channel, so check that out if you want a rundown. Elder Sign Subliminals Elder Sign Subliminals is a small channel created in July of 2017 and uploaded videos on and off periodically until March of 2018. The videos feature strange symbols with frequency pitches that are meant to bring about various effects. The idea of audio frequencies granting various effects on the human brain have been researched for decades and had a sort of minimal resurgence in the late 2000s when iDoser became popular online, especially the more extreme offerings such as Gates of Hell and Hand of God which had many people recording themselves on YouTube attempting this audio experience and talking about what they saw, but anyway, I'm getting off track. 
Now, there is no Elder Sign Subliminals Explained video out there, and research into the channel turns up very little, but the channel itself claims to not be an ARG and simply be trying to make the world a better place. Through what methods outside their frequency therapy videos is unknown, but after their last video, those behind the channel said they will either continue uploading through this channel or start a new one. And as there hasn't been any new activity from this channel since that upload in March of 2018, I think it's safe to say they moved on. But to where? Everyman Hybrid Everyman Hybrid is an interesting series that, while initially started as a fitness YouTube channel launched in March of 2010, would morph into becoming one of the longest running horror YouTube series about three friends who, while initially inserting Slenderman into their videos as a joke, slowly begin to realize that a much more legitimate threat is actually watching them. This series is long, like really long, and like most of the longer series I discuss on this iceberg, I don't have time to break down the entire plot, but the way the series started with them jokingly inserting Slenderman, and even being called out for it in the comments only for the series to flip that on its head, was pretty clever. And it's nice to see a series where the cast is entirely aware of creepypasta, memes, pop culture, and so on. It all just makes them feel much more like real people. As I previously said though, this series is long. Nightmind does a 7 part recap of the entire series that is over 9 hours long. But hey, you're here watching this video, so maybe you like that sort of thing. Haunted Doll Moves Head on Camera this video is an absolute classic, and while re-uploads call it Haunted Doll Moves Head on Camera, the original upload is simply called Scary Doll. The video was first uploaded in January of 2010 to the channel Import D14G10, and really is the only creepy video on the channel, amongst a bunch of gaming and music related stuff, with the exception being a couple clips from the show Ghost Hunters. What we get is a girl talking about getting this doll for her 15th birthday, but doesn't really like it that much, only for the doll's head to turn towards the girl. Both the girl behind the camera and the girl holding the doll scream, and that's it. No one really has any further information behind this video or where it came from, or even if it's fake. The effect is quite well done though, so who's to say for sure? Medieval Found Footage Medieval Found Footage is a video that I suppose was originally uploaded by Basty666 in August of 2020, but I swear I saw this video long ago, like, I'm talking sometime around 2012 or 2013, but from my research, it's saying that it was uploaded again in August of 2020, so maybe I'm just mistaken. Anyway, the video is made as if to appear that someone presumably traveled back in time and got all of this medieval era footage recorded on a camera, and towards the end of the video, we see some Nazi imagery from the 40s which I believe is meant to give off the idea that the Nazis discovered time travel, recorded this footage, and it was lost until just recently. Now, there has always been rumors of the Nazis conducting all sorts of occult rituals and research into the paranormal, and I wouldn't be surprised if time travel was something looked into, so it appears as if that's what this video is hinting at. Luckily, we have the Reddit user the Jukebox Hero posting a couple years back in a thread asking about the medieval found footage, and they state that many of the clips come from a 1963 Spanish film called The Castilian, and really, that alone debunks everything here, but still, the idea of medieval fan footage is quite intriguing. Robert Heltman Robert Heltman is a YouTuber who started their channel in July of 2015 and uploaded all 10 videos on the same day the channel was created. The videos all center around Daisy, a figure wrapped in a black trash bag and posed around Robert's house doing various things. Throughout the videos, various messages flash on the screen and other oddities occur, such as backwards audio. Each video actually has these flashing messages, and upon collecting them all throughout the various videos and overlapping them, you get a poem called The Gay Lady which was written in the 1700s about a woman going to a church, only to realize that she's already dead. 
As all the videos were released on the same day and no further developments were ever made, I don't consider this an ARG in the traditional sense. It certainly has puzzles to be solved and interesting mysteries behind it, but nothing that would lead to further content being released, at least not of 2022. There are many theories behind this channel and what everything means, in fact Inside of Mind has a fantastic theory about what the channel can be all about, as well as a few other YouTubers, so for theory analysis, check that out. Serif Simulation Videos before we get into Seraph simulation, let me just explain what a Seraphim is. Basically what we're talking about here are Bible accurate angels. In the Bible, in a few instances, beings that are described similarly to angels are called Seraphim, such as in Isaiah 6-1, in which they're described as having six wings as well as feet and faces, though description doesn't really go beyond that. And since this point is specifically about Seraphim, that's all we need to discuss, but trust me, other types of angels look much more crazy, but we'll get back to that in a sec. So this was all explained because alongside the craze of Bible accurate angels that started up around 2019, videos started popping up as well on YouTube. One called Seraphim Biblically Accurate and Simulation de Angel Seraphim, which were both uploaded to YouTube on September 10th, 2020, uploaded by Eos Acidos and Jax Audiovisual, respectively. Now, the video uploaded by Jax Audiovisual states in the description that they found a video that was only 30 seconds in length and that they went ahead and edited the video and uploaded it on their own channel. This, of course, hints to an earlier upload to the Seraphim Simulator videos, though unfortunately it appears to be lost at the moment, so for now, these two uploads remain as our oldest references to the Seraphim Simulation. Now, what is the Seraphim Simulation? It's a trippy visual experience with a quote, biblically accurate angel on screen, as creepy music plays. This song is actually called 13 Angels Standing Guard Round the Side of Your Bed by the group A Silver Mount Zion, and you may recognize the song from TikTok as the song has become fairly popular with creepy videos these days. My Dark Journal My Dark Journal is a series its channel was created in July of 2008, though uploads for the series wouldn't start until December of 2010. The series crosses over frequently with two other channels, those being The Bone Creek Story and The Oracle of Lies, and from my understanding is apparently part of the whole Slenderman YouTube universe, but has its own character, Victor, as the main antagonist, who refers to the viewers as the Chosen and is a servant of sorts to Slenderman. I honestly find this series incredibly vague, and there aren't really any synopsis videos explaining the series. I'm really bad at piecing these ARGs together without outside help, so I honestly don't have much to say about it. The last video was uploaded in April of 2021, with the exception of a YouTube short released shortly after. Possessed Girl Found in Subway This video, first uploaded to YouTube in June of 2011, on a channel simply called DDD, shows two men walking through a subway when they come across a bloodied woman stabbing herself and screaming maniacally. The men watch, not knowing how to react, before the woman gets up and chases them into an elevator, where the video abruptly ends. This video has no information behind it. There's no information on the uploader, on any of the people involved, nothing. Given the fact that they were shooting in a public subway, and the amount of blood that gets on the floor, not to mention the girl herself being covered in blood, if this is just a stunt, it's a pretty damn risky one. The woman is screaming maniacally and covered in blood. Shooting something like this in public without drawing attention would be very difficult if it's fake, but then again, even if it is real, it's not like anyone comes to help regardless, so who knows. My only real observation is that at one point, the woman says something that sounds very similar to something Reagan McNeil says in The Exorcist, but whatever. Even if it's just a work of fiction, it's done quite well. The Max Headroom Incident The Max Headroom Incident was a television signal hijacking that occurred on November 22, 1987 in Chicago, Illinois. 
Two incidents took place on this night that would go down in history as one of the most speculated and mysterious cases in all of television. At 9pm during WGN-TV's sports segment during the evening news, the signal cut out for 15 seconds as suddenly, a figure wearing a Max Headroom mask erratically bobbing about appeared on the screen. The only audio at the time of this incident was a loud buzzing sound. This went on for nearly 30 seconds before the signal was reclaimed by WGN-TV and broadcast resumed, with sports anchor Dan Roan commenting on the matter in regards to his confusion. Later that night, at around 11.20pm, PBS's local station, WTTW, was interrupted in the middle of an episode of Doctor Who. Only this time, the signal, once again featuring the person in a Max Headroom mask, also had audio. The person then proceeds to insult Chuck Swirsky, a WGN sportscaster, and make various comments about random pop culture topics, such as quoting Max Hedrum's Catch the Wave Coca-Cola slogan, humming a bit of the theme song to the 1959 animated series Clutch Cargo, and so on. It seems as if this broadcast wasn't made to spread any message like the infamous Captain Midnight hijacking as the person in the mask didn't seem to have any agenda, you know, outside calling Chuck Swirsky a quote, frickin' liberal, so the motives behind this broadcast hijacking is, to this day, unknown. Also unknown, of course, being the perpetrators behind the hijacking who, to this day, have never been identified, despite the FCC's best efforts, and countless YouTube videos discussing the hijacking and breaking it down. WPKEPKW This is reportedly a cursed video that spread around YouTube in 2014, though the original video appears to be lost. According to a video by IEEE Wire posted in August of 2014, the channel that they find the video on is FXGRYN, and trying to type in the link at the top of the page takes you to a page that says the video is no longer available, and that the video was uploaded only minutes before IEEE Wire searched for it. Upon searching for the channel FXGRYN, the WPKEPKW video does indeed come up, however it has an upload date of May 10th, 2016, and a length of nearly 2 minutes, whereas the video shown in IEEE Wire's video is 30 seconds long. This new 2 minute long version loops a few times, but at the end shows a date, that date being 13-10-2066. So, October 13th, 2066. Now, that's a really long time off, so I guess I'll just have to report back when that date comes around to let you all know if anything happens, so set your calendars and tune back in on that date and we'll figure it out. The Grifter The Grifter was an infamous internet urban legend that was started on 4chan's export in August of 2009. A poster uploaded a single image and text stating how much they regret viewing this video, and other anonymous posters would also share their regret of watching the video as well, referring to it only as The Grifter. Those who have never heard of it would ask in curiosity about this video that caused such distress in all who viewed it, only for those who had watched it to refuse sharing any information about it. This led to countless threads being made about people saying they found it, and that it destroyed their lives, that they can no longer sleep at night, and that the video constantly haunts them. This, in turn of course, would generate more interest, and so on. Screenshots associated with the Grifter were the only things ever posted in these threads, until one day in September of 2009, YouTube user JoeJacob666 would upload a video called The Grifter, where those screenshots seem to originate from. However, with the upload, the description reads, this is not the video you're looking for. Some believe that this isn't an urban legend, that the Grifter video does in fact exist, and the pictures and clips used in the Grifter video uploaded to YouTube were just a diversion to keep people from looking for the real thing. As a matter of fact, the popular images and video associated with the Grifter come from a 2000 Czech film called Little Otik, so to this day, the Grifter has mostly been forgotten, and really, it's best it stay that way. It shouldn't be viewed by anyone, because it doesn't exist, so don't try looking for it. Yao 
Yao is a YouTube channel that has since been renamed to Why and Tretton, which is, I assume, a play on the creator's name, Ryan Tricartan. The channel was created in July of 2006, along with the first video, with the last video being uploaded in January of 2008. The channel actually features a few projects of Ryan's, such as IB Area, A Family Finds Entertainment, and a few other one-off clips. IB Area is a surreal, abstract series about various characters living together. In my personal interpretation, it's very much like a parody of reality TV series like The Real World or Jersey Shore. I personally think the series is hilarious, but it certainly gives off an uncomfortable vibe with its distorted audio and visuals and oversaturated color palette. A Family Finds Entertainment is, at least to my knowledge, incomplete, as it appears that only parts 2, 4, and 5 are available for viewing. While I'm able to sort of give a description to IB Area, A Family Finds Entertainment is even more bizarre and difficult to make sense of, but as an art project, it's at least very entertaining. Beeblefox Beeblefox is a now defunct YouTube channel created in July of 2013, most known for a video called A Furry Rebirthing that has been re-uploaded numerous times on YouTube. In this video, Beeblefox cuts off the head of a child-sized doll and puts the head onto the body of a plush dog. It's a very strange video, but that doesn't even scratch the surface with Beeblefox. The channel would actually stop uploading in 2013, though the exact time of this is unknown. The channel would sit dormant for a few years before finally being found by those looking for bizarre and creepy videos hidden deep within YouTube. In many of Beeblefox's other videos, he would often talk about a girl named Orange Citrus, and his room seemed to be covered with countless pictures of this girl. Orange Citrus would actually be the one to reveal everything behind Beeblefox, even admitting that the weird stuff about the dolls on Beeblefox's channel was all actually meant to be an ARG. However, this didn't mean that Beeblefox was entirely innocent behind this character that he had created. Orange Citrus would make numerous videos discussing how Beeblefox, among others, were responsible for grooming her, along with other underage girls, as well as engaging in illegal activity with them that I'd rather not get too deep into in this video. So on top of Beeblefox's strange ARG stuff, there was a much deeper, darker side of Beeblefox. Orange Citrus even says that the 2013 Beeblefox channel is not the original channel. Anyway, this is a whole rabbit hole all on its own, and YouTube channel Rob's Media actually recently uploaded a great video discussing the whole Beeblefox Orange Citrus thing in depth, so check that out for more. Rocking Chair Scary Pop-Up an absolute classic when it comes to scary prank videos, the Rocking Chair Scary Pop-Up video traumatized countless people when it started making its rounds around the internet in 2006. The earliest upload of this video comes to us from the YouTube channel SZ World and was uploaded on October 1st of 2006, and since, the video has been re-uploaded time and time again and has made everyone not want to trust their friends who just want to show them a quick video. The owner of the channel, Steve Zaransky, created the video in his family home, and the video reportedly was originally recorded in 2005. Not much else to say about this classic, so on to the next. World Core Fatherhood Part 2 World Core is a now defunct channel with a mysterious background. Originally thought to be a simple ARG with a vaporwave like aesthetic, what this channel has become now is shrouded in mystery as to what exactly the story behind it even is. The mystery stems from videos such as Fatherhood Part 2, which, well, from a video perspective, there isn't much to say because it's very blurry and hard to make out, but the audio is… horrific to say the least. Even if it's fake, the audio sounds like some severe levels of child abuse going on, and I'm not going to play it for you, if you want to hear it, you can find it, but many users in the comment section believe it to be real, simply on the grounds that the cries and screaming of the child sound too convincing to be fake, and really, who knows? It's way too hard to say one way or another, but the point is, this video blurs the line between reality and fiction, and we could never know for sure, especially now that Worldcore has seemingly disappeared from the internet. There's a whole rabbit hole of information about Worldcore, but this point was simply about the Fatherhood Part 2 video itself, so 
check out Steinfall or Some Ordinary Gamers Dive on the matter. Llamas with Hats Llamas with Hats is an animated web series created by Jason Steele, who is also responsible for the popular YouTube series Charlie the Unicorn. The series features two llamas named Carl and Paul in various scenarios, often involving Carl causing mayhem, death, and destruction, only for Paul to be flabbergasted and unsure how to handle the situation. The first episode was uploaded in February of 2009 and contains 12 episodes, concluding in February of 2015. Film Cow, the production company created by Jason Steele, has since gone on to make many other animated series and shorts, and still uploads regularly to this day. Godly Recon Godly Recon was a mysterious channel from, I believe, 2006 that vanished in 2007, if my research is correct anyway. It started off as a fairly standard vlog channel of a woman named Caroline from Scotts Mills, Oregon. Throughout the first several uploads, Caroline would simply talk about her day, and it was all fairly standard stuff, until one upload called Something I Need to Tell You. Caroline talks about how someone may possibly be stalking her, and that she's constantly receiving messages and calls from someone she doesn't know. Shortly after this video, another was uploaded called Taking a Break from YouTube, in which she discusses simply that. The channel would remain dormant for four months when suddenly another video would be uploaded to the channel. A video simply titled, Goodbye, and the audio in that video is quite terrifying. The unfortunate thing about uploading to YouTube is that you'll always get a large majority of people who will think something is fake. It happened with Fatherhood Part 2 that we talked about a couple points back, and it happened with this, and really there isn't much to say about it because who really knows? What's really strange to me is, when doing research for this point, both Scare Theater, whose video is strangely unlisted now, and CM Halloween both list a video by YouTuber Nation Squid as being where Godly Recon spread to public knowledge. But the strange thing is, both of their videos show a screenshot of Nation Squid's upload. However, their thumbnail of the video is slightly different than what you see today. Among the pictures that are used in the thumbnail, the image of Caroline from Godly Recon that you can see in both CM Halloween and Scare Theater's video is now replaced by an image of Marshall Applewhite, the leader of the Heaven's Gate cult. And that video doesn't even mention Godly Recon, so I'm very confused. There's even a Reddit post in which a user claims that Godly Recon has been solved, because they thought Caroline looks just like actress Jackie Allen. Well, CM Halloween reached out to Jackie Allen, who said she had no idea what the Godly Recon YouTube channel even was, and had no relation to it. This whole thing seems so bizarre to me. The unlisted Scare Theater video, the now seemingly changed Nation Squid video, I have no idea about this one, guys. This is a really weird one. It goes without saying that the Godly Recon channel has been completely wiped from YouTube, and even finding re-uploads of the original channel is incredibly difficult, which is just so strange to me. If this was really just an ARG or some fictional video, why is it so hard to find? Maybe I'm just overthinking it. I don't know. Cursed Kleenex Commercial Cursed Kleenex commercial refers to a rather disturbing Kleenex commercial that aired in Japan in 1986, and features a woman with a baby that's body is painted and dressed to look like an oni, or in English, a demon, or troll-like being. I wouldn't be surprised if this obscure commercial was always considered at least slightly creepy and strange. However, in March of 2013, YouTuber Shrouded Hand would post a video called Cursed Kleenex Commercial Changing at Midnight, Warning, Scary, in which they would watch the Kleenex commercial before midnight, and all would be fine. After watching the Kleenex commercial, it is now past midnight. Shrouded Hand then proceeds to play the video again, only for the audio and video to distort and turn this already creepy video even more scary. It was also heavily rumored that the baby and woman in the commercial both met with strange and sudden deaths shortly after the commercial aired. While the actor playing the baby is still unknown to this day, the woman is played by Keiko Matsuzaka, 
who's an actress and is still involved in the industry to this day. Either way, the music and strange imagery in this commercial is already creepy enough as it is. If this commercial came on late at night while you're watching TV, you wouldn't need visual or audio distortion glitches to make it creepier. It does a perfect job of being creepy all on its own. Clip 094.mp4 This video, uploaded to the channel Found on the Tape, was uploaded in July of 2011, and in fact, there are two other clips uploaded to this channel as well. Clip 095.mp4 and Clip 0.84.mp4. All three of these videos are very abstract, however, reportedly clip 095.mp4 has a cipher that when decoded takes you to a download site for a playable map in Gary's Mod. If commenters are to be believed, this was the start of an abandoned ARG, and honestly I'm inclined to believe them as there doesn't seem to be much further information outside of that. Pringle Advert we come back again to Pilot Red Sun and their video Pringle Advert that they uploaded in November of 2013 and... Okay, this one's actually just really funny. I think maybe the Pringle face can be kind of creepy to some, but it's just hilarious. I like that the Pringle face gets mad that you're going to buy Doritos over Pringles. I, I can't find anything creepy about this, I'm sorry, but I do still love the video very much. Things were getting a little wild at Caillou's house. Okay, between this and the Pringle advert, I'm beginning to think this is the joke layer of the iceberg. This video, uploaded in November of 2015, is just... It's just a short clip from an episode of that hellspawn they dare to call children's programming, Caillou. Followed by a clip of some guy getting spanked with a belt by some other guy. It's hilarious. Actually hilarious. I can't imagine a single creepy thing about this. I even thought that maybe there was a version of the video where it cuts away to something creepy because this video has been re-uploaded numerous times where the cutaway is always different. I tried looking and I've watched dozens of these, but they're all just hilarious. I mean, I, I guess it's nice to have some levity on the iceberg, so anyway, on to the next. Hamster Hell Hamster Hell is a two-part claymation series created by Lee Hardcastle, who we discussed a while back. The first video was uploaded in June of 2012 and is simply about a kid who keeps two hamsters as pets. The kid plays with the hamsters and is complete garbage to them, and I hate him. Like, there's a certain place in hell for people who treat animals like this, but I get it, it's animation, it's an art project, yeah, yeah. Hamster Hell 2 is at least more of a commentary on how YouTubers use animals or sometimes even their kids for views in order to cash in on them, so despite the hamster getting abused, at least the message is a bit more clear. We already know that children are prone to treating animals poorly, and I didn't need Hamster Hell 1 to tell me that. That's not to say it's not artistically well done, it very much is, and clearly a lot of work went into it, and honestly, for it to make me hate the kid as much as I do, it succeeds in telling its story correctly, I just don't like thinking about those kinds of things, so fair enough I suppose, it did its job. Hamster Hell 2 though is very much a thing that people do, using animals and children for selfish needs. As a matter of fact, we're going to be talking about some channels that do exactly this with animals in just a bit. 911 Call, May 3rd, 2011. Record 1. This one's actually legitimately pretty creepy. Uploaded by Andrew J. Nyes in May of 2011, the video shows what appears to be a man staring up at a window where presumably Andrew is living. Upon getting on the phone with 911, Andrew tells them that the man has been standing in the exact spot looking up at him for 30 minutes at this point. Despite the fact that the iceberg only refers to Record 1, this actually goes on for a number of days, and for multiple nights in a row, Andrew sees this man standing in the exact same spot outside his window. Despite calling the police multiple times, they don't seem concerned and never bother to show up, which is honestly quite frustrating. When I watched this video, I actually thought it was legitimate until I watched the rest and realized it was a series, which was kind of disappointing at first. The series stays fairly grounded for the most part, and is honestly one of the hidden gems I found while doing research for this iceberg. 
With how short these segments are, and how self-contained everything is with only three characters, the Watcher, Andrew, and his girlfriend, it's a fun and quick watch, especially for the Halloween season, so check it out. I lost 4 million turtles in the blink of an eye, and the world just fuarkin watched. So, I don't know what this video is. I mean, I do. It's a scene from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Season 1, Episode 2, Enter the Shredder, in which April complains about the turtles causing her to get in trouble at work, only for the turtles to dance around to bass-boosted music as she angrily exits the Channel 6 News building. So, the most popular upload of this video doesn't have the title this iceberg uses, it's simply called 5 billion views on my turtle video, and actually has a bit over 5 million views. The video with the exact title only has 6 views, so that's kinda strange, but that's about all there is to say about this one. This is most certainly another joke entry on the iceberg, but now we're moving on to layer 5, so let's see what we get down there. Poochie and Pansy Poochie and Pansy is an animated series created in 2009 about two puppies trying to save a cat from a witch. The series is only 7 episodes long, as well as one extra video that's called a special announcement from Poochie and Pansy. The series is known for having disturbing imagery and being rather creepy, especially given its child-friendly appearance. Strangely enough, in January of 2010, episode 1 and 2 of the series were reportedly taken down by YouTube for unknown reasons, and later re-uploaded. However, they were edited with the jump scares removed. Luckily, you can find re-uploads of these deleted videos to this day. Many people believe that the live-action parts that are spliced throughout the Poochie and Pansy animated bits are, as I'm sure you've guessed, part of an ARG, and that would be correct. The ARG was called The Hunt for the Gangadiddle, and this leads to another YouTube channel altogether. However, that ARG actually did have a conclusive end. The videos for the ARG from that other channel can be found on the YouTube channel simply called Gangadiddle. The Biggest Pimple in the World Now, I have no idea exactly which video this point was referring to, because upon searching for this you get countless gross-out videos about giant pimples and... There's really only so much gross out I can take, hence why the video you're seeing is not pimple popping. You're welcome. But if you do want to find what this video is about, be my guest. I can't imagine that the creator of this iceberg found a biggest pimple in the world video, and it was any more or less disgusting than any of the others out there on YouTube, so really, take your pick. I'm all good though. Sewer Monster while there exists various videos of sewer monsters found on YouTube, the one that this iceberg refers to is this video uploaded in March of 2011 by United Utilities that shows a lanky creature with reflective eyes watching as the camera inches closer towards its location. The channel features a whole bunch of official looking videos about pipework and plumbing, which leads me to believe that whether the thing they saw was actually a creature or not, it was recorded legitimately, but you can never be too sure these days, to be honest. In fact, the channel features two other videos of possible creatures, though if I'm to be skeptical, these two look like they're just some really fast rats or something, but hey, I could be wrong. It's still spooky stuff regardless, though. Possible Fallen Angel in Catalonia this video, uploaded to YouTube in June of 2006 by YouTube user Russ Blondie, shows what appears to be two men venturing into a forest, reportedly near the town of Camp de Vanal in Spain, pardon me if I pronounced that wrong, only to come across a strange creature. The reason this video refers to the creature as a possible fallen angel is because of the scattered white feathers that the cameraman takes note of before stumbling upon the creature. I feel that if this video were to have come out any time after 2016, there's no doubt that many would think it was a rake, as it looks very much like the ever-popular rake creature. There doesn't seem to be any information about this video or those who created it, though there are a few other creepy videos on the Resplondi channel alongside the Fallen Angel video, and whenever that's the case, I feel more inclined to believe that the video in question was a hoax or made as a project. Strangely enough, 
There aren't nearly as many videos discussing or attempting to debunk this famous clip compared to others, so information in regards to its creation, or where it came from at all, is simply unknown. Other Lily Other Lily is an animated horror short directed by David Romero and uploaded to YouTube on the Let's Read YouTube channel in February of 2017. The short features Lily and Beth, who I like to think are sisters, but it's not really explicitly stated. Anyway, Lily goes up to Beth's room before going to bed herself and comes across a drawing Beth made of herself and Lily together, alongside another figure that Beth labeled Other Lily. Brushing it off, Lily goes to bed, only to awaken to a creature entering through her window, only for it to have been a nightmare, though when she checks her phone it begins glitching, until a noise downstairs alerts her. After confronting the monster, we then see that this too was simply a nightmare that Beth was having. Beth then goes downstairs and is taken by the monster. It's a decent short. There's a fair bit of depth in regards to the dreams that both sisters have regarding the monster, and that of course lends itself great to repeat watches. Poco Poco Shopping We're back once again to Nana825763 for their Poco Poco Shopping video. We've talked about them a couple times now with username 666, as well as the point specifically about their channel, but now we come upon Poco Poco Shopping, which is actually one of my favorite videos of theirs. The video presents itself as a home shopping network type deal featuring puppets and a kawaii aesthetic with a dark twist. The dialogue is absolutely hilarious, like I straight up think this is a comedic masterpiece of a video. I suppose it's on here because the imagery does start to get dark with blood and gore, but really, it's awesome. This is one of the most creative videos on the iceberg, and it's, it's funny, creepy, everything all rolled into one. Definitely check this one out. Camera Heads Camera Heads is an early creepypasta that emerged from 4chan reportedly around 2008, though the exact date is unknown. A video appeared on YouTube in August of 2009 simply titled Camera Head, uploaded to the channel Katyokov, though the description reads, Weird video I captured from a mini DV I found in a gully near my house. Strangely enough, given how popular Camera Heads became for a time, this video only has just under 30,000 views. Very strange given that it was very much at the beginning of the phenomenon. Given the small scale of this video, no one knows who made it or where it came from. The channel it's uploaded to was created in August of 2006, which is strange. Most one-off videos were posted within the same month that the channel was created, but that's not the case here, where there's a three-year gap between the creation of the channel and the upload date of the video. Either way, that makes this video a mystery, and simply part of the camera head creepypasta lore. Plastic Men Here we've got yet another Treats for Beasts video, this one called Plastic Men, uploaded in June of 2012. The video is just as bizarre as everything else Treats for Beasts has made, and many in the comments believe it's about child abuse, which very well may be the case. I don't even need to talk about how strange it is because, I mean, again, it's Treats for Beasts, you already know. We've talked about them a few times now, and you'll see a little bit more from them in just a little bit. The Smiling Man The Smiling Man is one of two things here on YouTube, so in order to not accidentally discuss the wrong thing, I'll just discuss both to be safe. The Smiling Man is a short film uploaded to YouTube in July of 2013. It's based off of a Reddit Let's Not Meet story about a man walking home late one night, only to come across a strange man who appears to be walking yet also dancing at the same time, on the path in front of him, only for the encounter to turn nightmarish. This video was made by YouTuber Michael Evans, who also has numerous other videos on his channel. The other video that this point may be referring to is also simply called The Smiling Man, and was created in August of 2018 and uploaded to the channel Alter. Directed by AJ Briones, this short features a young girl in her home coming face to face with a rather disturbing humanoid creature. My favorite thing about this entire short is how rather unfazed the little girl seems of this horrific creature. Besides that though, I don't really have much else to say, so. On to the next. 
Angel. The only creepy video I can find with the name Angel is this. I'm sure many of you have seen this before, most likely uploaded under a different name, as there was a time when this puppet thing was all over the creepy side of YouTube. Blame It On George has a video with well over a million views explaining exactly what this thing is, but I'll summarize. Pardon my pronunciation here, but the puppet is called Ratafak Plakta, and is from a Czechoslovakian TV show called Slniko, which was an educational children's program. Now, I don't have a whole lot to say after that, because, I mean, there you go, the puppet is from a show, and the angel video is just a jumbled edit of the puppet with some strange audio thrown in. But here's the crazy thing. Reportedly around 2008, the puppet of Ratafak was donated to the television station where the Sneeko show aired, and the people there had no idea what it was or the history behind it, and thinking it was just some creepy thing made by some random person and sent to them as a prank, they just threw it in the trash. After this incident, someone found the puppet and used it to make all sorts of videos, such as the one that the Angel video uses as its basis. This story isn't entirely confirmed, and there have been other videos such as a 2019 awards show with a short featuring Ratafak, but of course that could just mean there were multiple puppets made, which would of course make sense. Anyway, for the sake of the iceberg, the Angel video was uploaded to the channel GG in July of 2017. Grave Robbing for Morons Grave Robbing for Morons has a very mysterious history. It features a man named Anthony talking for nearly 30 minutes about grave robbing and different ways he's gone about doing it over his career. The video reportedly comes from the late 1980s or early 1990s when underground VHS tape trading was at its peak. During this time, people would exchange bootleg tapes of movies, TV shows, and sometimes more questionable content that may or may not be on the legal side. From what I've found in research online, the video is famously part of a set along with three other short films packaged together on a VHS and, more recently, DVD, known as Ensuring Your Place in Hell. The other three shorts included in the set are Mortuary of the Dead, Exploding Vermin, and Cooking with Huck Batko, but we have enough to talk about with Grave Robbing for Moron, so let's get back to that. As the others have been proven to be fictional, with the exception of Mortuary of the Dead, which is kind of in an unknown gray area, much like Grave Robbing for Morons is. The film was, for a while, considered to be created by director Christopher Boche, and even IMDB still states that he is in fact the director, but Christopher Boche himself simply only used to sell the tape on his old website, nothing really more to it than that. Boucher is denied involvement with the tape, and in fact, was born in 1987, making his connection to it pretty unlikely. That's not to say that Grave Robbing for Morons couldn't be made more recently and simply made to look older, but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. There's such little information about this video, so unfortunately I just don't have anything further to add, but I sure do love it, especially with its history in the VHS tape trading scene, Though I wasn't able to take part in it as I was much too young, I love researching it and learning of all the mysterious videos that circulated back then, such as this one. Groaning Machine This video, uploaded in January of 2014 by John Grieve, shows what appears to be what they refer to as a homemade groaning machine. Basically, it appears to be a bunch of wheels with groaning tubes attached to them, you know, those novelty noisemaker things that are like a rod with a piece of metal or something in them, and as you flip them over, and whatever's inside them slides to the other side of the tube, they produce a groaning sound. Well, with this video, you get that groaning sound 35 times, as these tubes, affixed to these wheels, spin repeatedly, causing the groaning tubes to endlessly wail. What the creation of such a device could ever be used for is beyond me, but here it is. It's pretty amazing, like, you can have this thing set up in your house and it'll be all you hear for eternity. Awesome. Giant Spider Creature Reportedly recorded in India and uploaded to YouTube in April of 2015, this video depicts what appears to be a, well, 
spider-like creature slowly climbing up the side of a building, though of course it only has four legs as opposed to a spider's eight, but you get the idea. The creature climbs up onto the roof of one of the large buildings before vanishing out of sight. Unfortunately, there's very little information about the history behind this video or where it came from. However, we will be talking about another video very similar to this one soon. The Bells, short horror film. The Bells is a short film directed by Virat Paul and uploaded to his YouTube channel in October of 2018. After the death of a family member, our main character Jim, while on the phone with another family member named Caitlin, starts to hear the sound of a bell off in the distance. Exploring the source of the sound but with no luck, the sound of the bell gets louder and louder to the point that it's deafening to Jim. Eventually the sound stops, though Jim continues to investigate until he comes across a trail of blood leading to a bloody cloth with what looks to be… I don't know, to me it looks like a fetus. Jim then proceeds to grab his car keys before feeling a hand on his shoulder. He turns around, at first seeing nothing, but then realizes it's standing right beside him. The epilogue is that now Caitlin's son starts hearing the bells, however she's unable to hear them. It's a decent short, but the monster thing is really the best part. Penampakan Tuyul di Dera Bogor this is a video that was uploaded in June of 2009, though I do believe the video was made earlier than this, as the channel it's uploaded to is one of those re-uploading channels that has a bunch of random videos about various things, none of which are anything like this video. Anyway, the title is Indonesian and translates to Toyol Sightings in the Bogor area, Bogor being a city in Indonesia. A toyol is said to be an undead infant in Indonesian and Malaysian folklore, and is said to be summoned by shamans in order to rob people of their riches. In this video, a group of friends hang out in what appears to be the backyard of a house, playing guitar and singing and just having a good time. Suddenly, a creature crawls out from the dark as the group is… not very phased by it. Like, at all. It's very strange, the subtitles for the video make it come off as only the cameraman can see it, so maybe it's only visible on the camera and not to the naked eye? That would make the most sense, as again, it crawls right up to the one playing guitar and the person next to them, and they don't even see it. It's a very strange video, and one that I've never seen talked about before in any of those top creepy YouTube videos, despite this video's age. It's videos like this that I love finding in the research I do behind these icebergs. The Jester, short horror film. This short film, directed by Colin Krawchuk, seems very heavily inspired by the Smiling Man Let's Not Meet story that was also made into the short film The Smiling Man that we talked about a little while back on the iceberg, but with a unique twist. In a similar fashion, our main character is walking alone at night along a street when he comes across a strange character in a mask. As the jester performs various tricks, the man becomes more and more uneasy until the jester cuts his own arm, drenches a playing card in his blood, then makes it appear in the man's pocket. The man then proceeds to run from the jester, though he manages to keep up with the main character no matter how far he runs. Finally, the jester puts a sheet over the man and makes him disappear as he proceeds to walk down the street and the short ends. It's an entertaining watch, short and sweet, it also has 18 million views, so you've probably already seen it. La Noria La Noria is a 2018 CGI animated short horror film directed by Carlos Bena, who has worked with ILM on Jurassic Park 3 and Star Wars Episode 2, among others as well as Pixar on Finding Nemo, The Incredibles, and more. The short is about a young boy who, while attempting to make a toy ferris wheel, encounters a strange creature that proceeds to chase him throughout his house. I really don't want to say any more, I'll just say this. The short is much more heartwarming and wholesome than it is creepy, but it is a fantastic short. After watching so many over the course of this iceberg, I didn't think any would really blow me away, but this is worth watching, just know, it isn't creepy. La Noria won over 75 awards and it certainly shows. The animation is gorgeous and the twist, if you can even call it that, is quite nice. I really love it. Burden 
Burden is a YouTube channel created in October of 2009 and still uploads fairly often to this day. The videos don't appear to be part of an ARG or anything, just complete randomness, really. I've tried very hard to use that word as sparingly as possible because of how easy it is to call everything random, but this channel sort of deserves it. I have no real way of describing what any of these videos are. Yes, they're creepy, yes, they're strange, but I can say that about nearly everything on this iceberg. There's a theory that the videos are in some way a critique on consumerism and materialism, which very well may be the case given that across most of the videos, there are inserted clips of news stations and advertisement clips. On top of this, the channel's profile picture is of 19th century philosopher Philip Mainlander, known for his pessimistic outlook and claims that life is, in entirety, worthless, so that pretty much lines up with the general theme of the channel, at least if that theory is to be correct. Seinfeld Spitstain Seinfeld Spitstain is a bizarre animation channel, and that's even taking into account the other animation channels that we've talked about on this iceberg. They created their channel in March of 2013 and have several videos with well over a million views each, so odds are you've heard of them. As a matter of fact, one of their videos is on the Important Videos playlist, and that's where I first saw anything of theirs. They're known for making CGI animated surreal videos with pop culture characters, though they're most known for the Jimmy Neutron videos, such as Rebirth and Jimmy Neutron Happy Family Happy Hour. Unfortunately, Seinfeld Spitstain hasn't uploaded since September of 2014, so we may never see any more fun Jimmy Neutron videos from them ever again, but hopefully they return. Video Dating Tape here we've got yet another video that was uploaded to a channel the same day it was created, and remains the sole video on that channel. Video Dating Tape was uploaded in March of 2017 on the channel Bala Clava Girl 95 In the description, they claim that they found the VHS tape at a car boot sale, which I had to look up what that even is, and apparently it's like a flea market or a swap meet, but like, people park their cars and sell items out of their trunks. Anyway, that's basically all the background we get on the tape itself. The video appears to be from a video dating service that apparently was a real thing back in like the 80s and 90s, where basically someone would record themselves talking about their interests and what they're looking for in a partner, then send it to a company that would match people. So it's like Tinder, but instead you have to record yourself talking for five minutes. Tony talks about himself for a bit, and all seems rather normal for the most part. The tape clearly cuts out at some points and shows what appears to be a camera looking into a window of an apartment building. Upon coming back to Tony, his demeanor has changed and he violently starts hitting himself before continuing. As the video goes on, you can hear what sounds like a person in distress in the room with him before Tony ends the tape. Despite the concerning footage, our good friend Scare Theater was actually able to find out that the man in the tape is most likely a British actor named Darren Stoneham and based off their investigation, that seems to be where the background of this video lies for now. The Poughkeepsie Tapes Scene The Poughkeepsie Tapes is a 2007 fictional horror film shot in the style of a documentary, documenting a serial killer in Poughkeepsie, New York. The film features multiple interviews and instances of footage that the film states is from the serial killer's personal archive of recordings of the murders. The film had quite a troubled release history, first premiering at the 2007 Tribeca Film Festival, and was going to come to theaters in 2008, but was ultimately shelved. It wasn't until 2014 that the movie would finally have a video-on-demand release, and it wouldn't be until 2017 that it would finally be released on DVD and Blu-ray. This incredibly limited release, as well as the film's lack of popularity and publicity, meant that clips from the movie uploaded online could be passed around as legitimate, without much proof to the contrary. That leads us to the topic of this point on the iceberg. There's a specific clip in the movie in which a woman is seemingly held against her will, unable to move, while something crawls around behind her. It slowly comes closer into frame, revealing itself to be a person. The person then slowly begins to bring two needles up to the woman's neck before the tape ends. This scene was very popular on image sites such as 4chan, often presented in a GIF format, and many people, unaware of the source, would think there's a possibility that it could be real from like, the dark web or something, but nope, 
It simply came from this film. Ghost from Japanese Subway This is a clip from a Japanese horror movie called Urahora, which is a 2008 anthology-style horror movie featuring various horror shorts, sort of like the VHS horror movie series. I recall this scene being passed around a lot back in the earlier days of YouTube as being part of a Japanese documentary or something, as if it was real, and a lot of people actually were convinced, and really, I can see why. Given its documentary style, it very much blurs that line between real and fiction, and the clip is genuinely quite creepy. It starts with a man discussing a recording he and his friends made while enjoying their time at a restaurant, as the man points out a specific woman in the background of the video. As the group moves on and finds themselves at a subway station, they see the woman again, only this time she jumps in front of the oncoming train. In the final clip, as the group is panicking, the woman's face can be seen just below the walkway, looking up at the group from below. This is certainly a movie I really need to add to my list, as we have another segment coming up that uses a clip from this movie as well that we'll be discussing shortly. Rubber Johnny Rubber Johnny is a music video directed by Chris Cunningham and features music by Aphex Twin. The video features a disfigured character named Rubber Johnny being interviewed by an unseen person. The man gives Rubber Johnny an injection after Johnny starts to freak out, and what follows is a rather intense music video of Johnny going crazy. This video freaked out a lot of people back when it came out in 2005. The entire video was made by Chris Cunningham over the course of three and a half years and was done entirely in his home. It's a very creepy video, honestly. Just imagine sneaking onto your computer in 2005, trying to be quiet, then suddenly you see this. Yeah, good stuff. Postal 1 Loading Screen Music Postal is a video game series that started in 1997 and has had quite a bit of controversy with each release given its gratuitous amounts of violence. Now, for whatever reason, Christian Salier, the composer for the game, felt the need to make the loading screen music absolutely horrific. Like, this is the kind of stuff you'd expect to hear in a horror game, and Postal is by no means a horror game, but these loading screens would certainly make you think otherwise. Though I said that Postal is not a horror series, the first game certainly does have a very desolate atmosphere to it, especially compared to its more comedy-driven sequel. But still, this music is quite out there, and I'm not sure what they were going for with this style, but there you go. Brian Brian is a CGI animation channel created in November of 2013 and would start uploading in December of that year. The channel has seven videos, all depicting surreal animation and featuring these bizarre, human-like characters. There seems to be some sort of overarching plot, specifically with the blue woman and the red and blue man, and it ends with them eventually becoming parents, I think. Brian, the creator of the channel, also does the music for all of these videos and has a band camp. It's also worth noting that Brian seems to have a very dedicated following as many of the comments are all very supportive, which I love to see. Ben Wheel We talked about Ben Wheel a while back when we discussed his video Henry Eats, but we'll go a bit more into his other works here. He created his channel in April of 2009 and primarily focuses on surreal horror-style 3D animation. The most famous video, as mentioned earlier on the iceberg, was Henry Eats, but he has also some other crazy videos such as 1995squish.avi and The Birth Tab, both of which are just as absurd and crazy as Henry Eats. In October of 2020, Ben uploaded a video called This Video Cursed Us, which is a compilation of reaction videos of various YouTubers reacting to Henry Eats. And based off the comments Ben made in the comment section, almost makes us feel like a goodbye to his YouTube page, at least that's the vibe I got from it. This remains his final video to this day, but luckily his channel still exists for our viewing pleasure. Creeper in My Apartment This video, uploaded by You Know It Joe in November of 2009, was huge, even making it onto many news stations. 
The video opens with Joe explaining that someone was eating his food and drinking his beverages at night, and when he confronted his girlfriend about it, she denied having anything to do with it. Calling her out and hoping to catch her in the act, Joe decides to set up a camera in his kitchen, and what is revealed is everyone's worst fear. A woman slowly emerges from a crawl space above Joe's kitchen and lowers herself into his apartment. She then proceeds to rummage through his refrigerator and pantry and takes whatever she needs and even watches TV for a while. At one point, Joe even wakes up and the woman scrambles to hide. Joe comes out unaware of the woman hiding just feet away from him. When Joe goes back to his bedroom, she then lingers for a while longer before crawling back up to her space. This video is incredibly creepy and just goes to show how easily someone can slip by right under your nose without you even knowing. Joe was told by the police that it appeared that she had been there for at least a few weeks, but that's not a short amount of time for someone to be living among you, especially given the seemingly small space he appeared to live in. Her son can't stop growing. This video was actually called Her Son Can't Stop Growing at Night and was uploaded in October of 2020 by the channel Life of Luxury, which is a massive channel with over 6 million subscribers. The video alone has over 34 million views, so you may have already seen it, but anyway, Parker and Chester, who lead the Life of Luxury channel, conduct mock investigations into the paranormal, sort of in the same style as Ghost Adventures or Ghost Hunters, or my personal favorite, Paranormal Home Inspectors. These videos are at least well made, and I love that they take them very seriously, but this point on the iceberg is talking specifically about the Her Son Can't Stop Growing at Night video. Basically, the plot of this video is that Parker and Chester are called by a mother to help her discover what's wrong with her son. Throughout their investigation, they see the woman's son contorting and wandering the house. Like, honestly, despite these being fake, they're hilariously entertaining. I can see why these videos have millions of views. They're actually incredible, and I love it. Real Demons Caught on Tape Uploaded by Chester Tyler 714 in January of 2009, this video features a person filming paranormal activity in their house. As they frantically pan around the room, human arms start coming down from the ceiling. First one, then another, and before long, there are suddenly dozens of hands all reaching down from the ceiling, seemingly without a source. Next, smaller arms start reaching into the room from underneath the door. An eyeball then appears on the side of a wall, startling the cameraman who, after collecting himself, turns the camera, only to find a figure made up entirely of hands that then lunges at the camera. In the 2012 anthology horror film VHS, there's a segment about a haunted house that features arms coming through the wall very much like this video, and I'm curious if they took inspiration from this. From what I can tell, there's no information in regards to who directed or made this YouTube video, and the channel has no other uploads of any kind. Man Gets Lost in the Catacombs This famous real-life found footage is quite disturbing. I first personally saw it back in 2001 on the TV show Scariest Places on Earth, in which on one episode, they discussed the Paris Catacombs. The Paris Catacombs are located in Paris, of course, and are a series of tunnels totaling in over 200 miles and containing the remains of over 6 million people. Today, a little under 2 miles of the tunnels are available for the public to access, however, there are many explorers who find their way into tunnels deeper and that is where this famous video comes into play. No date is given on when this footage was found, however it seems to have been sometime in the early 90s, most reports say 1993, though it's uncertain. Reportedly, the episode of Scariest Places on Earth that I mentioned was the first time that this footage was ever shown, however it's presented by a man named Francis Friedland, an independent filmmaker who has done multiple small projects over the years. All Francis says is that he found the film on a small camera that was found deep in the catacombs, and he appears to have the original camera that was found as well. Furthermore, Francis said that the camera was given to him with no other information. It's also worth noting that Francis says that the catacombs have over 400 miles of tunnels, but everywhere I look online says 200 miles, so make of that what you will. 
This could just be my skepticism talking, but going back to how this guy was a filmmaker, it makes me wonder if this was all just made up. The Scariest Places on Earth episode aired 22 years ago, and it doesn't seem as if he's talked about it any more since then, or has had any sort of update, and in that episode, he said he never planned on going back to the catacombs ever again. Either way, this clip really stuck with me as a kid, and I've always wanted to visit the catacombs, even if at least the two miles available to tourists. I've heard of some sketchy underground means of getting into the deeper areas, but for now, I think I'll just play it safe. Mr. Katia Mr. Katia is a channel that was created in October of 2011 and to date has over 1,690 videos. This is one of those rabbit hole YouTube channels where the mystery is entirely that. There is a genuineness to this channel that gives many the feeling that the person behind it is simply acting as themselves with no ulterior motives or trying to piece together some sort of narrative. Many of her videos feature her simply crying on camera or talking about various things. She does mention in her channel description that she suffers from various mental disorders, so I think it's safe to say that this is just her way of entertaining herself and is simply what she does in her free time. Some of these videos do get quite strange, including one in which she screams at the top of her lungs, and apparently based off another video of hers, she does this quite often and her neighbors even called the police to report this screaming, even going so far as to record it in case it could be used as evidence if something was actually wrong. Mr. Katia has a video in which she reenacts her interaction with the police officer who visited her home, playing both the roles of herself and the police officer and the conversation that they had. This channel, again, has hundreds of videos and I can't go through them all, but I think it's safe to say that she's just a mentally ill person who uses YouTube as an outlet. Rough Batch Rough Batch is a now deleted YouTube channel, meaning that many of the videos are now lost. The creator of the channel, reportedly named Anna Maskovich, had thousands of videos uploaded, though this exact number is not known. According to a Reddit post from 2011, as of the date of that post, she had 24,955 videos. Nearly all of her videos feature her speaking about various topics, oftentimes around her home, but occasionally out in public where you can see many walking by, often stopping to stare as she yells into the camera. Much like the previously mentioned Mr. Katia, I think it's safe to say that Ref Batch is mentally ill, and most likely uses YouTube as a sort of outlet for their voice, as well as possibly as a hobby to occupy their time with. Ref Batch has since started a new YouTube channel called You Don't Know, You Know You Know You Don't, in which still, to this day, she uploads constantly. As I write this script, she has uploaded 97 videos today alone, and is currently standing at over 74,870 videos uploaded to this new channel, on top of the many more that were previously on her Refbatch channel that are now gone. I've got a golden ticket. This is a Willy Wonka parody video created by Meat Canyon, in which a deranged and creepy Willy Wonka shows Charlie around his chocolate factory. It's, uh, it's kind of uncomfortable, with Willy Wonka giving off some pretty heavy Predator vibes. Interesting placement having it this low on the iceberg, but there you go. Yume Tuki Zalgo Yume Tuki is a fan-made sequel to the 2004 RPG Maker game Yume Niki. Both games involve the main character exploring their dreams, with various objectives. According to the wiki, while the game is fully playable, it's still under development and being added to, which is an interesting premise for a game that's fully playable. There's a point in the game where you explore a dream that is themed around Zalgo, the popular cursed text generator known for corrupting and distorting text to make it look creepy and strange. This would spread to artists, doing a similar effect to pictures, allowing for nearly anything to be affected by Zalgo. A video uploaded by YouTube user Sara in July of 2012 shows the interaction with Zalgo that takes place within the game. Slowly, the floor below the protagonist, Arotsuki, starts to shift and distort as the colors grow more saturated and distorted. Given that, as I had previously mentioned, the game is still under development, there are reports that this event has changed numerous times, 
and there are also reports of it being much more nightmarish with disturbing imagery, loud noises, and rapid flashing. Even from the few uploads of various YouTubers playing through this Zalgo portion of the game, they all look different in some way or another, though I do naturally question the extremes some may go to when retelling their account of what they saw within the game. The fact that it can be changed and updated certainly makes for some creepy possibilities, and I feel more games should take this approach more often, especially horror games, to keep players on their toes. Lisa Holm Lisa Holm was a 17-year-old girl from Sweden who disappeared on June 7, 2015, with her body being found two days later. Now, the mysterious thing about this case is that 13 days before Lisa's disappearance, a video appeared on YouTube uploaded to a channel called Lisa Holm, and that video was called 13. All the video showed was a clock counting down for 11 seconds, and that's it. Nothing else to it. I remember when this case was going on, this video was getting massive attention in regards to Lisa Holm's disappearance. Despite the fact that many believed this video proved that the murder of Lisa Holm was premeditated, authorities disproved the video having any connection to the case at all. So what, was this all just a coincidence? Many people think that it was all just some disturbing joke made by someone who just so happened to upload a clip of a countdown timer. After the case of Lisa Holm came to light, they renamed the video 13, as it had been 13 days since the upload date of that video to when Lisa disappeared, and renamed their channel to Lisa Holm. Either way, at the very least, it brought widespread attention to the Lisa Holm case, and the case is considered one of the most infamous murder cases to come out of Sweden. Abstractions Abstractions is a channel that was created in June of 2016 and would start uploading videos in September of 2016. The videos are all very well shot, which is certainly a standout quality when compared to other channels similar to this. Now, I'm gonna be honest, this is one that has a much deeper meaning than I'm going to get into in this video, but there are many great analysis videos made that really get into the depths of what makes this channel so great, among a sea of creepy YouTube content creators. The channel explores themes of dying, death, grief, and much more. It's honestly beautiful. Like, I know I said earlier that the videos are well shot, but that's such an understatement. I feel like the person behind these videos really understands how to artistically shoot, and it's certainly worth checking out. Of course, a lot of it is metaphoric and symbolic, but still, very much worth a watch, and I'm in no way doing it justice here, you kinda just need to see it. Abstractions would upload their, as of now, final video in May of 2021. The channel only has a little over 5,000 subscribers, so if you want to watch something visually amazing that most likely hasn't been seen, check out this channel. Rorochan 1999's Final Stream Rorochan 1999 was a 14 year old streamer from Japan who would record herself doing various random things, oftentimes playing piano and singing. Honestly, I don't really have much to say leading up to what this point is about, however. It's really just a sad story about a young girl, and no one really knows why she did what she did, but there are countless theories. On November 24th, 2013, Rorochan would livestream herself climbing atop a tall building and jumping to her death. Despite reports that many encouraged her, after reading what I believe are the stream chat transcripts, it actually seems as if a majority were telling her not to jump and trying to talk her out of it. But of course, there are a couple creeps in there who do tell her to jump, but they're definitely outweighed by those showing genuine concern. I think re-uploads of this video were able to exist on YouTube for quite some time because despite Rorochan jumping, you don't actually see anything, but nowadays it seems that most of the re-uploads are now gone, but are available on other websites. Larry Carlson Larry Carlson is an artist and musician who uploads psychedelic videos featuring both his art and music. Larry created his channel in June of 2006 and still uploads regularly to this day. His videos are straight up acid trip simulators. That's the best way I can describe them. My personal favorite one is Live and Die and Live Again, which is the video you've been watching during this segment. It's insane. He has a website called LarryCarlson.com, and he actually sells some pretty insane shirts, and I kind of want to get one, to be honest. Luis is Missing Luis is Missing, also sometimes referred to as In the Dark, 
is a compilation of videos from the channel Luis Paxton that was created in February of 2007. This channel would start uploading in April of 2007 and upload periodically between then and July of 2007, totaling in at 38 videos. The videos feature Louise Paxton as she vlogs her experience of moving from her hometown to a flat in another city. Everything would be fairly standard until her 11th video in which Louise recounts an incident that she had with a person possibly attempting to break into her home late one evening. Despite reporting the incident to the police, since Luis wasn't certain if the person was actually attempting to enter her home or just standing outside, they were unable to do anything. From here on out, Luis experiences various instances of paranormal activity, from noises to cold spots, and from here, it escalates. As the paranormal activity peaks, a final event would occur that would lead to Luis going missing. Luis's friend Lizzie comes to visit to help Luis get her mind off the activity and have some fun. While messing around with the camera after Luis had fallen asleep, the footage then jumps to both Luis and Lizzie investigating some noises they both heard before all hell breaks loose. This last video would end abruptly with a message in the description from Lizzie saying that she found Luis's camera and phone on the floor of the bedroom with no sign of Luis. This final video would complete what is now known as Luis is Missing, which would gain a decent amount of internet notoriety back when it had initially concluded. Many believed the story to be true and that a woman named Luis Paxton had really gone missing to the point of a website called luispaxton.co.uk being created in order to help find Luis. It was eventually found to be a project created by director Andrew Cole and was heavily criticized for faking a disappearance and on top of that, going to such means as creating a website for it, artificially legitimizing the case. In some ways, some would say that you shouldn't take something on the internet so seriously, and that obviously there was never any harm in making a project. But similarly to the Blair Witch Project, faking earnestly claiming your video to be real in order to stir up hype and attention can lead to backlash from those who believe that anytime someone thinks it's real, and reports it, or claims they saw a missing person out in public, it takes resources away from those doing investigations into real missing people. Either way, as a now established fictional series, it's amazing, seriously, this is a great watch and really I'm surprised it has as few views as it does. Please help me, the final video of the series only has 50 comments on it, the most recent being 13 years ago. That's pretty insane to me given how well done the series was, so definitely check this one out. Gemini Home Entertainment Gemini Home Entertainment reminds me very much of the channel Local 58 TV that we talked about a while back, at the very least in regards to the aesthetic. This is one of the few channels that does the VHS filter right, without overdoing it or making it feel artificial. The channel was created in November of 2019 and features 18 videos as of the making of this video. The initial video, World's Weirdest Animals, starts off innocently enough until the end when the video mentions an animal called Woodcrawlers. The video mentions that they can take over human hosts and prefer to live among the human families of the host they inhabit. From here on out, the tapes would all focus on woodcrawlers and various ways to deal with these creatures. This series starts really strong and the videos are all very compelling, telling the story of these creatures that from the later videos, may quite possibly be aliens, especially given what is said in the video, Our Solar System. Despite totaling in it around 90 minutes of total video on the channel, Nexpo has a two and a half hour long video breaking down the series, so there's a lot to this, certainly more than I can really put into a segment of an iceberg, so give the series a watch, or check out an analysis if you want it all broken down. So before we move on to layer 6, there were two points on layer 5 that I could not find anything for. One was Russian alien sighting, which upon searching for on YouTube came up with no results, and another was one simply called Teeth, which I tried searching for and the only thing I can come up with was a couple short films, but the other short films on the iceberg all had short film in the name, so I don't know what this was. Anyway. On to the next layer. Smile Guide, Krena Gerzibo TV. So this is one of the few points that include a channel as well as a specific video for the channel. 
Kraina Grazebo TV, which I believe is Polish for Mushroomland TV, is an art project created by Viktor Stroybog that features a universe of characters in a mysterious land created entirely of Viktor Stroybog's design. Victor does all of the artistic work for this project, including the music, and has been doing it since December of 2013, and has uploaded new content fairly regularly since. The series very much takes after the style of a children's television program, sort of like Don't Hug Me I'm Scared, and other series like that that attempt to show themselves as potentially for kids, while the true content within is not quite so kid-friendly. Poppy the Performer, Limbo Episode Poppy the Performer is a Japanese 3D animated children's television series that aired on the children's network Kid Station in Japan. The series had three seasons, with each episode being about five minutes in length. The show aired from 2000 to 2001 and is simply bizarre. The series focuses on Poppy, an apprentice clown who spends each episode performing different circus tricks from magic to acrobatics alongside his fellow circus mates. This show's animation is incredibly strange, and something about it feels very off, at least to me. This point specifically refers to the Limbo episode, so we'll discuss that one, but really, all the episodes appear to have the same bizarre and unsettling quality to them. Limbo is the second episode of the first season, and features Poppy simply attempting to Limbo, but can't seem to get it. Poppy's friend, Ketamono, then proceeds to flawlessly Limbo. Jealous of this, Poppy then lowers the bar and sets it on fire. As Ketamono attempts to limbo again, Poppy turns into a creepy clown, which is why I believe it's on the iceberg, because on top of the imagery of this show already being incredibly creepy, this just adds to it immensely. The episode ends with Ketamono successfully limboing, but setting his tail on fire and setting off a bunch of fireworks by accident. This is without a doubt one of the strangest things I've discovered while researching this iceberg. Stickman in Russia This video, more commonly referred to as Stick Creature Climbs Building in Russia, shows what appears to be, well, a strange stick creature climbing on the side of a building in Russia. This is one of those videos where tracking down the true original source is near impossible, as most who upload such videos typically like to play it off as if they're found footage or found on the deep web, and no credit is generally given, lest we have a way of determining the legitimacy of the video, thus easily having an answer to whether or not it's real, which, yeah, I get it, it just makes it difficult for research, though. So, from what I can find, this video first appeared on YouTube in October of 2013 on the channel KG123. Since this video has appeared and become widespread online, there has been more videos created and posted on other channels that show a very similar creature climbing on buildings, and once again in Russia. Maybe Russia just has this problem with creatures, and they like to keep it a secret. Dies.avi Dies.avi is a creepy video uploaded by YouTube user GrandVice888 in August of 2011, and this is going to be one of the shortest entries on the iceberg, because I don't really even know what to say. There aren't hidden messages or anything, it's just some rather strange imagery, and if I'm going to give any critique, it's a bit ruined by the fact that one of the many flashing faces throughout the video is the Jeff the Killer picture that's really famous. If it wasn't for that single picture being included in this video, I'd probably give it much higher praise. For whatever reason, the only other videos on this channel are a strangely edited video of Goddess Bunny, you know, the woman whose video was used in the Obey the Walrus video, as well as three Motley Crue music videos. Strange. Begotten, 1990 Begotten is a 1989 film created by Edmund Elias Marriage, who's more well known for making the 2000 film Shadow the Vampire, which is a fictional film depicting the making of the 1922 horror film Nosferatu, in which director F.W. Murnau casts a real vampire to play the titular vampire. Begotten is quite an experience. While many may have seen the famous opening scene of what appears to be a man strapped to a chair convulsing, Many don't know where this clip originates from. Begotten is a film that is, for the most part, very much left up to viewer interpretation, though many view it as a story of creation, with God, the being at the beginning of the film, creating Mother Earth and her giving birth to the Son of Man, 
who was then killed by a group of faceless nomads. Edmund Marriage himself states that the story of creation was indeed in his mind when creating Begotten, though he encourages viewers to come up with their own interpretations as well. After I came across this film myself sometime back in 2011 or so, I became fascinated with it, and after showing it to a friend, they told me it was the slowest, most boring thing they had ever seen. Well, to this day, I really like the movie a lot, and even own it on VHS. It's definitely not for everyone, but if you've got an hour to spare and want to watch something weird, give it a shot. Infinite Fractals I'm not positive if this point is referring to a specific channel or video, as there is a channel called Infinite Fractals, however, it uploads exactly what I'd be talking about anyway, so I guess it doesn't really matter. These videos, often set to music or other bizarre sounds, feature fractal zooming imagery. Basically what a fractal is, is a shape that is infinitely complex, and because that sounds hard to explain and I'm not like, one of those science explained YouTubers, Simply put, by viewing the screen, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. As the image zooms without stopping, the pattern repeats infinitely from the base shape that we started with. It's all quite trippy, and I'm sure if you took some questionable substance this would make you freak out. Anyway, there's a channel called Infinite Fractals that may or may not be what this point is referring to, and they have a bunch of videos like the one I'm showing on screen now. But there are some creepy ones out there too, including some that play shepherd tones and are quite anxiety-inducing. Limbo, the Organized Mind Limbo, the Organized Mind is a short film directed by Jim Henson in 1966. Yes, the Jim Henson that would bring us Sesame Street in 1969 and the Muppets in 1976 would first bring us this, uh, project. The video shows a visual trip through the mind of the narrator, and it's all rather abstract as we're shown all sorts of memories and thoughts throughout the narrator's life. Eventually, the narrator gets lost in their own mind and everything sort of just crashes. It's an interesting project made by such a legendary person, and it's great that we have an early work of his like this to see how artists grow throughout their careers. You can find this video uploaded to the Jim Henson History Channel YouTube channel. 010 010 is a video uploaded by Human Being 151 though I'm unable to find a date as the original channel and video have been deleted and now we're only left with re-uploads. What this video is, however, even by fictional project standards, is quite crazy. We see someone filming in a room that is filled with notebooks. Thousands of notebooks stacked everywhere in this room. So many that it makes you wonder if this person bought out the entire stock of these things at their local office depot. Now, it's not so strange at first until we get our first hint that something is up 30 seconds in. The camera passes by a sign that reads, Mr. Diddy, all this hard work I have for you, Diddy. Okay, strange. The camera continues to scan countless notebooks stacked in boxes upon boxes. The cameraman even goes into other rooms, showing more and more notebooks, just endless notebooks. It's absolutely unreal. Even on the scale of a project depicting a fictional hoarder, this is overboard. There are way too many notebooks, and that personally makes me feel like, fictional project or not, this is insane. If someone did do this as a fictional video, they're absolutely nuts going to this extreme with all these notebooks, and if this is real, it's still insane because, well, it is what it is. At the 6 minute mark, the cameraman finally opens one of these notebooks, and what's inside is thousands and thousands of written lines of, Brother Diddy, please accept. Reportedly, the channel that this video was created by also had many other videos uploaded to it, but from my research, only this one has survived. With the original channel gone and so many videos also deleted, the rabbit hole isn't as deep as it could be, but if you want to dive deeper, check out Slightly Sociable's video discussing it further, it's a great watch. EAS Scenario EAS stands for Emergency Alert System and has been in place for many decades, being known before as the Emergency Broadcast System, and before that the Conrad System. Conrad standing for Control of Electromagnetic Radiation, which itself was launched in 1951 as a civil defense broadcast method 
in the event of an attack during the Cold War. Over the years, as the system has evolved, one thing that hasn't really changed is how creepy these alerts can be, and not simply because of the fact that they're meant to warn of disaster, be it from actual military threats to weather warnings. These kind of alerts are still played today, and if for whatever reason you still listen to radio, you'll occasionally hear tests playing that high-pitch buzz tone. Now what this point is actually referring to is most likely emergency alert scenarios created by people that are meant for intense doomsday scenarios such as aliens, multiple nuclear launch, zombies, among many other scenarios. Some of them are pretty creepy, and some of these fake EAS reports have been played on the air. For example, in February of 2013, Montana's KRTV television station was hacked, and an EAS message warning of a zombie outbreak was played to countless viewers. There's also an emergency alert message video created by YouTube user KickHats that's incredibly well done and is more so an analog horror project, but still, these messages can be jarring and there's something quite desolate about them, especially when it's late at night. Most people don't really watch TV much anymore, or at least not in the live sense, and that's where most of these messages would be played. Nowadays, I think most people just get their alerts from their phones, so the days of these jarring messages may only grow more and more rare. k Fee Ghost Car Commercial Oh, okay, this is a big one. So if you do recognize this video, don't worry, I'm not going to jump scare you. I wouldn't do that. But if you don't, well, if anyone tells you to watch a video for a car driving along a scenic route in the countryside, turn down the volume or you'll have a bad time. From what I can find, the video was first uploaded to YouTube in July of 2005 by YouTube user Mr. Smithereen. It's pretty funny, the channel created in July of 2005 only has one video, and it's one of the most famous videos to ever be posted on YouTube. I do wonder if the person who created the channel knows just how big this upload got. Anyway, it was passed all around to friends via email or just showing it to your friends late at night when sleeping over at their house. You'd tell them to watch the car and they'd watch intently until suddenly the shocking moment arrives. It's great. It's a lot like the scary maze game, which I, of course, tricked a few friends with back in the day. Good stuff. So, where does this video come from? Believe it or not, this was a real commercial that aired on German television stations back in 2004, advertising K-Fee, a German canned coffee beverage. The jump scare was put in the video to give you a shock, much like their coffee drink is meant to with the caffeine. Believe it or not, this isn't even the only commercial that they made with this jump scare. There are actually a few more. Wavy Websurf does an excellent video about the history of this video, so check that out if you want a deeper dive. Don't Move 2013 I find it interesting that such a popular short film would be so low on this list, but anyway, Don't Move is, well, a short film from 2013 directed by Anthony Melton, and is part of the horror anthology series Bloody Cuts. The film is about a group of friends who, while hosting a game night, end up playing with a Ouija board and summoning a very violent spirit that decides to make a game out of them, kind of ironic, as the name of the film implies if any of them move, the spirit will kill them. The visual effects are all quite amazing, and the short even won a few awards. Laughing Sailor this video, uploaded by YouTuber Terrapin Joe in December of 2008, features these rather creepy looking animatronic statues of sailors all laughing and moving about. The laugh itself is very jarring, and with all five of the sailor statues laughing out of sync, it makes for a very creepy experience. Like, these things are horrific. Imagine getting up to use the restroom in the middle of the night and a door to like one of the rooms in your house is slightly ajar when you swear you closed it. You creak the door open when suddenly five of these things just start going off. Instant nightmare fuel. Now apparently dolls like these date back to the 1950s in which they would be located in amusement centers and arcades and would be coin operated. While I appreciate the historical side of such things, I think we're best leaving these characters in the 1950s. No need for modern recreations, please. Our dreams will most certainly thank you. Polybius Gameplay Footage Polybius is a gaming legend that has been on the internet for nearly as long as I can remember. 
It was one of the earliest video game related urban legends that, at least to my memory, spawned specifically from the internet, as opposed to word of mouth or playground rumors. The Wikipedia article for Polybius was created on February 25th, 2005, though in my research I find references to Polybius starting around 2004, though the exact date is unknown. One of these references specifically comes from a website called ArcadeMuseum.com which very much looks like an old early 2000s style webpage. The legend goes that back in 1981, in Portland, Oregon, Polybius was put into an arcade by the US government to test out the effects of subliminal messaging, mind control, and other sinister experiments on the unknowing public. After causing nightmares, migraines, and even the deaths of some players, after only a month of being in the arcade, the game vanished, never to be seen again. Now, given that this whole Polybius legend is linked to the government, you'll always have people who think it may be real, because if the government wants to cover something up, they will, but such things leak with time, such as all the real horrific stuff the government has done to the masses, so maybe no Polybius, but other sorts of human testing? You bet. Various YouTube videos exist showing gameplay of Polybius in action, some with over-the-top flashing lights and colors, some with obvious words and little messages popping up to emulate the subliminal messages, and so on. But of course, none of these are real. There is no Polybius. So don't go looking for it. Nintendo, a sad story. Nintendo, a sad story is a video uploaded to the channel K... O-N-E-J-U-N-T-L-I, but from my research was created in 2011, and the original channel it was uploaded to was deactivated. The short was created by Graham Young, who I can't find a single bit of information about, so I don't really have much to say about him. The video features Mario living in a horrific decaying house while serving a nightmarish Shigeru Miyamoto. Mario then enters a door that holds a room that appears to be a mock set of a Super Mario Bros. level, with Princess Peach inside. Miyamoto, dressed as Bowser, as well as Reggie Filame, pursue Mario. As Reggie tries to force Mario down a warp pipe, Miyamoto recalls Reggie revealing the Wii during E3 2005. This enrages Miyamoto, who then attacks Reggie and beats him with an NES before comforting Mario. Miyamoto then dies before Mario downs a bottle of pills and dies right beside him. It's, uh, it's a strange video. I don't even know what to think. It's weird. But it's well made at least. Japanese Ghost Haunted Hospital Here's our second entry from the 2008 anthology horror film Urahora. This is the movie I talked about in the point about the Japanese subway ghost. Here we have yet another segment from that movie, this time about a haunted hospital. As this clip was put up on YouTube with no context alongside the subway video, this video too was thought to be real for a long time and is very convincing. The video features a reporter doing a segment on an old abandoned hospital that is considered haunted, and she reluctantly goes inside with her film crew and explores as more and more terrifying things begin to happen. It's very well made, and on top of the subway video, makes me very much want to check out Urohora and see what else it has to offer. Who wants to gnaw on human bones? Here we find ourselves back to Treats for Beasts YouTube channel. You know, the channel that brought us the Beast song quite a few layers back up. Anyway, here we find a video that was uploaded in September of 2009 and features a pink blob person thing just wandering about. I seriously don't even have anything to say about this one. I I wish I did, but I mean, just look at it. Yeah. On to the next. Ghost Hangs Around Disneyland. This point refers to a pretty famous clip that was, from my research, first uploaded to YouTube in 2009 and even made quite a few news headlines, though that original YouTube upload is now lost and the earliest one that remains now is from 2012. The video features what appears to be a ghostly figure walking from the entrance of the haunted mansion and along the pathway between the attraction and the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. The strange thing is, there are multiple camera angles and the figure appears to stay consistent across all four of the live feed recordings. 
Many have said that the reason for this is that over a long period of time, the equipment used to record the footage and repeatedly rewrite over whatever it may be recording onto can cause a ghosting image, and it's simply a cast member from another day, but I'm really not so sure. I'm quite skeptical in regards to ghosts, but really for a ghosted image of a person to be picked up so clearly is hard for me to believe, not to mention usually ghosting only occurs when the object is on the screen for an extended length of time. If it was a stationary object that was removed and now showing up as a ghostly after image, I'd be more inclined to believe that theory, and I believe that sort of ghosting can really only happen on tapes, and I doubt Disney was using tapes for recording their security footage in the year 2009. But I very well may be wrong, as YouTuber Captain Disillusion has a video claiming otherwise. But then that just makes me wonder, why didn't the tape pick up after images of many of the guests that walked through that gate countless times throughout the day, and only pick up this one single cast member? Regardless, I still really love this video as it's kind of become a staple of creepy Disneyland myths to this day. Obey the Walrus Not to be confused with Obey the Walrus, this is a YouTube channel created in May of 2008 and features six videos uploaded between May and June of that same year, with no other activity since. The channel description includes a phone number, a MySpace page, and email link, and also states that the channel owner is from Guadalajara, Mexico. Oddly enough, the channel description states, Do not compare me to Johnny Bema, which is the name of Sandra Crisp, or Goddess Bunny's father, who, if you recall, is the subject of this YouTube channel's namesake, that being the YouTube video Obey the Walrus that we talked about previously. The connection, other than the Obey the Walrus name, is unknown, and why they state not to be compared to Sandra Crisp's father is as well, but anyway, on to the channel itself. The six videos uploaded to the channel all feature various creepy video clips, images, and audio, and don't really seem to have any meaning behind them other than simply being creepy videos, which I'm all for. I remember one time I was hanging out with some friends at an Airbnb, and one of our friends fell asleep. We turned off all the lights and turned on a video very similar to these, and turned up the audio and started the video after we left the room. Yeah, it was pretty great. Austri film Zengazawaini, 1979 Austri film Zengazawaini, or as IMDB calls it in English, Sharp Film Involved, is a Polish animated film from 1979, though IMDB says 1980, directed by Julian Joseph Antonis. Reportedly, this film was quite popular and common to see among children in Czechoslovakia and Poland throughout the 80s, at least from what I've seen among comments in the YouTube Uploads comment section. The film is a hand-drawn, animated short featuring abstract depictions of people doing various activities as well as showing buildings, the sun, and lots of eyeballs. From what sense I could make of it, it seems to be about people going to a theater and observing different forms of entertainment from people performing with musical instruments to watching films, all the while a lady sells newspapers at a newspaper stand. She then realizes that she can make more money by selling newspapers at multiple stands, and by doing this, civilization crumbles and no one goes out anymore. At least, that's the most sense I can make of it. Unfortunately, there's a bit of a language barrier, but in regards to the animation, it's truly a fantastic work of art and should be viewed by anyone who's a fan of animation in a historical sense. I believe its place on the iceberg is simply from the strange and surreal animation throughout. Gregory's Room Gregory's Room is a video based off a creepypasta, so before we get into the video, since it's a short read, I'll just summarize. Basically, the story is of a man recounting his experience as a child of being selected to watch test series for Nickelodeon in order to get feedback and determine whether or not the show was deemed worth airing or creating more episodes of. He tells of a time when he went to Nickelodeon Studios in order to be part of one of these test screenings. Upon entering the room where he's to view this new cartoon with a few other children, his excitement turned to terror. As the cartoon started, he realized that what he was watching was unsettling, creepy, a strange, early-style CGI character 
introduced himself as Gregory. Gregory would say such things as, there's no one else in this room, just me and you. No parents, no police, no one can hear you. The children all started to panic as the cartoon ended quite abruptly with a zoom in on Gregory's face. The narrator then says that they took the CD, which, I mean, we'll get to that, but basically they held on to that disc and uploaded it to YouTube, and that's our story of where the video came from. So, first off, I get video CD is a thing, but most broadcasting companies throughout the 80s and 90s were actually using, no, not VHS tapes, but beta tapes for most archiving and holding of programming material. The thought of a test cartoon being on a video CD, which really didn't make much of a splash in North America as a technology, is kind of strange. I'm not sure why the writer of this creepypasta went with CD as the form of media, but anyway, the short was actually created and uploaded by Seinfeld Spitstein, the 3D animation YouTuber we talked about a couple layers back, and it was uploaded in October of 2013. Ronald McDonald Insanity Okay, so this is, uh, this is one of those questionable points on the iceberg that's just like, well, you'll see. This video was uploaded to YouTube in January of 2008 to the channel Mr. Horseshoe and features a radically edited clips of Ronald McDonald dancing around to a strange rendition of the song UN Owen Was Her, which is from the sixth game in the Toho Project Mainline series, Embodiment of Scarlet Devil. Many jokes within the Toho fandom become memes and eventually transcend outside the Toho fandom into much wider forms of exposure, so I assume that's how this video got so popular, as it's currently sitting at over 17 million views. Really outside of that, I don't really have much to say, it's edited footage of Ronald McDonald from various commercials just dancing about to the song, and the version of the song is simply the audio of those McDonald's commercials, pitch shifted to match the melody of the music, and really, that's about it. Strange placement on the iceberg for such a video, but sometimes, that's just how these things go. Mama Movement Test Mama is a 2013 horror film directed by Andy Muschietti and produced by Guillermo del Toro about two young girls who are found in an abandoned cabin in the woods, being taken care of by an unknown something that they simply call Mama. The two girls are rescued and taken to live with their uncle, only for Mama to come looking for them. This point on the iceberg is referring to a practical effects test in which the film crew is showing off the actor portraying Mama moving in an incredibly creepy way. This is all thanks to Spanish actor Javier Botet, who despite suffering from Marfan syndrome, a condition that gives Botet extremely long and thin features, uses this to his advantage, allowing him to contort and play the roles of many different characters, much like you're seeing on screen now in his portrayal of Mama. The movements this man is able to pull off are absolutely stunning and any horror director's dream. I've never seen the movie myself, but maybe I'll add it to my Halloween watch list simply because Javier Botet's performance. One last bit of trivia before we move on. Mama was based on director Andy Muschietti's 2008 Argentinian short film, also called Mama, which you can find quite easily on YouTube. Jillian Mayer Jillian Mayer is an American visual performance artist and filmmaker who gained popularity after her video I Am Your Grandma became a viral hit. Jillian would create her channel in October of 2008 and would upload fairly regularly, though her most recent upload was from May of 2021, so it has been a little while since she last uploaded. Being a visual performance artist, many of her videos are very surreal and heavily metaphoric. My personal favorite video of hers is Makeup Tutorial How to Hide from Cameras. It's actually quite ahead of its time. And I also really love her video Postmodem. Her videos are just as she presents them, so I don't really have much to say on top of that, so check her out and on to the next. Sir Toll. So, pardon my pronunciations all throughout this one, but Sir Toll, translated to English, Till the Giant, is a 1980 Estonian animated film directed by Rain Raymott with art by Juri Arak. The story tells of Sertol, an Estonian god, who is asked by three men if he could help a boat full of people that is lost in a storm, 
in which he does, picking up the entire boat and taking them all safely back to shore. Sir Tull also provides for those who are rescued and takes care of them. An invading force comes and starts attacking the members of the tribe that Sir Tull has been watching over. While away and helping fend off this invading force, Vanatui destroys Sir Tull's home and kills his wife. Sir Tull, enraged, pursues Vanatui until he drowns in the ocean. Sir Tull, after burying his wife, receives news that the land is once again being invaded. He then returns back to battle, but is defeated by another giant, though not without taking the other giant out with him, causing the invading horde to flee. As Sir Tull's head and body turn to wood, he says he will awaken once war returns to the land. It's a great work of animation and quite graphic, which is why I assume it's on the iceberg. Not to mention, the animation is quite surreal and strange at times. Autism Simulator While there are various Autism Simulator videos on YouTube, the iceberg is referring to Autism Simulator 2013, which was uploaded in March of 2013 by the channel Deep Games. This video is a somewhat liminal space nightmare that features high levels of sensory overload that I suppose is supposed to be what it's like to have autism. It's made creepy by the fact that the playground the video takes place in is incredibly bare, lending to that liminal space feeling I was talking about, not to mention that it's populated by children with no faces and they're all wearing the same outfit. The intense audio only makes the video that much more creepy, but anyway, on to the next. Wood.jpg this video was uploaded in October of 2012 on the channel XXY Group 21, which has no other videos uploaded. The audio is bizarre, and occasionally jumbled text shows up on the screen, though despite digging through the comments, there don't seem to be any attempts at decoding the text, if there's even anything to decode at all. Now, as for the image, this is a zoomed in version of a famous picture that has circled the internet for some years now, in which a woman is sitting amongst a crowd of others and her head is tilted in an unnatural, creepy way. Now, luckily I was able to find the source of this image on the website scaryforkids.com of all things, which hosts an original picture that was altered to create this famous creepy picture. Reportedly, it was taken from one of those psychic talk shows in Japan and simply was edited by someone to look more creepy. Now, in regards to the audio, I'm not 100% certain, but I've attempted to Shazam the track and it's telling me that it comes from a stock library called 1000 Halloween Scary Spooky Horror Sounds, but I'm just taking that with a grain of salt because the results it gives me just don't quite match up to what I'm hearing in the video. I shazammed it four times, all during different parts of the audio, and it all returned the same exact result though, so I'm not really sure. Maybe it's an edited version of that track and it's able to detect that, but who knows. Creepy video though, I actually really like this one. Videos where there just simply isn't much explanation for their existence are my favorite kind. Mass of Daddy Long Legs in a Tree Not a whole lot to say about this video. Uploaded in December of 2008 by YouTube user Happy Smurf Day, this video simply depicts a, well, massive daddy long legs in a tree, or more accurately, on a tree. The cameraman proceeds to poke at the mass, sending hundreds of daddy long legs scurrying about. Surely this is a creepy video for anyone with a fear of insects, but outside that, there isn't really much more to it. The Old Tape this is an incredibly obscure piece of creepy media, as it doesn't appear to have much information about it scattered about online. From the research I've done, it appears to have been posted on 4chan's X board back in September of 2015 with a small creepypasta to go with it, however the most viewed upload of the audio on YouTube dates to March of 2013, uploaded to a channel called Ravenmouth. In the creepypasta, the narrator says that this was recorded off of WKCR-FM, which is a real radio station in New York, and this recording was made in either 1994 or 1995. Even the Wikipedia article from the WKCR-FM radio station mentions this hijacking as possibly occurring, though given that anyone can put anything on Wikipedia, take that with a grain of salt. 
Strangely enough, in my research, I came across information that led me to a band called Dreamless and their song, Incident, which appears to be exactly this recording, including the ending bit with the radio station host. However, this video has 2015 in the name, which I assume to mean the song was recorded in 2015, and if you remember what I mentioned earlier, the original old tape video that was uploaded on the Ravenmouth YouTube channel, which also happens to be the earliest version of the old tape audio that I could find, is again dated to March of 2013. I'm kinda stumped, I really don't know what this means for the original audio, but there you go, that's about as far as I got with this mystery. SNCH SNCH is a channel that was created in March of 2015, and from what I can tell, was the first channel to really go out of its way to use the YouTube Shorts format as its primary way of uploading videos. The videos start off fairly standard, with just a group of friends messing around and doing stupid things. Slowly as the videos progress, bizarre things start to happen, such as a malfunctioning baby monitor device, followed by strange sounds coming from outside the door of the room the group is in. This seems like the end of their troubles, as the next few videos have no activity until the 26th video, when the activity amplifies. Unfortunately, the series ends at 38 or 39 videos. The reason I say that is because the actual channel has 38 videos, however, a channel that archived all of the videos in order has 39. So I'm unsure if 39 is the correct number of episodes, as the final episode is just a blank screen with zero audio, so I guess it might as well be 38. Now, I feel this series had a lot of potential, and I mean a lot. The characters all talk very realistically and are fun to be around, even when nothing is happening, and the plot could have gone anywhere. My immediate thought in episode 36 when you see the hands coming through the window of their neighbor's house is that possibly the neighbor is the one messing with them and they're picking up radio signals through the baby monitor from them. Or maybe someone's being held in the house against their will and they're trying to signal for help, but really, who knows? Unfortunately, the last video would be uploaded in June of 2016, and the channel has sat dormant ever since. It's a short watch, so I'd recommend checking it out, but it's bittersweet as well, considering how strong it started, only for it to end so abruptly. This really had potential to be an amazing series, given what we got so far. The Swedish Rhapsody The Swedish Rhapsody is the name given to a recording of a numbers station. The recording comes from a compilation CD called The Connet Project, Recordings of Shortwave Number Stations, that was recorded between 1992 and 1997. Among the number stations recorded in the set, this one often gets a lot of attention given the creepy music box sounding song, playing the melody of the song Swedish Rhapsody No. 1 by Hugo Alfen. The recording of the person reading off the numbers in German also gets distorted at one point that certainly gives it a creepy vibe. There was a time a while back where I was really obsessed with number stations and my personal favorite ones from the Connet Project are Gong Station Chimes and the Lincolnshire Poacher. All of these recordings are quite mysterious, as though many theories exist for what the recordings are for, from spies to simple transmission tests, no one knows to this day what or who they were for. Ballface Ballface is a video of a creepy floating, well, ballface thing that just seems to be floating in liminal space. It almost looks like the back rooms actually, nearly a decade before that even became a thing. The origin of this video is a bit of a mystery. After a bit of research, I've come to no definite answer as to where it originates from, the earliest upload I can find is by YouTube user Joe Hamilton, uploaded in July of 2010. However, Joe states in the description that it's not their video, followed by an upload to eBombs World in October of 2010. But nothing earlier than the July 2010 date, so if anyone has information regarding an upload earlier, post it in the comments. Hyperboxy5, MightTube5, White Glass Tube, Beko Bests 5, FW Stream 54. 
So this is about five channels that all follow a very similar theme, and they're all strange in the sense that they're almost so mundane that it becomes creepy. Of these channels, only White Glass Tube, Becco Bests 5, and FW Stream 54 seem to still exist, but they all feature the same exact types of videos. That being slideshows, generally not showing what the title of the video is, while this strange low quality music plays over it. For example, White Glass Tube has a video called David Lee Roth, Yankee Rose, which is a song off his Eat em and Smile album from 1986. But the video is nothing but a slideshow of David Lee Roth, with music completely irrelevant to the images. It's all very strange. 90% of the videos from all of these channels are sports related, but even so, they're only sports related in the sense that they're slideshows of athletes with occasionally the name of the team or players in the title, but without much more relevance than that. One of the strangest things about this is that White Glass Tube uploaded all 470 of their videos all in one day, and that's a common theme amongst all of these channels, all uploading every video their channel has to offer over the course of one to two days, and the fact that all five of these channels are so similar, many believe that they're all owned by the same person, but of course, it's impossible to know for sure. PHR2771 This video, uploaded by Aspicio Omniam, was uploaded in May of 2014 and is fully titled PHR2771 Educational Video. Honestly, I'm surprised the entire channel as a whole isn't just on the iceberg, but anyway, let's get on to the video. As this is an educational video, the video seems to be explaining the rooms of the hospital, institution, or facility that this channel's videos seem to take place in. This facility has three main rooms, the soft room, and the suicide room. Room 1 is where the narrator lives. Two people live in room 2, and according to the video they own an animal with a lot of fur that doesn't breathe. Room 3 is currently uninhabited and has one wall that's made of skin. The soft room only allows for one person to be inside at a time. The video then goes on to state that Jim entered the room two weeks ago and is most likely dead. And lastly, the suicide room which no one ever enters and reportedly is leaking because of an incident that happened inside. That's really all there is to this video and it's interesting, but it does have a pretty awesome song playing throughout. If you set the playback speed to different levels, it still sounds awesome, so check it out. Imagine Dumb Imagindum, also known as Flame Pillow Imagindum, is a YouTube channel that was created in November of 2016 and has uploaded on and off since. This is a very interesting animation channel that mostly talks about philosophical and moral dilemmas. The first two episodes are about choosing between saving one loved one versus saving a hundred strangers, and how nature is a cruel thing in the way that animals must kill other animals in order to survive. Slowly, it seems like the channel has gotten a bit more optimistic with uploads like How to Win at Life. As a matter of fact, Imagindum even says that he's become more optimistic in the video Why Live If You're Going to Die Eventually. I actually really like this channel, and I'm not really sure why it would be on this iceberg. Maybe because it touches on some pretty dark topics, but ultimately answers these questions with an optimistic answer. I really love his little character mascot, too. Update so apparently there was another channel called Imagindum that created some bizarre videos back in 2016 until around 2017 when they suddenly stopped. I appeared to have missed this during my initial research, and this channel did have some really creepy stuff on it, so let me discuss that for just a minute. Imagindum was a YouTube channel that was created in November of 2016, and they started posting videos immediately after the creation of the channel. The channel created 15 videos, with the last upload being in June of 2017 before the channel was deleted, though re-uploads of the videos do exist. YouTube channel Some Ordinary Gamers has a video taking a look at the channel when it was still available, so look into that if you're interested. The videos all appear to have a nihilistic and pessimistic view on many certain topics, alongside creepy imagery with distorted audio. Now, hang on, I'm leaving in the original Imagindum point I initially talked about because I think they're the same person, but I'm not 100% positive. Now, follow me for just a second here. 
The original Imagindums channel has a video entitled Update, and the newer channel, called Flame Pillow Imagindum, has a video called A Mistake Called Life. Both feature the same little character and similar text. Also, the original Imagindums video entitled Urgent and Flame Pillow's video, Interesting Internet Comments, also feature the same background image and text as well. Obviously, this could just be a coincidence, or Flame Pillow is just trying to use similar imagery from Imagindum, or maybe they're the same person. There doesn't seem to be any further information, however, so for now, that's about all I can add to this point. Six nine nine six. So there are actually a few videos called six nine nine six, and I'm entirely unsure which of them the iceberg is referring to. One of them is a collage of satanic, demonic-style imagery uploaded by Herm Silence. Another is just some strange visual synthesizer blob, also made by Herm Silence. And the third is a compilation of car accident videos uploaded by EFFE. So. Take your pick, I guess. I'm showing clips of all but the car accident videos for obvious reasons. Answer Answer is a video by Kick Hats, who I briefly talked about during the emergency alert system part of the iceberg. The video appears innocent enough until a disturbing scream is heard about halfway through. At 28 seconds in, a simple math problem appears on the screen, and that's about it. In the description, there's a Google link where you're prompted to put in an answer. Upon doing this, you simply get the threat repeated over and over. I assume this is some sort of ARG, but I've been unable to find anyone discussing it, so if anyone has any information, comment below, because this one seems very mysterious. Servine Birth Servine Birth very much reminds me of the Grifter in many ways. By that, I mean I don't think it actually ever existed, and all the videos claiming to be the original simply stem from the creepypasta. Basically, the story goes that in 2009 there was a creepy video uploaded to YouTube on a channel called Servine Birth. The video was simply of a deer in the middle of a forest that looked pale and sickly, with some describing it as possibly being albino. The deer would then give birth to a strange animal-human hybrid before ending. I'm summarizing the video very much because it's not even something you could watch on YouTube, it's simply a creepypasta. There are quite a few videos uploaded that claim to be the original, however, none of them seem to have all of the scenes that are talked about in the original story. Not to mention, the story mentions that since the original was taken down, it's nowadays more common to simply find reuploads of just the audio from the film. However, the audio, as it's explained in the story, sounds very abstract, so it almost seems as if you can upload any noise collage with a vocal murmuring under it and just say it's the audio from the film. It's an interesting premise, and there are quite a few attempts at recreating it on YouTube, as you've been seeing on the screen during this point, but I think it's safe to say that an original doesn't exist, so don't look for it. 00390 00390 is a channel that was created in November of 2015 and still uploads regularly to this day. Now, where we need to start with this one is in the channel description. It reads, Do not subscribe. You bother me. Do not offer me money for affiliation or visualization or other. I am not interesting. At best, offer me some typical food of your country. And lastly, translated from Italian, I like cold but alive girls. The channel has many videos filming women about the streets, seemingly without them knowing, and many believe that the channel is a stalker or possibly even a murderer. There's even a video called How to Transport a Semi-Unconscious Girl, which is, well, basically the title. The channel just has such a strange mix of videos that it's really hard to pinpoint if it's an art project or what exactly. Many believe the videos to be an ARG, which is pretty standard for these creepy channels. Really, in my opinion, I think the term ARG gets tossed around a lot. ARG, which as we all know means alternate reality game, I feel means that there must be some sort of game involved. 
I guess you can argue that the clues just haven't been found yet, but given that they've been posting for over seven years and no one has found anything to signify that it's an ARG really dismisses that argument. So, to this day, most are unsure what this channel's really all about, but personally, I think it's just another strange art project. Define 44F367VU86E3474 This channel is gone. All that remains is this Reddit page talking about it, and no one on the Reddit page archived any of the videos, so, um, I can't talk about it. Here's a picture of the Reddit page, though. Yeah. We Need to Talk We Need to Talk is a very cryptic video uploaded to the channel Creation is Not the Ending. The channel as a whole is home to a variety of comedy videos, creepy videos, music videos, and so on. It's all very much a mixed bag, but specifically, we're here to talk about We Need to Talk. Now, the video is simply a camera filming out a window towards a building, with a date of October 9th, 2017 timestamped. The camera stays fairly stationary throughout the whole video until the end when it zooms into the antenna atop one of the buildings. Weird so far, but nothing alarming. The description reads, Hi, I'm not joking, I have cancer. I moved from California to Berlin, Germany, medical reasons. I lost all my stuff. It better hurry up before we sink. If I'm going down, I'm taking a lot of people with me. I'm sorry, Brian. Well, I sure do hope this is a joke, because this video was posted in November of 2017, and this channel still uploads regularly to this day. There are a few other scattered videos between the comedy videos and music videos that seem a bit more in line with We Need to Talk, such as I Like to Explain Myself and another video that's just a series of numbers, leading many people to ask if it's an ARG or what exactly is going on. It very well might be, but it doesn't seem as if it ever really got anywhere. The most recent strange video from them was in August of 2020 and was simply called Exploration 1, but since then, it's all been more on the comedic and music-related stuff. Definitely a very strange, somewhat disjointed channel. Smile With Me Smile With Me is an ARG that created their channel in August of 2014 and has uploaded regularly until June of 2021, when the ARG seemingly ended. That or no one has solved this part of the ARG. The video makes it sound as if there's going to be more to this, but unfortunately this is such a small ARG and my ARG solving skills are non-existent, so all I can really do is discuss the videos and the channel itself. The most viewed video on the channel is called Borsalvik, and is probably my favorite of all the uploads, at least in terms of cinematography. Also, a strange note, but the first video uploaded to the channel, Tears Have No Meaning, is oddly enough uploaded as a YouTube kids video. Kind of a horrific thing for children to come across. I'm honestly really upset that I don't have much else to say about this one, but trust me, you guys don't want me analyzing an ARG without help. I promise you, I'll just ruin it. That's it for Layer 6, and the only video I couldn't find any information on was a point called Egg Dream. I looked everywhere, and I couldn't find anything even slightly creepy, so Egg Dream is a mystery, but if you know what it is, comment below, please. Smile. Okay, so this point is called Smile with an exclamation point at the end, and I have zero idea what it is. I've done research across numerous days, and I can't find anything. I talked about a few videos that have Smile in the title, so maybe it was one of those. There's also that new 2022 horror movie coming out called Smile, so a lot of my research was bogged down by videos of that movie, so I'm sorry. This one, I just don't know. Hopefully it was simply one of the smile videos I talked about already, but if not, I have zero idea. Rabbit Another video on this layer that I have zero information about is called Rabbit. I worked a bit with the creator of the iceberg and asked if they recalled anything about this specific point, but they didn't remember too much, which makes sense given that they created the iceberg over two years before I started making this video. 
They said it was possibly referring to the Nesquik Rabbit Pilot Red Sun video, which it very well might be, but for being at the absolute bottom of the iceberg, I'm not so sure. It just kind of reminds me of the Pringles video that Pilot Red Sun also made, but who knows. If anyone has any ideas about Rabbit or Smile, please comment below, I'd really appreciate it. I've tried to be as thorough as possible in finding the sources for all of these videos, but these two have really stumped me. Plasma Master Dawn Plasma Master Dawn is an elderly YouTuber who created his channel in August of 2012 and would upload his first of over 2,000 videos on the same day. Plasma Master Dawn, real name Donzel Edward Owens, would amass quite a large following thanks to his, as many would describe, wholesome content in which Dawn would sing covers of many popular songs, as well as make videos about his dogs, the weather, or anything else on his mind. Dawn's channel would gain a surge of subscribers in the summer of 2020 as many embraced his quirky and, again, seemingly wholesome demeanor, but shortly it would come to light through Reddit that Dawn wasn't what everyone believed him to be, as a user on the subreddit Morbid Reality would post links to what appeared to be Dawn on an official sex offender registry. Unlike Edoram, the elderly YouTuber we talked about earlier, who had his past discovered from long before he became a YouTuber, Don's incident occurred in 2019, seven years after his YouTube channel was created, making this case quite disturbing. Don's final video would be uploaded on November 18th, 2020, and Don would pass away on December 21st, 2020, making for a very strange and horrific case in YouTube's history, in which a channel that was seemingly so wholesome and pleasant can be hiding a much darker side than anyone could have ever expected. Monkey Hate this is a pretty disturbing one. It's not a specific video, but a trend occurring on YouTube that has been occurring for as long as YouTube has been around. These videos all focus on the abuse of monkeys, and it's really quite disturbing, and given what we talked about with gore on YouTube, I'm surprised it's even allowed. Some of these videos have been available to view for years without any signs of being taken down, and they don't even have a warning beforehand that what you're going to view is graphic content. What's also disturbing about these videos is the encouraging comments that all of them seem to have. I don't know if there's some sort of mass group of people out there that just hate monkeys for whatever reason, or what exactly is going on here, but the internet is home to all sorts of depraved things. I'm just surprised at how out in the open and easy to find this is. YouTuber Alec Armbuster has a great video on the topic called YouTube's Monkey Problem, so check that out for more information. Global Worldwide Global Worldwide is quite an insane channel that was created in February of 2016 and as of making this video has over 15,200 videos uploaded and though they haven't uploaded since April of 2022, I don't see this channel slowing down anytime soon. The videos here are just complete nonsense, I don't even know what to make of them. What you're seeing on screen is just an example of the strange and bizarre imagery shown in their 15,000 videos worth of content, and it's all like this. Just strange CGI-esque imagery with not much rhyme or reason, and strangely enough, this is one of the few channels that has this many videos that doesn't have a Nexpo or Nightmind Explained video to help make any sense of what exactly is going on here, so your guess is as good as mine, but the dedication is certainly real. The Audio of Annalise Michael's Exorcism Annalise Michael was a German woman who, in the early 1970s, was believed by her parents to be possessed by a demon, and between 1975 and 1976, had 67 exorcism sessions performed on her, reportedly once or twice a week, each session lasting up to 4 hours over a 10-month period. On July 1st, 1976, Annalise would die at the age of 23. The autopsy report stated that Annalise had died of malnutrition and dehydration, and her parents, as well as the priests who performed the exorcism, were tried for negligent homicide, and many believe the case to be a misidentification of mental illness, among other health issues that Annalise had before the incident. Though the validity of possession is questionable by many, as it's entirely a spiritual matter, there exists audio recordings of Annalise's exorcism, and the audio is quite disturbing. You can find this audio uploaded on YouTube across many channels. 
Whether it be a case of actual possession, or simply the misunderstood suffering of a sick person, the case of Annalise Michael has gone on to inspire countless films, books, television series, web articles, and more. Pikadon Pikadon is a 1978 Japanese animated short created by Renzo Kinoshita depicting the morning of August 6, 1945 in Hiroshima as people go about their day, only for the atomic bomb to detonate above the city, killing an estimated 80,000 people instantly, with thousands more to die from radiation exposure in the coming days. This animated short depicts the horrors of such an event, with buildings being vaporized, people's skin being melted off and being horribly disfigured, and the complete devastation left in the wake of such a weapon. It's an incredibly well-made piece of animation, and was first shown at the 1978 Annecy International Animation Film Festival in France. What are you thinking? What Are You Thinking is an enigmatic video that was, from my research, originally uploaded to the channel I'm Dazed in October of 2015, though reportedly this original upload was removed due to violating YouTube's terms and conditions on grounds of violent or graphic content, which is quite strange. The channel also appears to no longer be active anymore either. The video has since been re-uploaded to the channel Scary Videos, but anyway, let's get to the video itself. The video depicts a person with a sack over their head and are wrapped in what appears to be a black trash bag. The person moves around a bit, though very little happens. At around a minute and 20 seconds into the video, the figure moves its hands to its mouth and a strange substance seems to start saturating the mask that the figure is wearing, though what this substance is is difficult to make out. They then hold up a sign that says, what are you thinking? However, it's written backwards and from bottom to top, or maybe the paper is facing the figure and what we're seeing is just the ink from whatever the message was written in, seeping through the paper, but either way, it's still written from bottom to top. In the description for the original upload, the uploader claims that they salvaged an old IBM computer from a dump site and that this video was simply found on the hard drive. Shortly after uploading this video, the computer was mysteriously stolen from him, leaving this case a mystery. Mondo Films, Shockumentaries Mondo Films are a subgenre of documentary that also touch upon the genre of exploitation, often showing depictions of gore, violence, nudity, and practices of cultures outside the West that may be seen as bizarre, or oftentimes were completely fabricated for shock value. The films often are done in a vignette style in which a topic is briefly discussed and shown before moving on to the next. The first of these kinds of films, at least to my research, was Mondo Kane, released in March of 1962. Among the clips shown are various depictions of animal violence as well as various customs of many cultures and tribes around the world. One of the most famous of these types of films would be the Faces of Death series, which itself would spawn numerous spin-offs and imitators. These films, as you can guess by the name, feature various recorded instances of people and occasionally animals being killed, though it has been determined that about 40% of these scenes, including many which feature animals, are indeed fake, including the infamous scene involving people eating monkey brains. The trend of these films would slowly die out in the early 1990s, and these films aren't really around much anymore, I assume because the morbid curiosity that led people to wanting to see such things would shift to the internet as shock sites started to take over. Fake Animal Rescue This point isn't referring to a single video, but multiple YouTube channels out there that disguise themselves as animal rescue channels when the truth behind them is much, much darker. I was first informed of this topic a few years back by YouTuber Nick Crowley in which he exposes various channels claiming to rescue animals that are either harming animals themselves or putting animals in dangerous situations in order to fake a rescue. These channels early on had many supporters, though the like to dislike numbers seem that people were catching on even before Nick Crowley made his video on the matter that something was up. There are various channels that upload videos like this, and I'm not going to show a single frame of any of their content given the nature of the videos. Apparently this sort of thing is even starting to spread to TikTok nowadays, and while I don't doubt that there are animal rescue videos out there that are legitimate, 
The video by Nick Crowley has since made me wary of any such thing being uploaded on a regular basis. Glowing Eyes in the Inky Gloom If my research is correct, this is referring to a YouTube video uploaded by user Oban Oz, who created their channel in November of 2007. Honestly, this entire channel is quite bizarre, and I'm surprised the creator of this iceberg didn't just include the channel as a whole, as opposed to this single video. But anyway, Glowing Eyes in the Inky Gloom was uploaded in March of 2009, and simply appears to be footage of a factory as creepy music plays over it. There is now a lot of public domain footage that exists from between the 1920s and 1960s of factory and industrial work, so identifying exactly where this clip came from is near impossible, as I attempted to find the source for quite a while with zero leads. Even with the audio, since it sounds backwards in the video, I attempted to reverse it, but even after doing so, the audio still sounds backwards. I also messed around with varying playback speeds to see if I can get any hint as to what the audio is supposed to be, but no luck. This entire video is just a strange anomaly, and unfortunately, I kinda have to leave it at that as my research came up with nothing. CE444565 this strange video was uploaded in November of 2012, which leads me to believe that it was made because of all of those 2012 doomsday rumors that were ever so popular throughout the early 2010s. The video was uploaded by YouTube user 389268882 and was created a day before the CE444565 video was uploaded. The video features various photographs of Masonic gatherings, as well as other creepy imagery, while a narrator using a text-to-speech generator speaks of the Earth being recycled and that the only way you can be saved is if you join us, whoever us may be. Now, the voiceover isn't a text-to-speech generator, but instead a modulated recording of Marshall Herf Applewhite Jr., the leader of the Heaven's Gate cult, and is from an old VHS tape the cult made called Planet Earth About to be Recycled. Your only chance of survival is to leave with us. Which you can find in its entirety on YouTube. Nicholas Fedorov, The Computer Nicholas Fedorov was a YouTuber who was active between 2014 and 2017. Known for 3D animated videos, with the occasional 2D animated projects mixed in, Nicholas would amass a loyal following with his creepy, surreal creations until 2017, when he suddenly and without notice deleted his channel and seemingly vanished from the internet entirely. Luckily, most of his original videos have since been re-uploaded, though many fans are still left wondering exactly what happened to Nicholas after his leave from YouTube. His videos are still popular amongst creepy animation fans of YouTube, with one of his most popular videos being The Computer. The Computer is a 3D animated music video in which a 3D animated face speaks about what the computer is to itself. It all has a very mid-90s feel to it. If anything, the creepy aspect comes from the strange early CGI quality that the video uses, but the song is incredibly catchy and I actually really love it. Smile, short scary film. Smile seems to be a fairly popular title for short scary videos on YouTube, but since this specific point includes short scary film and it's not the smiling man that we talked about a few layers up, I'm pretty sure this is what the point is referring to. Also, just so you all know, this is separate from that other point, Smile, with the exclamation mark at the end, that I talked about at the beginning of the Slayer. I still have no idea what that's all about. This is yet another video that's on the Alter YouTube channel. You know, the same channel that hosted the Smiling Man video with the little girl. This video, written and directed by Joanna Sanis, features a woman who is at a bad place in her life and suffering from depression to the point that she realizes she no longer can even smile. After seeing what appears to be a strange entity in her home, the woman goes to bed only to slowly start smiling until she realizes it's not by her own doing. She then sees the entity again as it slowly approaches and her smile is pushed further to a horrific result. This very much seems like a story of a case of sleep paralysis, so whether or not the woman died in the end is unknown, as the story ends abruptly, as most of these horror shorts do, so it's really left up to viewer interpretation. Mr. Sleepy People 
Mr. Sleepy People is a now deleted YouTube channel that is, among all the channels I've come across, easily one of the most bizarre. And I know, that's really saying something. Now, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately in most cases, the Mr. Sleepy People YouTube channel has been deleted, and the channel information, such as when Mr. Sleepy People started uploading, doesn't seem to exist anywhere online, not even on a creepy YouTube wiki page. What this channel features is a person, presumably Mr. Sleepy People himself, filming people asleep, opening their eyes and touching them, and sometimes even licking their eyes. Yeah. Now, there is endless speculation behind this channel. Is this person doing this to strangers? People he knows? Are the people drugged? Is this happening against their will? And honestly, none of these questions can be answered, as it's entirely unknown. Mr. Anime Mr. Anime, real name Trey Eric Sessler, was a YouTuber who created his channel in September of 2006 and would become a pioneer in the early days of YouTube, being a prominent reviewer of anime, and inspiring many YouTubers to start their own channels because of the content Trey had created. In March of 2012, shortly after he uploaded a seemingly positive video in which Trey discussed starting a new job and future plans for his YouTube channel, Trey would kill his family and planned on going on a mass shooting at Waller High School. Trey, after the reality of what he had done started to come through to him, decided against going to the school, and he would later be arrested and is now serving life in prison. Gore on YouTube Videos depicting gore are typically removed fairly quickly on YouTube, but many infamous videos were up for years, including the suicide of Bud Dwyer, who was the Pennsylvania state treasurer who shot himself during a live press conference on January 22, 1987. But this no longer appears to be the case. Occasionally you can come across videos of car accidents, shootings, executions, and more, but these are typically taken down quite quickly nowadays, but back in the late 2000s and early 2010s, such videos were common, and many had view counts in the millions. From what I've seen, you can find many videos of shootings, car crashes, and other accidents, so long as no blood or gore is shown, if the research I've done is anything to go on. If the video is to depict any gore, so long as it's at a reasonable distance away, YouTube doesn't seem to care and will let basically anything slide, with at most a warning before the video plays. Apparently in the deep recesses of YouTube, gore on the same level as LiveLeak can still be found, though oftentimes these videos are unlisted in order to keep those who would report such videos away. Man Relates His Out-of-Body Experience this video, uploaded on the channel jsandler48, features a man telling, or rather singing, his story of having an out-of-body experience after a heart attack. The video was uploaded in January of 2007 and is one of the many videos on the jsandler48 channel, the channel being created in October of 2006. Interestingly enough, the title of this point is the name of the exact same video uploaded to another channel, that has uploads of many other videos as well, but the original upload is simply called OOBE, Out of Body Experience. As I've said countless times throughout this whole video, I'm surprised the entire J Sandler 48 channel as a whole isn't just on the iceberg, as opposed to just this one video, as a lot of the videos have a very strange aura to them. I wouldn't call them creepy necessarily, it's just a guy singing songs he presumably made up, and has even gone on to post videos of himself performing at open mics as recently as August of 2022, though it appears as if the out of body experience video is the only one on his channel to really gain any traction. Either way, a strange spot for this video in relation to the iceberg, but oh well, on to the next. The Peanut Vendor, 1933 the Peanut Vendor, or El Manacero, is a Cuban song first recorded in 1928 and would be covered by many artists over the years. In 1931, Red Nichols, an American jazz composer and musician, would record his own version of the song, which would then be used in a 1933 stop-motion short featuring a monkey selling peanuts. Though not the earliest example of stop-motion, for 1933 it's still quite impressive. 
The short was directed by Dave Fleischer, who directed and produced many animated shorts, though he would always be in the shadow of his more successful older brother, Max Fleischer, who created Betty Boop among many other famous characters, as well as an animation technique known as rotoscoping. Anyway, in regards to the peanut vendor, I suppose it can be considered quite creepy, especially because the monkey character looks pretty horrific, and the movements of stop motion, especially from an era as early as this, can be quite unnatural and strange. Maybe it's this low because there's some obscure creepypasta about it, but nothing I can find, so on to the next. Bloody Mary Doll I had a very hard time finding anything that this point could be about, so... I'm going with this, because it's really the closest thing I could find. This video, uploaded by Ventriloquist Vance, was actually featured on a Chills video, so I'm surprised it's so far down on this iceberg. Anyway, the video was uploaded in August of 2015 and features Ventriloquist Vance talking with a Bloody Mary doll. The doll is quite creepy and sings a disturbing rendition of It's Raining, It's Pouring, in which she kills the old man who's sleeping. There isn't really a whole lot more to this, unless you find ventriloquism scary, which, I mean, I don't really. I originally thought there must have been some other Bloody Mary doll video that was supposed to take this spot on the iceberg, but after searching around for a while, I couldn't find anything, so again, this is my best guess. The fact that it's this low on the iceberg is kind of strange and makes me wonder if I missed something, but sometimes that happens, so if you think you know what this is referring to, please post it in the comments. Jimmy Maximum Jimmy Maximum is a YouTube channel created in May of 2016 and uploads, on average, 40 videos a day. And the content of these videos is just... I don't even know. There's nothing to say about them. It's often just random jumbled text, art, sounds. It's incredibly strange, and I know I've said that a lot throughout this video, but really, this is on another level. As of right now, the channel has 30,062 videos, and there are many that have zero views at all. As a matter of fact, I clicked on one of those, and am now the only person, outside the creator, to have ever seen that video. You too can leave your mark on this channel forever. Go comment first or something, and you'll be immortalized in a Jimmy Maximum video. I was scrolling down the video list, trying to find the upload date for the very first video on the channel, and my browser actually ran out of memory after scrolling for over 40 minutes, so I'm not gonna try again. Reportedly, many of the videos feature a computer operating system known as Temple OS, which is itself an entire rabbit hole of its own. Speaking of rabbit hole, Frederick Nudson's series Down the Rabbit Hole has a great episode on Temple OS, so if you want to see a strange operating system created by an even stranger man and learn his story, check that out. There isn't much else to say about Jimmy Maximum, however, so on to the next. Mr. Kridoff It appears as if Mr. Kridoff, also known as Fizzy Milk 1989 created their channel sometime before 2015, but information regarding the channel itself is rather scarce. Luckily, the channel's videos have all been archived and still exist on YouTube to this day, in the form of re-uploads. Exploring this archive takes you down a strange rabbit hole of animation and live-action edits that all stand on the edge of nonsensical, as well as some Alan Tutorial-esque videos such as Kridoff Tutorials to How to Turn a Mostly Empty Soy Sauce Bottle into an Old TV. It's an incredibly strange channel, but really what fascinates me the most is that so many of these animators and other creepy YouTubers have a page on a wiki somewhere explaining who's behind them, or at least give some sort of further information behind the channel, but I can't find a single thing about Mr. Kridoff. The most viewed video among the re-uploads is Creative Ideas, but it's just as bizarre as everything else on this channel, so really, take your pick if you plan on going down the Mr. Kridoff rabbit hole. Dollface Dollface is a 3D animated short film created by Andrew Wan and uploaded to YouTube in February of 2007. Andrew has many short films on his channel, often depicting surreal dreamlike visuals, and more often leaning towards a sci-fi-like feel, with Dollface being no exception. The film features a robot that has a human-like face watching a TV screen. 
As the face watches, the TV pauses on a picture of a face, with the robot then proceeding to make its face look exactly like what it sees on the TV screen. As it does this, the TV moves further away with the robot extending its body to keep up with it. The TV continues to move further away, only for the robot to no longer be able to reach the screen, and it breaks itself in an attempt to get closer. I'm sure there's some sort of social commentary in there somewhere. Let Me Hear Your War Cry Simply put, Let Me Hear Your War Cry is a strange edit of the famous bootcamp scene from Full Metal Jacket, only the faces of actors Matthew Modine and Arlie Ermey are, well, exactly what you see on screen. It's a pretty bizarre video, but there isn't a whole lot to say besides that. No history, no backstory. It was uploaded in August of 2010 by YouTuber Space Hopper Copter, who also has some other strange videos on their channel, if you're interested. Craigslist Tape Found Uploaded in February of 2016 by The Glitched 64 Reads, this is a Reddit no sleep story that has a video to go alongside it. As the story goes, an English teacher was looking to buy a box of VHS tapes off of someone on Craigslist. After setting up the tapes to be shipped, the teacher waits until the day the box finally arrives. As if like clockwork, immediately after receiving the package from the mailman, they then receive a phone call, strangely enough, from the person who sold them the tapes in the first place. After confirming that they did indeed get the tapes, the teacher then sorted through the tapes, finding one in particular that looked in rougher condition than the rest, and what's on that tape was a creepy concoction of horrific imagery from movies, to an image of the night sky, to some clips from the Rubber Johnny music video. Though these clips all have legitimate sources, if I were to put this into my VCR at 2am, it would certainly creep me out too. Ricardo Lopez, the Bjork Stalker Ricardo Lopez, also known as the Bjork Stalker, was a 21-year-old man who was obsessed with Icelandic pop singer Bjork. His obsession started in 1993, and over the next three years, his mental state would deteriorate rapidly as he fell deeper and deeper into this obsession with her. Lopez kept a diary that eventually reached 803 pages where he expressed his thoughts of Bjork and various other aspects of his life that, to him, were all beginning to fall apart. Along this diary, Ricardo would also start recording himself discussing Bjork, his life, and his feelings of inadequacy. In 1996, Bjork would begin a relationship with English musician Goldie. This infuriated Ricardo to the point that he had to act. He felt that he needed to punish Bjork for what he saw was an act of betrayal. Ricardo Lopez planned to send Bjork a bomb in the mail, meant to either kill or disfigure her with sulfuric acid upon opening the package. After sending this package in the mail, Ricardo would commit suicide on one of his many video diaries that he recorded. Four days later, police were alerted to a foul odor coming from Ricardo's apartment. Upon investigation and review of the tapes that Ricardo had made, the package was intercepted before Bjork or anyone could be harmed from it. For the longest time, the tapes of Ricardo's suicide was easily found on YouTube, however nowadays, all but his final video are available for viewing. Hatefin.mkv Possibly one of the most obscure videos on this iceberg, this video, uploaded to the channel Crack My Brain in May of 2017, only has a little over 600 views as of this video. The video features a person yelling while filming some sort of bizarre creature in the middle of the snow. It almost appears at one point as if the creature has glowing eyes, but it's very difficult to make out given the low quality of the camera, and the fact that it's filmed in black and white, or possibly night vision. I am entirely unsure of the country of origin behind this video, or any information behind its creation, as again, it's possibly the most obscure video on the entire iceberg. The only thing I found about this video in my research is what almost appears to be a creepypasta or something, so whether the video was made alongside the creepypasta or it's its own thing, I'm entirely unsure. This is all on a wiki for something called Death Files, which almost comes off as a sort of SCP type thing, though again, further information is vague. This is one of the videos I'm most curious about, so if anyone has any further info, comment below. 
Bingo the clown -o. Bingo the clown is a 1998 CGI animated short film directed by Chris Landreth, who won an Academy Award in 2004 for his animated short film, Ryan. Bingo the clown is a short film in which a clown yells at a kid, insisting that the kid's name is Bingo the clown -o. As the short goes on, various characters insist that this kid's name is Bingo the clown as the imagery gets more and more deranged. This short was made at a time when CGI animation was not very good at creating realistic characters, and that's what this short tried to do. To be fair, they almost look right, but unfortunately the uncanny valley effect still takes hold on you and creates an unsettling feeling all throughout. Ensemble of Christ are icons. This is actually a music video by the band Ensemble of Christ, The Savior, and Mother Earth for their song, Our Icons. The description for the video says, quote, Ensemble of Christ, the Savior, and Mother Earth is one of the most uncompromising and totally politically incorrect musical projects of the Russian national underground scene. Musically, they are crude, over-politicized, aggressive hardcore with an obvious and blatant bias in religious and social obscurantism. So, yeah. The lyrics are beyond bizarre, and really the only creepy thing about this is the video itself, and even then, it's quite evidently a low-budget horror-style music video, but anyway, on to the next. The Evil Stick Oh, this is a great one, I remember when this all happened. So, back in 2014, there was a news report from KZR News in Ohio about a woman who bought her kid a toy from a local dollar store. The toy, mysteriously called Evil Stick and featuring a picture of Sakura from Cardcaptor Sakura on the packaging, also featured another secret. A creepy image of a woman with glowing red eyes and a knife being held up to her bloody wrist. This news report got a lot of attention back in the day, and a few YouTubers even made some videos diving deeper into these mysterious bootleg wand toys. From these videos, many reports claim that after hearing of this story, many people went to their local dollar stores to find evil sticks, but when peeling back the metallic cover to reveal the picture, very rarely was the image of the scary woman seen, more often being pictures of zombies or more cartoonish looking characters, which raises the question further as to what exactly is the deal with these evil sticks. Well, reportedly the image of the woman was actually a photo from 2002 by an amateur photographer named Butcher Ludwig, and was simply one of the many photos done for a vampire project they were working on, and they had no idea how the image found its way onto this bootleg mass-produced toy. Some think it was simply a prank by someone, as again, very few of these evil sticks have that image on them. Maybe someone in the factory overseas snuck it in there, or someone at the distribution center where they'd send boxes of these things to the retailers altered a few of them. I mean, the product is simply held on to a piece of cardboard with some zip ties, it wouldn't be that difficult to tamper with it if you really wanted to. Either way, this was just one of those small town news instances that blew up and nothing really came of it after that. Sebastian's Voodoo this is a horror short uploaded by Joaquin Baldwin in July of 2008. It's about two living voodoo dolls trying to escape from their captor. One doll is able to get off the rack they're hanging from, and in desperation to help his friends, stabs himself, thus killing the person who's pinning the dolls and holding them all captive. I'm not really sure what makes this video so worthy of being this low on the iceberg over any other, as Coming along this far, I think some of the other entries were certainly creepier, and it's not like this is any less known. This video has 2 million views, but as I always say, I'm not the iceberg creator, and I don't choose where these things go. Whether or not I agree with the placement, it is what it is. I already heard you. I don't know what this is, and I'm not sure if anyone else does either, because no one's really talking about it. There are no analysis videos, no reddit threads, I can't find anything about what this video is even about. Strangely enough, the video got attention and has over 14,000 views, so while it's obscure, people are still talking about it in the comment section, but no one knows anything. No one knows who the guy is in the video, 
No one knows what the camera is zooming into at the beginning. It's just one of those strange anomalies on YouTube that'll most likely go nowhere. It was uploaded in October of 2015, so that alone gives me unfinished horror project vibes, but really, who's to say for sure? YLNA.WMV This is a cursed video with very little information behind it. It very well may be one of the most obscure videos I talk about on this iceberg. It was uploaded in July of 2010 by a channel called RELS922. The channel was created within the same month as the video upload, and to this day, the channel holds no other videos on it. The video's description reads, According to one newspaper, three people have died after watching this video. Death occurred under unknown circumstances. Corpses were found with their mouths sewn shut, clutching a piece of paper with the strange word Yilna written on it. There is such little information behind this video or who made it that I really don't have anything else to say, but videos like these are often my favorite. Straight up, to the point, little bite-sized bits of horror, good stuff. ARUAP.AVI Much like the previous entry, we're back with another incredibly obscure entry. ARUAP.AVI was uploaded by the channel Your Death in January of 2018 and only has a little over 16,000 views, which, while a decent amount, isn't so many that I feel a good majority of people watching this video would have heard of it. Admittedly, it is a pretty creepy video. As I mentioned in the previous entry, anytime a video stands on its own, is creepy for its runtime, then is just gone and that's it, is great in my opinion. Throughout the video, German text appears on screen and says things such as thousands of dead people, is it fun, your life has no meaning, and so on. Again, certainly just a one-off creepy video, but given that it has such few views, one that deserves to be a little bit more recognized. Driving through a burning forest. There are countless videos of wildfire survivors documenting their drive through blazing forests as they escape, and all of them are just as horrific as the last. I couldn't determine whether or not this video is talking about a specific wildfire, but really, any of these are horrific encounters, so take your pick. Not really much else to say about them, as they are what they are. No, 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 stop, stop, the game is afoot, we must return him to this world. This video, uploaded to the channel called Hail Zeon, was reportedly first discovered through a petite tube dive. Somehow I've gone this far into the video without mentioning Petite Tube, but basically it's a website that only shows you videos that have little to no views. I tried searching for the exact cutoff, but was unable to locate an exact number, but it seems to be videos that have fewer than 100 views. Anyway, the whole Zeon channel itself is a bit of a strange mixed bag and comes off very much like another one of those usual horror channel ARG type things, and even had a website at one point called hailzeon.tk, but is no longer available. The strange thing is, however, I came across a Chills video while researching, and in his video, when discussing No 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 Stop Stop, the channel that uploaded that video is listed as Zeon's Chosen. However, this channel no longer seems to be around, or maybe they just renamed themselves to Hail Zeon? I'm really not sure. The channel, created in October of 2015, would upload quite regularly until 2018 when suddenly, posting would slow down to a crawl, so I'm not even sure if this channel is still active. The videos are all strange with no cohesion, which is fine, it's just a lot to sit through one after another, with nothing to string it all together with. Radiator Creature this was a video that was originally found on PetiteTube and was called MVI underscore 1933.mp4. However, the video has since been deleted and the original channel uploader is unknown, but was uploaded by horror YouTuber Shrouded Hand. It simply is a video of a person filming around their radiator, seemingly looking for something. For a long while, it's not known as to what exactly they're looking for until finally, the camera looks into the radiator at a specific spot, only for an eye to be looking back at the camera. Unfortunately, this video is ruined by a jump scare sound being played, though I'm unsure if this is present in the original upload, as again, that video is now long gone. 
though it's still rather a creepy sight to see an eye just looking back at you. Blackie. Alright, so this is an interesting one, because the information I can find regarding this point is often in Spanish or Russian, and finding any websites talking about it that I can translate were non-existent. The videos talking about it didn't have subtitles in English, so I was a bit dead in the water, but from what I can gather, it seems as though it's a creepypasta video that appeared on YouTube in April of 2013 on the channel Nosferatu, and a video made to go along with the creepypasta was, if my research is correct, created in April of 2016 and uploaded to the channel Psychedelic. From what I can gather, the story is about someone on Skype who has sent a friend's request from someone they don't know who refers to themselves only as Blackie. After some vague back and forth, the narrator receives a video link and downloads it, leading them to jumping out a window. An epilogue informs Skype users that a video has been distributed around Skype driving people to commit suicide and to not watch the video. Personally, anytime a video ends with the narrator dying, I think it hurts the story. But anyway, the April 2016 video appears to be a recreation of the video within the story. Video This enigmatic video has proven to be quite hard for me to track down, and that's because it's actually been deleted from YouTube and finding a re-upload has proven difficult. Luckily, Scare Theater actually talked about it in his Strange YouTube Videos series, so I was at least able to watch it secondhand. The video was uploaded to the YouTube channel MySim35 sometime in 2014 and spread around via a website called ScaredYet.com in August of 2014. Reportedly, it's a bunch of random clips spliced together, including some clips from Crooked Rot, you know, that David Firth project we talked about a while back. Scare Theater only shows a small snippet of the whole video, which appears to have a runtime of a minute and 37 seconds. I think the reason it's so far down on the iceberg is because it never really got that many views and is really only known about by a small group of people who really care about this weird kind of stuff, especially since it got deleted. Strangely enough, I was able to find a link to the original video, and it was removed by YouTube directly on grounds of violating YouTube's violent and graphic content policy. This is very strange. I had to go find this video, and I located it on a strange website called Vidly, which seems to be a ripoff of the 2008 YouTube aesthetic, and the video itself is in horrible quality, but it's better than nothing, I suppose. And that was the creepy YouTube video iceberg. If you stuck around this long, thank you. This video was a massive undertaking. I certainly don't expect it to do as well as any of my other videos given the subject matter, but I did it entirely as a passion project simply because of my fascination with all things creepy and strange. Originally while working on this script, I had made it about halfway through when I started to get heavily discouraged. ARGs certainly aren't my strong point, and with so many on the iceberg, I started to feel overwhelmed in that I was in way over my head. This video required so much more research than anything else I have ever done. Typically with video game related icebergs, I already know them so well, at least for the most part. I've beaten Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, and Super Mario 64 more times than I can count, and they've been a big part of my life for decades. Making a video like this required me to not only know the creepy videos, but to research them, find out who made them, where they came from, and any other information I could possibly find. It was a lot of work, and I doubt I'll ever do something as crazy as this video ever again. After this video, I think I'm finally gonna go ahead and do an editorial style video that I've had in my mind for nearly a year now. It's also a bit Halloween themed, and I even mentioned attempting to do it last year, but it simply got too late. Well, I think this time, regardless, I'm just going to do it, otherwise it'll get pushed to next year again, and who knows when it'll ever get done. Anyway, I've been rambling long enough. You're absolutely crazy for staying this long, and if you actually watched this whole video, I don't even know what to say. Thank you. Because honestly, that's an achievement itself to sit through something this long. 
As I'm sure many of you do, as I do as well, you're playing video games or cleaning or doing some other form of activity while watching my videos, and not actually watching them. And if you are, you have a serious attention span. Thank you all again, truly, and I hope you all have a swell day.